Tonight's meeting of the Metropolitan Nashville and Davidson County Council is coming to you live from the Council Chambers at the historic Metro Courthouse. It's a public affairs presentation of the Metro Nashville Network. Good evening, everyone. I'm Pat Nolan, your announcer for this program. Tonight, the 15th Metropolitan Council holds its 95th business meeting of a four-year term. This is the 17th Council meeting of 2023, including five special sessions this year. Tonight's meeting is on a Thursday, not the regular first Tuesday of the month. It, it was moved because of the 4th of July holiday. Tonight's agenda is 96 pages long and contains 265 items. It is one of, if not the largest, agenda, the longest agendas in this term. The agenda includes a public comment period as well as a council rule change to hold such comment sessions at every meeting instead of just, just sort of once a month and also extend public comment periods to council committee meetings. The council tonight will also consider two appointments by Mayor John Cooper to Metro Boards and Commissions. They are to the Nashville Education Community and Arts Television Board and the Nashville Music Film and Entertainment Commission. Also tonight, the council will have three other regular scheduled meetings before the term ends after tonight's meeting. You can see the last minute rush of legislation is already well underway looking at tonight's agenda. There are 112 bills, 110 bills on first reading, 95 second reading zoning bills on, for, on public hearing. Those numbers are likely records for this council term. There are 26 resolutions, 14 other second reading measures, and 23 ordinances on third and final reading that are on tap tonight. Under resolutions, RS-2023-2187 request the mayor's office and other city agencies to evaluate a $1.2 million in housing ponds that were purchased with COVID-19 grant funds and now create a plan to activate the use of housing ponds for sheltering the homeless population in Davidson County. RS-2023-2287 requests the city's solid waste division, solid waste services division to engage industry experts to conduct a comprehensive study assessing the costs and benefits of creating a department authority or other entity dedicated to solid waste disposal and associated responsibility as well as associated plan for the execution of whatever plan they come up with. RS-2023-2292 approves an agreement with the De Defense Department to use city property on County Hospital Road at no cost for limited military purposes. The resolution does not further explain what kind of military training will be going on. RS-2023-2296 accepts a $1.7 million grant from the state with no local matching funds required for the Metro Health Department to achieve sustained control and enhance prevention to eliminate tuberculosis as a public health threat both here in Nashville and across the state of Tennessee. Colleagues, uh, tomorrow is uh, Councilmember Sandra Sopilvada's birthday, and we have a mariachi band out there celebrating her. So you're welcome. Gun reform during its upcoming special session in August. Also, request Metro National Public Schools to recently to use a recently approved $6.5 million in special funding to purchase ballistic film and radios to improve school safety. Now, the council, you might understand, allocates school funding, but it's up to the school board to decide exactly how the money is spent. Under other memorialized resolutions, the council recognizes. Chef Max Nopel and congratulates him, congratulates him as the 2023 International Food Service Manufacturers Association Silver Plate Award winner. And finally, the council will approve a sister city relationship with the government of Erbil in the Kurdistan region of Iraq and authorize the mayor, Mayor Cooper, to exercise a, city, a sister city agreement. The controversial resignation of the Nashville Speedway at the fairgrounds is up for first reading consideration again tonight. It has already been deferred several times due to a council rule that prohibits the body from considering legislation that requires bond-related financing during the budget season. With the budget now approved, the Speedway look ready to be considered on first reading tonight. However, there appears to be a requirement that a community meeting for any project of this size, $100 million, will have to be held and is scheduled for later in this month. There's already strong neighborhood opposition to the plan and multiple lawsuits are pending in the courts over whether the approval of the renovation will require a 21, vote, a 21 vote majority or a 27 super vote majority based on a new bill passed by the uh, state legislature. If the Speedway is deferred tonight and, and at the recent council meeting, at the next council meeting on July 18th, there will only be two council meetings related re remaining. That's not enough meetings to approve the Speedway Ordinance unless a special council meeting is called in August by either Mayor Cooper or Vice Mayor Jim Shulman, which would likely add to the controversy. Legislation does not carry over from one council to another or from one admin mayoral administration to the next, so the legislative approval for the Speedway would have to begin again if it's not passed by the second meeting, by the final meeting, whenever, whenever that is for the council in August. Under second reading bills, BL 2023-1990, the council will consider a bill to reconstruct the city's voter-approved Community Oversight Board, after a new state law, effectively stripped the current board of its investigative power. Under the new state law, the bill must receive a 27-vote majority twice during the legislative process in the hearing of the council. The bill has already received one such unanimous 27 vote. Actually, the, board, the bill received unanimous support on first reading and must now receive 27 votes either tonight or on third and final reading. Finally, under the new state law, the new advisory board like this must be
be approved no later than the end of October. It seems likely the council will approve this pending bill, but if not, the new council not beginning its work until October. Approval of another bill under the next council would likely require at least one special meeting since they won't even get started with their meetings until October. Also on second reading, BL 2023-1869 would further spell out what the city's transportation licensing board can do with renewing the annual licenses of downtown party buses. The ordinance allows boards to reduce the board to reduce the number of licenses if that number is so great. The board thinks that it sees the public need and adds to traffic congestion. The bill sets out criteria for the board to determine which licenses would not be renewed. Those entertainment buses whose licenses are not been renewed must cease operation within 100 days after their license is not renewed. Other bills on second reading include BL 2023-1991, which establishes the Office of County Historian, the appointment process for that position and the necessary credentials, as well as the county hospital, the county historian's duties and appointments to various boards within Metro government. There has been a county historian for some years, but this establishes the post more firmly into law. On second reading as well tonight, there is ordinance BL 2023-1882 to establish a bicycle and pedestrian advisory commission uh, that's, being, that's been deferred at the last meeting here in the council. Finally, on second reading, Reading BL 2023-1993 would ban the construction and demolition materials from local landfills. The bill would be phased in over the next few years. The construction and demolition materials would need to still be recycled or reused on offsite or for a beneficial use, including using qualified receiving and recycling facilities. Finally, there are two third reading bills of note. BL 2023-1886 would require landlords to provide persons 55 years or older a 60-day notice of termination of, of, of tenancy if the eviction is to make way for new property development. That that appears to be a new, similar to a bill just signed into law by the state. Finally, on third and final reading, in an effort to slow down traffic in residential areas, BL 2023-1887 would extend the 25 mile an hour, 25 mile per hour speed limit on local roads beyond those designated on the major and collector street plan within the urban services district. The ordinance now would lower the speed limit to, from 30 to 25 miles per hour on local streets throughout the general services district as well. It is estimated the cost for new signage will, will, will have to, Metro will have to fork out $60,000 for that. If you want to follow tonight's council meeting as it progresses, you can find the agenda and staff analysis online. Just go to the Metro Council portion of the Nashville.gov website, then on to the Legislative Information Center. We'll also be placing the bill numbers on the screen when they come up for consideration so you can follow along and keep up with where we are in the meeting agenda. Let's go now to Vice Mayor Jim Schulman. He'll be gathering tonight's council meeting into order shortly.
Will the meeting please come to order? We welcome you to the Metro Council. Today is Tuesday, July 6, 2023. Will all members of the council, as well as the public, please rise for the invocation, remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Invocation tonight is brought to us by Reverend Sonny Dixon of the Hobson United Methodist Church, uh, the guest of council member Emily Benedict. Let us pray. God of us all, this week we pause to celebrate our nation's independence, recognizing that not all citizens experience freedom at the same degree. We thank you for Nashville's wonderful celebration that happened this past Tuesday. Once again, we demonstrated that Nashville knows how to celebrate. And even though the weather delayed the fireworks show, we can still boldly proclaim that our show is second to none. As a sign of the times, we pause to express our thankfulness that our celebration was not interrupted by a mass shooting. We do not want to appear to be insensitive to the fear and the pain in cities where they did occur, nor to the families in Nashville where gun violence victims happen. And so we pray for comfort and healing wherever needed. I pray now for this Metro Council. May each member be guided by the fundamental principles expressed in our Declaration of Independence, that we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all people are created equal, endowed them with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Just as committed as Nashville is to celebrating and entertaining, May we be just as committed in extending compassion to the disenfranchised and marginalized in our community. We appreciate the voices of each person who will participate in this meeting. May the words they speak be influenced by your truth so that all that they do may be pleasing in your sight. We already claim that you are answering this prayer because you claim each and every one of us as yours. Amen. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, you may be seated. With that objection, we will suspend the calling of the roll and ask the clerk to record the names of those members present throughout the meeting as their motion for adoption of the minutes of the meeting from June 20th, 2023. Properly seconded. Without objection, the minutes of the meeting will stand approved as written. Mr. Clerk, any messages from the mayor? There are no messages from the mayor. All right. Um, so at the beginning of uh, our meetings now, we um, allow any candidates that are running for office to come to the back podium and introduce themselves. Don't make campaign speeches, speeches just uh, introduce yourself, uh, tell us what you're running for, and that will be great. And uh, our first contestant is Ms. Ruby Baker. Hello, everybody. My name is Ruby Baker. I am running for Metro Council District 1. All right, thank you. Come on up. My name is Stephanie Johnson. I'm running for mayor of Davidson County. All right, thanks, Ms. Johnson. Come on up. Hi, my name's Dolores Van Devort, and I'm running for Metro Council at large. All right. Good evening. My name is Stephen Downs. I'm running for council at large, and I'd appreciate your vote. All right, thank you. Anybody else? All right, thank you. We have a, a couple of other announcements to go through. Uh, did want to say how sorry we were about Councilmember Allen's mom that passed away recently. Um, um, checking in with Councilmember Allen, it was, um, um, she led a very, very good life. Okay. Um, we have a couple of birthdays to celebrate. Mary Carolyn Roberts' birthday is today, is my understanding. <laughs> And Council Member Sepulveda's birthday is tomorrow, and I think they're out celebrating in the hallway. They'll be back in in just a minute. Um, and uh, our um, Metro Legal Director, Wally Dietz, is here and has an announcement about um, a lawsuit that's pending. Mr. Dietz. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor and members of the Council. I'll be very brief, and I'll be glad to answer any questions about this tomorrow in light of your very long agenda. So um, in June, we filed a lawsuit over the um, hostile takeover of the Metropolitan Nashville Airport Authority by the state of Tennessee. 
and we had approached the FAA and asked the FAA to enforce their policy that says when there is a disputed change of ownership or control, the FAA under their policy will acknowledge the existing board. And last week, we got that letter from the FAA in response to our letter. The FAA letter said it was very concerned about chaos and confusion about who's in charge of our airport. And they said consistent with their policy, their ruling was that they would continue to recognize the Metro appointed airport authority, not the new state appointed air authority, airport authority. So on late Friday night, our team worked very late to file a motion for temporary injunction. The, um, the court recognized very early, uh, first thing Monday morning, that there was a need to expedite. They granted our motion to expedite. We will be in front of the court for a hearing on our motion for temporary injunction three weeks from tomorrow. On July 28th, they will meet downstairs in the jury assembly room live Friday afternoon, the 28th. In the meantime, uh, over the weekend, the state appointed board announced that they were holding a meeting this afternoon, their inaugural meeting to get organized. So they, the management at the, at the uh, airport authority and the new board um, in defiance of this ruling of the FAA have gone forward to organize their board, which means that as of five o'clock today, we now have two boards. Um, claiming to control the airport authority. We hope to bring some clarity to this soon. Um, I've also advised the mayor that um, it's the position of Metro Legal that Mr. Granberry and Mr. Jocelyn cannot serve on two boards at the same time, that accepting the appointment, and they both sat today on the state board, that that is a tacit um, that that is a tacit resignation from our board and also presents an inherent conflict of interest. It's possible we may need to come back to the council with a resolution on that. Um, so you may be hearing something from the mayor's office very soon on that. So that's my update. I went to that board meeting. I spoke afterwards. I, I sent a statement to that board expressing my disappointment that they were ignoring the FAA ruling um, but they are they are proceeding along their course. Um, glad to discuss this with any of you tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Dietz. <clears throat> All right. Um, notices uh, given that there are two vacancies on the Metropolitan Auditorium Commission. Uh, these members selected by the council will serve three-year terms. These vacancies are to be filled by the council pursuant to ordinance number BL 2022-1528 adopted January 3rd, 2023. Uh, we'll be taking nominations for these vacancies at the next regular meeting of the Metropolitan Council, uh, which will be um, next, um, Actually, let me check on this. So we do take, so this came in, but it said, vacancy should be announced, nomination should be at the next. Okay. So we, be, uh, we will be taking nominations at the next meeting of the council, and then we will follow the, the basic parameters in terms of making sure that people fill out the, uh, the proper board and commission questionnaire. It must be submitted on time, and then they will have to appear before the rules committee to be, um, to be um, nominated. Um, we're gonna check that we sent an email to you. Uh, I think it may have the wrong dates in it. So we're gonna check and make sure that we've got the right dates for you. Um, she said Jason Steen. I thought it was council members talking about the weekend. It was nice to be up, guys. What? All right, so uh, we're checking the, the memorandum with that went out says that uh, we're actually taking nominations tonight if you want. All right, so um, typically we announce the vacancies at the meeting. Uh, the letter went out, um, so we can take nominations tonight or we can pass to the next meeting if people are not ready to make nominations. Is anybody ready to make nominations tonight or would you rather pass to the next meeting? Is that okay? 
All right. So we're going to pass to the next meeting. We'll take nominations at the next meeting, and then we'll follow suit after that. All right? All right. Um, so um, as I usually say at these meetings, please remember the people in the, uh, in the world and your thoughts and prayers, including the people of Ukraine. They've been in the news lately. Um, lots of problems still going on, including Nashville. Lots of uh, violence uh, around the 4th of July and since. So uh, please keep um, hoping for peace all over uh, this land. Um, one other thing before we get to our uh, very long agenda, which I believe is a record agenda. I've never seen one that's 95 pages long uh, or has over 250 bills on it. Um, so I, I hope that you're ready to stay for a while tonight. But before we get into the long agenda, I know some of the people in the audience, because I see a lot of red shirts uh, on both uh, sides uh, of the Speedway issue. Uh, if you're here for the two Speedway ordinances on first reading or for Council Member Young's bill on second reading that deals with the hearings required, that's item number 231 on the agenda. Um, the, uh, the first two measures, which are item number 123 and 125, those two measures are going to be deferred by ordinance requirements, by requirements of our sitting ordinances right now. Um, those measures are going to be deferred tonight. They are not going to be heard tonight. The third bill, um, which was um, heard last night by two of our committees, um, those committees uh, deferred, so there's an automatic deferral. That bill will also not be heard tonight. Um, so if there are no objections, we're going to take all those three bills right now so that we can clear them off the calendar, which will indicate that you're certainly welcome to stay, but if you're here on those three bills, none of them are going to be heard tonight. So we just want to let you know so that if you wanted to stay, you could stay. If you wanted to go ahead and leave, you can do that as well. Any objection to that? Okay, so let's take care of those two bills. Um, and the first one is item number 123. It is on page 49 of my calendar. 123. It is Bill 2023-1883. Uh, it's an ordinance authorizing the Metropolitan Government's execution and delivery of an intergovernmental project agreement and lease agreement with the Sports Authority, the Metro Government, relating to the development and funding of an improved Speedway facility proposed to be built on the Nashville Fairgrounds. Uh, the sponsors are SLED, Roten, Johnson, Young, and others. And then item number 125, which is BL 2023-1995, that's an ordinance authorizing the Metropolitan Government's execution and delivery of an intergovernmental project agreement and lease agreements with the Sports Authority. Relating to the development and funding of an improved Speedway facility proposed to be built on the Nashville Fairgrounds. Um, that one is sponsored by Councilmember Young. Um, because of, an, of ordinances, those two measures cannot be considered on first reading tonight, so they will be automatically deferred. And it's my understanding the proper deferral is to the first meeting in August. It would be to the first meeting in August because it has to wait for the, the public hearing to be held, which is, I think, scheduled for Jul the community meeting for July 25th, all right? So we can put them back on the agenda, but they'll just simply be preferred to the next meeting. So the proper motion or the, the proper motion move is an automatic deferral. They will be considered on Tuesday, August the 1st at that council meeting. So those two measures are automatically deferred. And then we go to item number, um, it is item number 231. It is on page uh, 82 of your novel, I mean, in my agenda, all right, it is item number 231, it is Bill 2023-1992 by Council Member Young. It's an ordinance amending section 2.24.230 of the Metropolitan Code pertaining to community meetings. Uh, Council Member Young, uh, I just need committee reports on this one. Committee reports. Committee reports, I got budget and finance, Council Member Roten. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor, budget and finance. Um, Approved deferral, uh, 12 in favor, zero against. All right. All right. And planning and zoning, Council Member Withers. This is on BL 2023-1992. Uh, thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. The Planning and Zoning Committee recommended a deferral uh, of one meeting, six in favor, three against, zero abstentions. All right. Council Member Young, it's an automatic deferral of one meeting. One. Okay. So that bill is automatically deferred as well. All right. So that takes care of those three bills. Again, um, 
those were the, the three Speedway bills that were up. Uh, that takes care of all three. They're not going to be considered tonight. Uh, you're all welcome to stay or you can um, go home. All right, we are back now on um, elections and confirmations. Uh, Council Member Murphy, you're recognized. Thank you. We had the um, appointment for the Nashville Education, Community, and Arts Television, Need Cat. Appointment of Mr. Jeremy Mercer for a term expiring on April 2nd, 2026, and we deferred that one meeting, five in favor, zero against. Nashville Music, Film, and Entertainment Commission appointment of Ms. Hazel Smith for a term expiring on June 20th, 2025. We approved her five in favor, zero against. All right, so Councilor Murphy, I got one motion from you, right? Yes. Motion to approve Ms. Hazel well, Smith. Well, two, two motions. One is to defer Mr. Jeremy Mercer, and then the other motion is to approve Ms. Hazel Smith. All right, so uh, we typically just go ahead and defer, but we'll take the motion. A motion to defer one meeting on Mr. Jeremy Mercer for the NECAT board properly seconded. Any discussion on that one? Seeing none, all those in favor of a, of a one meeting deferral for Mr. Jeremy Mercer say aye. Opposed, no, that one's deferred one meeting. And then uh, you want a motion to approve the appointment of Ms. Hazel Smith. Correct. All right, that's for uh, the new uh, National Music Film and Entertainment Commission, uh, properly seconded. Any discussion on that motion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion to approve Ms. Hazel Smith say aye. Opposed, no. Uh, Ms. Hazel Smith is appointed to the National Music Film and Entertainment Commission. Ms. Smith, are you back there? Would you stand up, please? There you go. Thank you for agreeing to serve on the National Film and Entertainment Commission. So the term expires on 20, 20, uh, June 20th, 2025. Congratulations, I think. Okay. All right, we're now on the proposed rule amendment. Uh, this is um, Rule 28 amendment. It's a uh, proposed amendment to Rule 28 of the Metropolitan Council Rules of Procedure. Council Member Murphy. Council Member Murphy. There you go. Come on back. Okay, we're talking about the Rule 28 amendment. Uh, you're on that rule. Thank you. Um, this is one that we're still working out the amendments on to make sure that we are being as transparent um, and open as possible. Um, if I'll just remind y'all, this is the uh, this is the rule change because the state legislature believes that we should have open and transparent government, which, which I agree with. But it definitely does not apply to them. They did not make the law change for them, so bless their hearts. Um, but we're going to defer this to make sure that we get it right because we are an open and transparent government. All right, so when do you want to move this to? I'll defer it one meeting. Defer it one meeting. Okay. So we'll consider that just uh, this one is deferred one meeting. Um, okay, we are now ready for um, the public comment period. Um, and it's changed just a little bit, so I want to make sure everybody was clear on how this is proceeding. It's item G on your agenda, item G. So item G uh, is our public comment period. That's how it's listed on the agenda. Council has had a public comment period all throughout this term. Uh, it has always been held on the second meeting of the month. In the past, individuals signed up in advance to speak, but were not allowed to speak on items on the agenda. Uh, the Tennessee General Assembly has now passed and the governor has signed into law uh, Chapter 300 of the Public Acts of 2023. And that reserves time on every agenda for the public to make comments on items on the agenda. So it's switched. Uh, we will be having uh, public comment periods on every meeting from here on out, and you are allowed to speak on items on the agenda. Okay. Now, pursuant to the information contained on our council website, but um, as you just heard Council Mayor Murphy, all this is subject to change pursuant to possible changes in our rules. Uh, we still require people to sign up in advance for our comment period. Um, you do not, because I think there was confusion about this, you do not have to sign up to be heard on zoning matters. So if you're here on a zoning matter, you do not have to sign up. But on public comment period, you do. All right, so we had two individuals signed up tonight to be heard on public comment. Let me see if I can get my list. Uh, the first one was uh, Mr. Uh, Davey Tucker. Mr. Tucker, are you here? I don't think we saw you come in. All right, second person to sign up was Shane Smiley. 
uh, Brush Hill Road, uh, and he is here to speak. So, uh, Mr. Smiley, uh, you are welcome and you're recognized. Uh, and you've got two minutes in which to speak. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Shane Smiley, Brush Hill Road, Nashville. Some have opined that the Bristol SMI Speedway Improvements Project has been rushed. The group behind me represents but a fraction of the men and women in Davidson County who care about this facility, who support this proposal, and who vote. The folks behind me have been working out towards this since 1985. I've been bringing examples of sound absorbing wall to council since 2010. Many of these citizens, myself included, have spent the past two years attending community meetings, fair board meetings, five special work session meetings of the fair board, three public hearings, and countless hours of conversations and input to the pending speedway improvement project passed by the fair board. The volunteer fair board and thousands of citizens have taken valuable time away from their families, professions, hobbies, and dreams to support a proposal that gives the Speedway a long-term lease like all the other Metro sports facilities have to ensure their success. We have worked to have our facility that has seen years of intentional neglect be brought to world-class safety and amenity status like all the other sports authorities owned, the sports venues owned by Metro. We have followed all the rules, policies, and procedures required by Metro. We ask you to show your respect for our citizens, the board and authority members with time invested in this legislation and do your part of this process. We ask you to do the right thing and bring this legislation to the floor for discussion and three readings and votes. Many of you are campaigning and asking for our support. We the citizens of Nashville are asking you to show us that you support us. Show us you respect our time and efforts in the legislative process and the government process as a whole by bringing this legislation forward for debate and an up and down vote. Thank you very much for your time. All right, thank you, Mr. Smiley. Um, Mr. Tucker, you're recognized. My name is David Tucker. I live on Fatherland Street, 37206. I want to use these two minutes to share with you my reflection on your vote not to save the Morris Building. It brings me to the issues of equity and inclusion. Equity is not equality. Equity is an evening. Equity evens out stuff that has been uneven. The, our own history of Nashville does not record that 200 enslaved people came here. This is one of the few buildings that is, that is left that was built by McKissick and McKissick. The entire area over there used to be the black business district. Up under that building used to be the slave market. But I don't understand your rationale. I don't understand your rationale and it confuses me. It allows you, your rationale allows you to purchase the old Tennessee school for the blind that sits there. Your rationale allows you to purchase the Hickory Hollow Mall, and it sits there. The director of finance said that it would cost $500,000 for yearly maintenance if you purchase that building. I wonder how much it costs using some square footage correlation with that building and Hickory Hollow Mall, how much does the city pay? Inclusion, we were here from the very beginning. We were erased by public policy. It was urban renewal that decided to decimate the black business district. It was public policy that decided to not tell the full story. You can talk to your department heads all you want about DEI until you practice it yourself. Equity oftentimes costs more. It costs more to even things that have been neglected historically. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Tucker. All right, that takes care of the public comment period. Uh, I'd like to go back. Um, I thought we had taken care of this, but just to be clear on the record. On the proposed rule amendment, Council Member Murphy, there she is. So uh, did the Rules Committee actually take up this, um, the amendment? We already took it up um, a few weeks ago. Okay. And so on the floor, we are deferring it. It's already been 
approved it's previously by rules. Okay. That's the committee report, and then we are deferring it Simply here to deferring get a minute. Right. So uh, let's just go for purposes of this. We we'll get a motion yep. to defer. There was a motion to defer. Motion to defer one meeting. Mm -hmm. Properly seconded. Any discussion on this? All in favor of the deferral of one meeting of the proposed rule change, say aye. Opposed, no. Uh, okay, so that one's deferred one meeting. All right, we are now on um, um, resolutions on public hearing. Uh, before we start, we do have an individual here who can help with um, uh, Spanish uh, interpretation services. It is our own Karina Valdez. And uh, Ms. Valdez, if you can, come to the podium and uh, let people know that you're available to assist. Thank you. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Buenas tardes. Uh, yo soy la intérprete de español para esta sesión. Si alguien requiere mis servicios, estaré a la mano izquierda. Gracias. Thank you. All right, so we are now ready for resolutions and bills on public hearing. So the way this works, uh, for those of you who are back in the uh, audience, um, I will call up the resolutions. We only have one tonight on tonight's calendar. Call up the resolution and bills one at a time and then refer to the sponsor. Unless the sponsor moves to defer the public hearing, the sponsor will call for a public hearing. Then ask for a show of hands for those who are here in favor of the resolution or bill. Then I will ask for a show of hands for those who are here in opposition to the resolution or bill. If anyone in favor of the measure wishes to speak, I will ask you to come forward, find that back microphone, introduce yourself, give us your address, and then you will have two minutes in which to speak. I'll then I ask if anyone opposed wishes to speak, we just do it again. After that whole process plays out, I will close the public hearing and refer back to the sponsor. All right. So we are up on the first resolution, the only resolution up tonight. Um, it is RS 2023-2285. It's item number one on the agenda. It's a resolution exempting retrograde uh, Clifton, located at 2714 Clifton Avenue, from the minimum distance requirements for obtaining a beer permit. Uh, the sponsors are Councilmember Taylor and Toombs. Councilmember Toombs, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Uh, committee report? Yeah, Council Member Benedict, Government Operations. Thank you, Vice Mayor. The Government Operations took up this and we approve five in, fa five in favor, zero against. All right, thank you. Council Member Toombs, you're recognized. Request to open a public hearing. Okay, declare the public hearing open. A show of hands of those who are here in favor of this resolution. All right, thank you. A show of hands of those who are here in opposition to this resolution. Don't see anybody in opposition. Sir, would you like to speak? Okay. Says no. Clear the public hearing closed. Councilmember Toombs, you recognized on your resolution. Move for approval. Okay. Councilmember Toombs says move for approval of RS 2023-2285. Properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the resolution say aye. Opposed, no. A resolution passes. That takes care of item number H on our agenda. And we're still on page two. All right, bills on public hearing. Um, we are on BL 2023-1758 by Councilmember Van Rees, and we can also take item number three together. Uh, 1758 is an ordinance to amend Title 17 by changing from RS 10 to SP zoning on properties located at 3302 Walton Lane and Walton Lane unnumbered, and on part of 3300 and 3344 Walton Lane, it's approximately 211 feet west of Slate Drive, and its companion bill, which is item number three, BL 2023 1759, an ordinance to authorize building material restrictions requirements for BL 2023 1758. Proposed ordinance requires certain materials to be restricted in the construction of buildings. Councilmember Van Rees, you are recognized on your two bills. Uh, let's open the public hearing. Let's open the public hearing. All right, declare it open. Uh, show of hands of those who are here in favor of those two measures. All right. All right, a show of hands of those who are here in opposition to those two measures. Don't see anybody in opposition. Anybody in favor wishes to speak? Nope, don't see anybody. All right, we're gonna close the public hearing. Councilmember Van Rees, you're on your bill. Thank your bill. you very much. And uh, with um, a gratitude towards the planning department for the back and forth on this one and to the patients of the community, uh, I move approval. All right, so Councilmember Van Rees is moving approval to be 2023, 1758 and 1759 for passage on second reading. She's made the motion properly seconded. Any discussion on the two measures? Being none, all those in favor of 1758 and 1759 for passes on second reading say aye. 
Opposed, no. Uh, those two bills pass. Uh, we're now on item number four, bill 2023 1814 by Council Member Toombs. Ordinance to amend Title 17 by changing from RS 15 to R 20 zoning for property located at 3900 Hyde's Ferry Road, approximately 280 feet northwest of Emerald Drive. Council Member Toombs, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Request to open a public hearing. Okay, declare the public hearing open. Show of hands of those who are here in favor of 1814. Show of hands of those who are here in opposition to 1814. Councilmember Toombs, I don't think anybody's here. Maybe anybody cares about your bill. No, I'm just kidding. All right. Uh, declare the public hearing closed. Councilmember Toombs, you're recognized on your bill. Thank you. Move for approval. All right. Councilmember Toombs has moved for approval of 1814 properly. Seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor of the bill say aye. Opposed, no, that one passes on second reading. We're on item number five, Council Member Murphy, BL 2023 1815. Uh, and we can take BL 2023 1816 and 1817 all together. All right, 1815 by, uh, 15 by Council Member Murphy, ordinance to amend Title 17 by changing RS 5 to SP zoning on property located at 307 Susanna Court at the corner of Dakota Avenue and 38th Avenue North, located within a plan unit overlay district, uh, 1816. 16 is the companion bill ordinance authorized building material restrictions and requirements for BL 2023-1815. Proposed ordinance requires certain materials to restrict the construction of buildings. And item number seven, BL 2023-1817 by Councilmember Murphy, ordinance to amend Title 17 by canceling a plan unit development overlay district on property located at 307 Susanna Court, southwest corner of Dakota Avenue and 38th Avenue North. Councilmember Murphy, you're recognized on all three bills. Thank you. I'd like to open the public hearing on all three. All right. Declare the public hearing open on 1815, 1816, and 1817. Show of hands of those who are here in favor of those three measures. All right. Show of hands of those who are here in opposition to those three measures. Okay. I've got hands on both sides. Uh, those in favor, we'll start with you. Anybody wishing to speak in favor, if you come on down, uh, find the microphone in the back. Um, and if you are in favor and you want to speak, come on up and get in line, and then we'll um, move to those folks who are in opposition. Uh, I need name, address, and then you'll have two minutes in which to speak. Okay. My name's Charlie Nassara. I reside at uh, 3807 Nevada Avenue, which is just north of uh, Skyview Apartments, which is the uh, property subject to the SP request. I support the uh, rezone and encourage the council to vote in favor for the following reasons. The current uh, Skyview property is at the end of its life and should be replaced. As a neighbor, what I believe is the most important is what's redeveloped in its place is a good fit for the neighborhood in terms of size, function, and design. <clears throat> Nashville's a rapidly growing city that's facing a housing shortage and related cost pressures. The developer proposes multifamily zoning of a reasonable size for surrounding context that will provide needed density along a transit corridor. The, the design's attractive and complementary to the existing neighborhood. Um, what the developer proposes is a good future for the site. Please support the SP zoning request. All right, thank you. Next speaker. <clears throat> yep, thank you. My name is Tim Wilson. I drive, reside at 610 Westmead Drive. Uh, my family and I have been investing in buying property in the Silton Heights area for the last 30 years. Uh, Help my office in that area as well. We strongly support this development. We think it would be good for the area. Uh, the existing apartments there have kind of been a blight on the neighborhood for some time. So we're here to speak in support of the uh, of the development. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Next speaker. Good evening. My name is Alex Trent with Trent Development Group, an affordable housing development company based here in Nashville. We've been a stakeholder in this community for over two decades. The Skyview is well beyond its remaining useful life and needs to be redeveloped. We are fully invested in re revitalizing the property through thoughtful design, development, and creating a place that honors the character of the surrounding community. Skyview currently holds 84 families. Those families are our first priority. We're committed to not only maintain the subsidized housing, but committed to working with the city and housing agencies to more than double the affordable units of, uh, afforded in a brand new development with more amenities and on-site nonprofit support near Skyview. All residents will receive first priority to live in the new apartments. All relocation expenses will be covered and 
The support and communication will be provided throughout this lengthy process. Nothing will happen at Skyview until we've completed the new, develop, new construction of the new units and completed the relocation process. To date, we've put over two years into design with, Sky, with the Skyview redevelopment plan with Councilmember Murphy, planning staff, and the Salem Heights community. I want to commend Councilmember Murphy on her diligence and the demanding process she's put us through. I want to further commend planning on their thoroughness. I believe it's created an excellent product the neighborhood is largely in favor of. We wanted to design something that fit the neighborhood, but also took advantage of the opportunity to add good density, the missing middle housing that we desperately need in this city. We, pro we proposed a modest density with a quaint design. We've added to the total green space and elevated the streetscape. We've invited the neighborhood in with a privately maintained public park and grand staircase. I'm proud to present this plan to council and hope you can be supportive of this new missing middle and affordable housing. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. Name address, two minutes. Hey, hello, I'm Troy Gardner, landscape architect with the Reagan Smith Associates, 315 Woodland Street. Um, we've been in coordination with Councilmember Murphy, planning and other Metro departments and have held two neighborhood meetings for this project. Uh, we've also been in coordination with WeGo and agreed to provide an upgraded inbound transit stop at Charlotte Pike and 39th Avenue agreed to the findings of the traffic study, coordinated with Metro Stormwater to confirm the stormwater discharge locations, agreed to prohibit short-term rentals, and will reduce parking as requested by the planning to meet the UZO parking standards. As far as the development of this actual site goes, uh, we have studied opportunities to better incorporate it with the greater Sylvan Heights neighborhood, and this was done through several ways, through building type selection, addressing public street frontages and architectural details, and proposing publicly accessible amenities. Uh, first, Skyview has a density or a proposed density uh, just under 20 units per acre uh, and will be composed of manor homes, manor houses, and stacked flats. Uh, this density and these building types are all supported by the T4 neighborhood maintenance policy. Manor homes are located at the perimeter of the site to help transition from existing neighboring homes to the stacked flats in the larger building at the site's interior. Second, second, we are integrating Skyview into the community by fronting onto uh, Dakota Avenue and 38th Avenue. These public streets will also be improved with the installation of a five foot wide sidewalk, a four foot wide grass strip and trees along the streets. Also sidewalks connections will be provided from the manor homes to the public's sidewalks. Third, architectural details such as stoops, porches, and balconies have been incorporated into the buildings proposed uh, to help blend with the Sylvan Heights neighborhood. Last, both private and public amenities are proposed. Private amenities such as a resident pool and plaza are proposed, as well as public amenities such as a dog park, the grand stairs, plaza, a walking trail, and public sidewalks. The cumulative effect of these amenities. That's it, thank you. All right, uh, those, anybody else wishing to speak in favor? Okay, those in opposition, if you would come line up at, at the podium. Anybody wishing to speak in opposition, if you'd come on up. Hey, ma'am, that's awfully nice. You did not have to bring us flowers. All right, uh, <laughs> name, address and humanity. Two, name, address in two minutes. My name is Mackenzie LaRoe, and I own two houses on Lookout Drive 3812 and 3819. The owner of Skyview Apartments, Robert Trent of Skyview Apartments LP and First Cumberland Property Properties and his son, developer Alex Trent of Trent Development Group, are requesting to tear down the existing Section 8 apartment complex at 37 Susanna Court and redevelop, dramatically rezone, and maximize maximize the density, not modest. <laughs> I am for the redevelopment. However, I'm requesting that the redevelopment keeps the current number of 84 apartment units, rather than increasing the unit number to the maximum allowed of 187 units. Our quaint neighborhood of 600 households cannot handle the additional density, considering the new construction of 322 apartments at 3800 Charlotte, less than half a mile from Skyview. Our neighborhood is very hilly, full of blind corners, lack sidewalks, roadway markings, crosswalks, speed bumps, street parking, and safety measures for the elementary school within a quarter mile of Skyview apartments. Sylvan Heights simply cannot handle the more density. 
Are we all here to facilitate one family's mission to maximize their profits and dramatically change the feel of a neighborhood while residents are obliged to zoning rules and live with the consequences? As a token of humanity, I brought a bouquet from my garden. Whoever wants it is free to them. <laughs> Please vote no on maximizing the density of 307 Savannah Court and demand the new development stays at 84 units, not the maximum 187 units, and be in line with the next Nashville Next Plan, which this is not after reviewing it extensively. Please consider my family, beloved neighbors, and community when you make your decision. All right, thank you. And uh, if you'll give the flowers um, to our security <laughs> guard, you. and then we will give them to... Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Councilmember Porterfield, it is not your birthday. It should, go, it should be divided between the two that are having birthdays. There you go. Um, we'll have to take care of that later. All right, uh, next speaker, name, address in two minutes. Dolores Van Devoort, 5515 Rome Avenue. This is one of the reasons I have decided to run for Metro Council at large. I am tired of seeing any kind of variances on overlays already set in communities like this lady was talking about, that you are overcrowding our neighborhoods. We're not seeing any infrastructure improvements. All we are doing is driving over ditches because you have uh, builders digging them out to put plumbing or, or sewer, water, everything across, and they are not having to fix them properly. People that are voting on these things do not live in these areas. They are not having to deal with the increased traffic, the safety it's causing, and again, the infrastructure lack of improvements. These builders are not living here. They are gaining profit, and when you over-densify this kind of property, you are doing a service to the community of Nashville and the residents that live in it. I did not plan on speaking about this, but when I saw that and heard her speak, I used to live over in that area. I live in I live in the nations, on the edge of the nations, which has been totally density uh, maximized, and I'm tired of seeing it. And that is one reason I am running for Metro Council. I'm tired of seeing people voting for things they have no idea what's going on. Thank you. All right, thank you. Yes, ma'am. Uh, name, address, and then. Hi two there. Minutes. My name is Kelly Nagy. I'm at 3905 Park Avenue in Sylvan Heights. And just like Mackenzie, I am in favor of the re redevelopment. Um, it is a site that does need it. However, I share the same concerns about the 187 units. Right now, it has 84 units and it sits on top of the hill. I cross that street with my children every day, and it is the most dangerous street in our whole neighborhood. And so there are a lot of concerns about walking across that street. I've got another mom here with me tonight, and we are there with our families, and we just want to keep our families safe. So I think if the density was lower and some safety measures were in place for that street, we would feel comfortable with this plan proceeding. Thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, anybody, anybody else wishing to speak in opposition? All right, seeing none, declare the public hearing closed. Council Member Murphy, you're recognized. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to address a few comments that were that were made tonight um, as I move this forward to uh, the planning committee that is next. So first, that this this property um, came be came to me. I guess that the redevelopment came to me at least two years ago. Um, maybe a little bit more than that. And and one of the first things I said to them as they were talking about this property is it has to look residential. Um, this is a this is a community that is very similar to Sylvan Park where they do have overlays. There's not um, an overlay here. Uh, that was an incorrect statement. Um, but there are very charming homes here that, that has a character. And a lot of one-off development has happened in Sylvan Heights and it is losing that character. And so I appreciate that the that directive from me has been taken into account into this into the design of this project. Um, something else that I said is that it can't be a, a giant apartment complex that keeps getting um, proposed on Charlotte Avenue. As I spoke to 
uh, the, the woman, uh, Brenda, who will be taking my seat after me. We talked about this today. There's, there's an apartment complex coming down the pike that I said, y'all don't have time for the community meetings to get this done. You don't meet the policy, you don't meet the plan, and you're, you've got to meet with, with the community. This one, we've met with the community. We've had two community meetings. Um, the last one, I only had one person on the call that was in opposition and several in support. This is a project where since I got elected, there have been several complaints. It is a HUD project um, currently where they, they have the um, HUD requirements and things. And I think it was shortly into my term, one of the units caught on fire. And my first concern was the children that were at school. And I found out that in that unit, they were like, again, I don't want to quote the numbers probably, but the child to adult ratio was very shocking to me. And I made sure that Metro um, Social Services were there to greet those students when they got off the bus from Sylvan Park Elementary. They don't go to the elementary school that's right down the street. Pick that up with the school board. It doesn't make sense to me. Um, and, and really, like that unit was a lost unit of affordable housing because this, pro this property is, it's not um, in the state of repair it should be. And so these families are going to be receiving services. Um, it is a one-to-one -one replacement. They will, the homes have to be, the new affordable homes have to be built before any of these units can be torn down. And so when you talk about bedroom count and you talk about how many people are currently living at Skyview and how many are being proposed and have been approved um, by the planning commission and were recommended by approval by the planning staff that meets Nashville Next Policy, this was a unit count that was acceptable. Um, and so with that, I'm happy to answer any questions, but this is one that we have been working on and I am, I am, I'm excited for the green space to be preserved in this community because it's not something that we're gonna get back from the one-off developers who don't have to add the infrastructure that this project will be mandatorily putting in place. All right, so With that, I renew my motion. Yeah, Councilmember Murphy has renewed her motion to pass 1815, 1816, 1817 on second reading, properly seconded discussion. Councilmember Sawara. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, a couple of questions for the sponsor. Um, I've received a couple of uh, emails and someone actually called and spoke to me directly. And I just want to, I think you've said it, but if you will reiterate and make sure we don't want another river chase happening. And what the person was worried about is that these are Section 8 residents, and they were so worried about displacement of those people. Mm -hmm. And so has that been communicated? Is that something that will be done where the people will be able to move to a place? Also, would there be an increase in their rents? Because moving them to another place where they cannot afford to pay for it, we don't want that to happen. We've seen that happen before. So if you can speak to that, please. Councilmember Murphy. Thank you. Um, thank you for that question. So I wanted to put an amendment on this legislation requiring those things because it is a private contract. Um, it was recommended not to put it, but we're still working that out with legal. The, f the great thing about this project being the, that it's currently in the HUD program is that the federal government regulates, requires, and does those checks to make sure that these residents will, that that the units will be replaced, that these residents are receiving the, serv the services that they need, that relocation is provided um, and, and protected. And that way, because we know that Metro is understaffed and CODES doesn't have the, the support to do that or planning doesn't have the support to do that. And this is one of those where it's the federal government, uh, the, the developers are not gonna get their green lights or their money if they don't follow the programs. And so all of that is guaranteed through the federal government program. Uh, and, Council and that includes the, the cost as well? Yes, as uh, Mr. Trent mentioned, the relocation costs are covered. Not the relocation oh. costs, but the rent. Oh, the rent, that is part of the HUD program, and so that is that is uh, part of it as well. Are you saying like the, the dollar amount? The dollar amount, so if they're paying it 50, then does it become 1,200? No, since it is, since this is paid for by the federal government, it will be, will be that is regulated through there. And then one last question, Mr. Mm -hmm. Vice Mayor, is that do we know, and I'm just putting this out because these are some of the concerns that we've had in terms of the location of the new place, is it where it's, uh, the distance is close enough so that the school and everything would not 
be a problem for the residents? Is that being considered? I strongly um, advised and suggested that. I know that they are looking in West Nashville in the same area, and um, but I don't know the exact location that they have identified, but they have said that it's going to be in West Nashville. And so I've also asked that they work with the school board and with MMPS to make sure that those, those children that are still at Sylvan Park Elementary can continue to finish out at Sylvan Park Elementary. Thank you. Thank you, Vice Mayor. All right. Council Member Benedict. Thank you, Vice Mayor, and uh, thank you, Council Member Suara, for uh, many of your questions were similar to mine. I actually worked with this um, company, First Cumberland Properties manages uh, Berkshire Place Apartments in District 7, which is a HUD um, Section A eligible 195-unit um, uh, uh, development, and this is one where we passed just this year an 800 unit SP with a plan amendment and we're going to use um, the mixed income pilot to make sure that people are not um, going to be displaced because that displacement is a big concern of mine. I will tell you that I worked with this organization, First Cumberland Properties, and with this developer since 2020. From the very beginning, they put the residents first, which was my goal. The first thing I said to my community was, I don't care if you live across the street, you'll be impacted, but who's going to be, imp I do care, but what I care most is the, who's gonna be impacted the most are the residents who live there today and what's going to happen there. Um, they are, uh, um, uh, they handled everything. They have a new development that's HUD um, eligible as well. And so they made sure that all of the processes were com um, completed with HUD. Um, and so uh, everything worked just as they explained. They were up front along every step of the way. So if they've been, it sounds like they've been communicating in the same way and working in the same way with Council Member Murphy. And from the answers that she just gave, my concerns um, are now um, allayed in regards to this. So uh, with that, just my, as it relates to this, from what I've heard tonight, uh, this is something that I'm going to support. And again, um, the organization that's, that's, that's doing this has worked with closely with me for three years on the project, very closely, and we took into consideration things like schools, and you know every single aspect. We met with the residents and asked what's important to them, and they addressed every single thing from moving costs to what's the new cost going to be in the HUD rules or whatever that percentage is that of their income that that remains in place. So um, I just wanted to speak to to that specifically because I have that personal experience with them. So thank you. All right, thank you, Council Member. Council Member Porterfield. Thank you, Vice Mayor, um, and thank you, Council Member Murphy. It sounds like you have worked extremely hard, and it sounds like this was a very thoughtful process. So thank you so much, and thank you to um, the developers and entity that have worked with you on this. Um, Council Member Sora did have a couple of questions that, that I had, so thank you for answering those. And also thank you, Council Member Benedict, for um, sharing your experience. Um, I did have two questions for the sponsor, Vice Mayor. Um, the first question is the current residents, have they been a part of the process? Have they expressed concerns or, or what type of feedback um, have the current residents given about the project? Council Member Murphy. So this is one where I've had the two community meetings. I think some residents came to the first meeting. It was held last fall. And so my memory is it's been a moment and those, those uh, sign-in sheets are not readily available at this point. Um, I do not think any of them attended the second meeting. It was virtual. Um, and I haven't heard from any residents up or, up or down. Thank you so much. And then my second question, um, I'm sorry, I got distracted with the bright yellow. Uh, my second question was, um, was there any consideration about um, possibly doing this development in phases in a way that the residents are not completely displaced so that you know units are created and then residents are moved into those units? So it's my understanding that the, the HUD guidelines is that a Skyview a unit cannot, like one of the current units cannot be demolished until the unit is replaced. So it is a one-to-one -one replacement where they have to be built, residents can move into there before current units can be demolished. This also is not, um, so if you can, if you look on on the attachments, there is a, like a, a an apartment complex at the top and then manor homes kind of surrounding that, that 
appear to look not like an apartment complex. And so it's not necessarily something that could be rebuilt in phases, I would assume that way. Um, and so this is something where I believe they will be built, the new units, and then moved over before dem demolition. Thank you, that helps out tremendously. So, I, because that's my concern, so I just wanna be clear. So the residents that are there now do not have to be relocated off site and displaced in other parts of the community. They can move directly from their unit to directly to another unit in the new development without having to leave the property. It will be, so, if I understand you correctly, there's not like an, one, there's not like an interim site um, to the new location in West Nashville is where residents will be open to move to. And then as Mr. Trent said, those residents will have first ability to move back to this site, but the HUD program will be on a new site. Do they help with relocation costs both for both moves? As Mr. Trent said, yes, all relocation, wraparound services, all of that is part of the HUD program and federal guidelines that they will have to, that they're mandated to to provide and that they are applying, have done in District 7. Otherwise, HUD's not going to um, going to pay them. Councilmember Porterfield, thank you. Your time's up. Do you, do you need more time? Just one quick comment. Um, thank you again. It sounds like y'all have been very, very thoughtful. I just want to share my only concern about it is. Um, it is hard to kind of uproot and go somewhere else. Even with like moving assistance, it is hard to like uproot your life and go somewhere else. And it is very commendable that people will be able to move back, but that's also really hard because once you move somewhere else and you start roots there, then you're like displacing people a second time. So uh, I'm still thinking through this one, but it sounds very thoughtful and definitely on the right track. And, and it sounds like y'all have done an amazing job. So thank you for everything that, that y'all have done on this. All right, thank you, Council Member. Nobody else is in the queue. Anybody else got any questions about this? All right, Council Member Murphy. Thank you, and I will say that I spoke to um, Council Lady Benedict about her experience with uh, this development and the process that they um, followed in her district, and that gave me uh, an increased comfort level given some of the other uh, similar projects and, and things that we have discussed this term here. And so with that, I renew my motion. Okay, uh, anybody else on this one? All right, Council Member Murphy has uh, moved 18, 15, 18, 16, 18, 17 for passage on second reading was properly seconded. No other discussion, we're ready to vote. All those in favor of those three measures uh, passing on second reading say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Uh, all three bills pass on second reading. These bills require three readings, so we're on second reading. All right, we're on number eight, which can be taken with number nine. This is by Council Member O'Connell and Sledge. Uh, 2023-1820 ordinance to amend title 17 by change from CF to SP zoning for properties located at 1609 McGavick Street, 115 16th Avenue South, and 114 and 116 17th Avenue South. And then the companion bill, which is item number nine, BL 2023-1821, ordinance to authorize building material restrictions requirements for BL 2023-1820. Proposed ordinance requires certain materials to restrict the construction of buildings. Council member Sledge, you are recognized on those two. Thank you, Vice Mayor. My understanding is that on both these bills it will need to be deferred to the August public hearing because of notice issues. That's right, uh, notice issue on both of them so they'll be automatically deferred to the first meeting in August, okay? Thank you. All right, uh, item number 10, BL 2023-1834 by Council Member Hall. Ordinance to amend Title 17 by change from CL to MULA NS zoning for property located at 4026 Clarksville Pike, approximately 420 feet southeast of Cedar Circle and within the Clarksville Pike at Fairview Center Urban Design Overlay. Council Member Hall, you are recognized. Open the public hearing, please. All right, um, so um, declare the public hearing open. A show of hands of those who are here in favor of this measure. Show of hands of those who are here in opposition of this measure. Councilmember Hall, I, I didn't see anybody on either side. Declare the public hearing closed. You're recognized. Move for approval. All right, motion is to approve 1834 on second reading, properly seconded. Any discussion on the measure? Seeing none, all those in favor of the measure say aye. 
Opposed, no. Uh, 1834 passes on second reading. Item number 11, BL 2023-1838 by Council Member Toombs. Ordinance to amend Title 17 uh, by changing from RS 7.5 to RM 20A zoning for property located at Ewing Drive, unnumbered at the southeast corner of Knight Drive and Ewing Drive. Council Member Toombs, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Request to open the public hearing. Declare the public hearing open. A show of hands of those who are here in favor of this measure. Show of hands of those who are here in opposition to this measure. Okay, we've got hands in opposition. Anybody in favor that I may have missed? It's number 11. Number 11. Anybody in favor? Okay, if you're in favor. All right, got hands showing in favor. All right, if you would like to speak, we've got hands on both sides. If you'd like to speak, go ahead and come to the microphone. Uh, name, address, and then you'll have two minutes in which to speak. Okay, we are on item number 11, BL 2023-1838 by Council Member Toombs. Uh, again, name, address, and then two minutes. You're recognized. Hi, my name is Tom Kesey. Uh, I live at um, 1101 North 8th, um, Nashville, Tennessee. Um, I am a um, builder, developer. Um, I feel that this is gonna be a really good project. It um, is within the Nash Nashville Next um, policy. Uh, we have asked to do a regulatory SP. Uh, there's been a little bit of confusion around uh, unit count and stuff like that, so I think that that will squash um, th those um, concerns. Um, we also ask for planning's recommendation in regards to um, what they would like to see, and we've uh, adopted all the recommendations that planning has uh, asked for. We uh, also will be adding sidewalks to the project. Um, there, that will also increase the visibility on the project. Uh, that corner has very poor visibility, and with the sidewalks uh, on there, we will increase the visibility uh, quite a bit, increasing the safety of the area. Um, we, um, we've been working with um, Historic, uh, with Graham Perry and uh, state archeologist uh, Phil Hodge uh, in regards to the um, graves on the property, the uh, Historic um, Ewing um, property. And uh, we're looking to in, enhance the uh, cemetery area. And um, we um, have uh, been checking into what it will take to make that a, um, a historic area and also put a historic marker and, and make it a, a feature of the property and something that uh, people in the neighborhood can be proud of. Uh, we've uh, researched into the history of the area and we would like to uh, preserve the African-American and the state history. Thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, next speaker, name, address, two minutes. My name is Reed Robertson. I'm one of the um, owner developers like Tom um, in the project. And um, I'd like to just re reiterate some of the things that, that Tom said about, um, especially the, the tree line along Night Drive. Um, through our development of the property, we'd like to cut down those trees. Um, there's been too many complaints to count regarding the low visibility at the intersection because of the tree line. Um, our aim is to prevent accidents and improve sight lines for drivers and create a safer commute for people um, traveling along Ewing and Night Drive um, in that intersection right there. Um, also to reiterate some of the things that Tom said, I'm excited about the aspect of the proposal um, regarding the, um, the grave site, because um, our plan is to create a historic memorial garden um, on the property. And uh, because of the graves found on the property and the history surrounding them, our aim is to create a feature to um, enhance the property's visual appeal um, in an effort to recognize and respect the history um, of Nashville and Tennessee. Um, the garden will be built overlooking our bioretention area. And um, it's, it's in the northwest corner of the property, which is where our bioretention area will be, and it will serve as a, um, 
a reflection of our community's past and a space for contemplation and um, a place where history can be visited for uh, many generations to come. Um, and like Tom said, we're working diligently to make this an official historical site, um, which uh, we hope would foster uh, community interaction in, in the neighborhood and hopefully instill a sense of pride among the, among the neighborhood residents. Um, so all that said, we're aiming to um, enhance the property safety and historical reverence through the development. Um, and so progress requires um, adaptation and um, we've thought a lot about this plan and about this development and um, we're, we're hoping to respect the past as well as do a development that would um, serve the neighborhood properly. Thank you. All right, thank you. Let me get your address. Um, 4476 South Carillas Road. All right, thank you. Yeah, Franklin. All right, next speaker, name, address, two minutes. Yes, sir, will do. My name is Walter Green. I live at 227 4th Avenue South in Franklin, Tennessee. I spent most of my life in Nashville and loved it and moved to Franklin eight years ago after my wife died. I have deep roots in Franklin, including six primary lines of cousins, all descended from Revolutionary War Captain Ewing, about whom we're speaking tonight, his former property. This past winter, Mr. Casey of Stratus approached my cousin Leonora Clifford, who is here as well, to let her know about his plans for for the site, the former Ewing property. Since then, three of the six cousins who are at the head of their lines of descendants have had a number of meetings and uh, numerous phone calls with Mr. Kesey. We three and the other three primary cousins have always been appreciative of his desire to fully involve us in the process. His honesty and openness with us and his earnest respect for the legal process and for the dead. Those graves are important to us, and none of the six, even though we're descendants, has any financial interest in this property. All six, representing our descendants, support Mr. Kesey's plan to keep all the graves on site and to relocate several scattered graves to be with the largest group just a few feet away so that all can be protected and respected. Thank you very much. All right, thank you. Next speaker. Former council member, Scott Davis. I want to be brief, colleagues. I know you got a long night. Um, just to wrap it up, Tom Kesey is a dear friend of mine and neighbor. Um, 918 Thomas Avenue in the Fighting 5th District. Go Sean Parker. Um, Tom bought this property before he had the invested rights. Now, I'll be honest, I advised him against it. I said, get your zoning and let's talk to historic and get everything together. But he did that because that's the kind of guy he is. He always does the right thing. Um, Tom immediately, um, he started purchasing the property in October. Shortly afterwards, he reached out to the family members, both European and African-American descendants, to get their input. And Tom is working with the state historic folks, he's working with the archaeologists, and we have lowered, he has lowered the unit count in an email to planning and to uh, the wonderful council lady, your speaker pro Tim, and more importantly, um, he, we are not, he is not removing any trees, he's cutting them back, the plan, we asked the planning commission to we cut the limbs back so there is visibility because a lot of the trucks get bottlenecked because when they try and turn that corner, they have to go really, really slow so they don't hit anybody on a corner at Ewing and Knight Road. So we're not removing any trees, okay? We're just gonna cut them back so the trucks can see around, which will help with the bottleneck. We're not removing any trees. Thank you very much. God bless all y'all. All right, thank you. All right, anybody else wishing to speak in favor? All right, those who are in opposition, if you would come forward. Anybody wishing to speak in opposition, come on in. Come on down, get in line, uh, back podium, name, address, two minutes. Go ahead. My name is Jocelyn Imani. I'm at 2937 Clay Mill Boulevard. I have concerns about um, the impact of increasing the density in this part of town, how it will impact traffic, how will it impact um, our 
life over there. It's pretty quiet over there, and that part of t that, that area is actually undeveloped. So if we develop it and put a bunch of people there, it could make it chaotic. Also, as a professional historian and land conservation professional, I'm especially concerned about the treatment of the historic graves. I do um, know and respect Mr. Green's uh, approval as a member of the descendant community. However, as one of the previous residents mentioned, uh, his non-residents in the area Area would also, it, it speaks to the fact that he wouldn't have to deal with the impacts of this development. I got Mr. Keese's card and I'll be continuing to pay attention. So it's not a hard no, but I do have some concerns. Thank you. All right, thank you. Next speaker, name, address, two minutes. My name is Rhonda Moore and I live at 660 Ewing Drive. Uh, I have resided, my husband and I have resided at 660 Ewing Drive for the past 42 years. I'm opposed to the, to the development of 50 multifamily homes on two and a half acres that will be, laid, re, be located three houses from my home. I'm opposed due to infrastructure and safety issues. This area currently has several new developments in progress now. They include the 600 block of Ewing Drive approved for 46 lots, Green Lane approved for 70. This is in addition to the existing subdivisions of Clay Mill, Brookview, Golden Valley, and two habitat communities. A much larger development is on the other side of Ewing Pass Brick Church Pipe. There is also a new development next to the fire hall on White's Creek Pipe. This area is a major thoroughfare to get from White's Creek Pipe to Brick Church Pipe and beyond. The infrastructure is simply not present to support the increased traffic in this area. This area does not have sidewalks or even a traffic light, only one stop sign. Some of Night Road has no lighting and there's also a blind curve. FedEx and UPS both have hubs that exit onto Night Road. 18 wheelers and regular delivery trucks use Night Road daily and contribute to the increased traffic. How would these new residents get in and out safely as it is becoming increasingly more difficult for current residents, particularly at peak times? Will there be sufficient police and fire protection for the area? My husband and I retired and realized that we no longer have the peaceful neighborhood we moved into 42 years ago. Change and growth are inevitable, but it does not have to destroy the character of existing neighborhoods. All right, thank you, Ms. Moore. Uh, next speaker, name, address, two minutes. Hello, my name is Marilyn Branham. I live at 2944 Clay Mill Boulevard. I um, have issues with this um, amendment for several, several reasons. First of all, the Planning Commission did approve with conditions. And what they did not say was one of the conditions was that if they find any more graves, that they have to be accommodated and not built upon. They also agreed to allow 20% at least set aside for the grave conservation. The area is only two and a half acres. So that means roughly two acres is left for the 50 units, which at the meeting they also expressed that that is the very, very top of the building allowed in this that they're trying to build. The rock quarry is directly across the street, a uh, two lane street from these houses, uh, that, this proposal. These units are going to shake tremendously um, it, I don't know if any of you have ever been in an earthquake. Well, I feel it a lot, and I'm quite a distance away from this new development. I don't understand how anyone would be allowed to build that close to Rock Quarry. If you stood on the property that he's pro proposing to build, you, without little um, skill, could throw a baseball across the street to where the blasting is. The dirt and the dust is tremendous. Also, the smell after a blasting is horrific. This is the wrong site to be building anything on. Thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, next speaker. Hi. 
My name is Claudia Wright. I live at 532 Mill Station Drive, uh, Nashville, which is part of the Clay Mills uh, subdivision. One, the first subdivision that, that has to flow out to Ewing Lane, uh, right behind where this proposed project would be. Please note that everybody that stood here for this project was a part of the project except for the descendant uh, of the uh, other um, persons who are buried there, of the Ewings, I, I suppose. So uh, I understand that there are slaves buried there, as many as nine. So let me stand as one of those descendants to represent the slaves who are buried there. Uh, everybody, as I said, that has spoken for this are people who have a financial interest other than the descendant and who don't live in the area. They don't understand what we will have to go through when when and if this project is proposed. It has the wrong land usage. That's one of the reasons we're here. We've asked for our representative to change that land use policy back from evolving to maintenance because it is so close to that rock quarry and so many problems but that wasn't done. We've asked to have help with a conservation overlay so that we would not continue to get all of these mass density uh, projects proposed in our neighborhood to, to that all have to flow out on this two lane street Ewing Drive, but we haven't been successful with that. If we were, we wouldn't keep getting these mass density proposals that don't, uh, that are not conducive for our neighborhood. We are a single family home neighborhood and the massive density that is being brought to Ewing Drive is horrific. We already have just up the street 162 apartments and 29 townhouses being built. We already have another uh, project of 46 single family homes being built. We have other habitat humanity uh, subdivision being built. We are massively and please help us because you're our last help. Thank right. you. Thank you, Ms. Wright. Anybody else wish to speak on this one? Okay. Declare the public hearing closed. Council Member Toombs, you're recognized. Uh, thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I want to uh, move for approval on second, deferring third reading to the first meeting in August with a comment. All right, so the motion is to approve on second reading tonight. The third reading would be at the first meeting in August. That's the motion properly seconded. Back to you, Council Member Toombs. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. So Ewing Drive is uh, one of the more established parts of, of District 2. And I do want, I thank the folks who've come out to speak both for and against. I, I appreciate when people engage in the process. Um, I wanna say this project is not 50 units. I know that was in the application, but I, as I stated at Planning Commission, whenever we get to the final version of this, it won't be 50 units, it'll be something significantly less. Um, there are some infrastructure concerns regarding that um, Night Drive, Ewing, uh, Ewing Drive, Night Road intersection. When you have a rezoning, uh, there's an opportunity to work with the developer to address some of those infrastructure concerns. I know uh, improving the lighting in the area has been addressed. Uh, looking at whether or not a traffic light was feasible for that intersection has been addressed. So putting side walls, cutting back the trees so that there's more visibility, um, that it's safer uh, to get around. Uh, those issues have been discussed. Um, the property owner by right can build 14 units. Um, so there's not a scenario where someone builds nothing there and it remains empty unless someone buys it and keeps it empty. So uh, by right, there could be 14 additional units there with no infrastructure improvements. And so I wanna make sure people are aware of that, that this is an opportunity to get some potential infrastructure improvements for the area. And I do wanna address some concerns about uh, Ewing Drive. Ewing Drive doesn't qualify for a conservation overlay because there's been too much development along Ewing Drive. Uh, so it doesn't have enough of a, a historical character to qualify for a conservation overlay. Plus there are a lot of zero lot lines on Ewing Drive, which makes it not a good candidate for a contextual overlay. So I've looked at that. But what I did do, there was a piece of um, more central to the Ewing Drive area. There was a piece that was neighborhood evolving 
that plan was changed at my direction uh, and my application to neighborhood maintenance. So the vast majority of UN Drive is neighborhood maintenance. This particular piece of property is right, bumps up to industrial, it bumps up to a rock quarry, it bumps up to one of the major corridors, just as the multifamily development does at the end of UN Drive, it bumps up against Brick Church Pike. Um, so there has been efforts made to preserve UN Drive as much as possible. And there will be another community meeting to discuss this project July 20th at 6 p.m. I'm working on a location that's in that UN Drive area, so I will let the community know. Uh, but there is a Zoom link. It is tinyurl.com backslash capital D, number two, July, all caps, 20 TH all caps. So that's six o'clock, July 20th, that's a Thursday. And I renew my motion. All right, thank you, Councilmember Toombs. The motion is to approve tonight on second reading bill 2023-1838, and then third reading would be held on August the 1st. That's the motion properly second. Any uh, discussion on that one? Seeing none, we're on the motion. All those in favor of the motion say aye. Opposed, no. Uh, motion is adopted. Thank you, Councilmember Toombs. Item number 12, BL 2023-1866 by Councilmember Sepulveda. Uh, ordinance to amend Title 17 by change from OR20 to CS for property located 5050 Linbar Drive, east of the intersection of Wallace Road and Linbar Drive. Councilmember Sepulveda, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I think this is deferred automatically due to notice. That's right. Um, so no notices, so it's deferred to the first meeting in August. Uh, item number 13, BL 2023-1878 by Council Member Lee and Council Member Withers. Ordinance to amend Title 17 by changing from CL to IR zoning for property located at 936 Firestone Parkway, the western corner of Gould Boulevard and Firestone Parkway. Council Member Withers, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd like to request to open the public hearing. All right. Um, declare the public hearing open. A show of hands of those who are here in favor of this measure. All right, thank you. A show of hands of those who are here in opposition to this measure. Don't see anybody in opposition. Anybody in favor wish to speak? All right, seeing none, declare the public hearing closed. Council Member Weathers, you're recognized. Thank you, I'd like to move for approval and look forward to Council Member Lee uh, discussing any questions with us in planning and zoning committee right. in two weeks. Sounds good. Um, uh, Council Member Withers is making a motion to approve on um, second reading properly. Seconded, any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. Um, passes on second reading. Uh, we're on BL 2023-1884. That's item number 14 by Council Member Sledge, Benedict and Welsh, an ordinance codifying an updated version of BL 2019-78, providing that non-owner occupied short-term rental properties be located at a minimum distance requirements from church, schools, daycares, and parks. Ordinance was approved during a council session with the section of the Metropolitan Code to be amended. By that ordinance was simultaneously moved to another title in the code, rendering uh, 201978 uncodifiable. Uh, Council Member Sledge, recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Open the public hearing, please. Okay, I think I've got a uh, committee report. Government Operations, Council Member Benedict. Thank you, Vice Mayor. GovOps, uh, approve this five in favor, zero against. All right, thank you. Now, Council Member Sledge. Thank you for the committee update. Um, please open the public hearing. Okay, declare the public hearing open. A show of hands to those who are here in favor of this measure. Okay, a uh, show of hands to those who are here in opposition to this measure. Seeing nobody in opposition, anybody in favor wishing to speak? Seeing none, declare the public hearing closed. Council Member Sledge, on your bill. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I, um, because I want to leave this open to be amendable, we're still working on an amendment with Metro Legal. I'm going to ask that we uh, defer second reading, one meeting to the second meeting in July. Okay, so we're not voting tonight on this. We're simply deferring second reading for one meeting. Yes. Is that right? Mm -hmm. That's the motion properly seconded. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion, which means to basically defer second reading uh, one meeting, say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Um, motion is adopted. We are on item number 15, BL 2023-1888 by Council Member Pulley. Ordinance amending the Metropolitan Code by changing the name of the Stormwater Management Committee to the Stormwater Management Commission. Uh, Council Member Pulley, you're recognized. 
I uh, moved to open the public hearing. Okay, I got a transportation report from you. Uh, we didn't hear that in transportation uh, today. Okay. Mr. Vice Mayor. I assume it'll be referred back to transportation on third reading. All right, so Council Member Pulley is uh, requesting that I open the public hearing on this one. Um, declare the public hearing open. A show of hands to those who are here in favor of this particular measure. Show of hands of those who are here in opposition to this measure. Didn't see anybody on either side. Declare the public hearing closed. Council Member Pulley, you're recognized. I would move approval on second reading. All right, Council Member Pulley is moving approval on second reading. Properly seconded. Any discussion on it? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion to pass on second reading say aye. <coughs> uh, post say no. Uh, motion passes on second reading. Uh, item number 16, Bill 2023-1891 by Council Member Mendez, Roten, Withers, and Allen. This is an ordinance approving amendment number six to the Arch Center Redevelopment Plan, amendment number one to the Bordeaux Redevelopment Plan, amendment number one to the Case, Casey Place Redevelopment Plan, amendment number one to the Central State Redevelopment Plan, amendment number two to the Jefferson Street Redevelopment Plan, amendment number six to the Phillips Jackson Redevelopment Plan, amendment number eight to the Rutland Hill Redevelopment Plan, and amendment number one to the Skyline Redevelopment Plan. Council Member Mendes, you're recognized. Um, thank you, Vice Mayor. With this one, I'm going to withdraw it, but if I could have a brief explanation with that. All right, so this one's gonna be withdrawn. Councilor Member Mendes, you recognized. Um, thanks. Uh, I wanna thank the members of Planning and Zoning Committee and Budget and Finance for their work yesterday on this. During those committee meetings, um, I discussed that there was an ongoing conversation with MDHA. Um, after uh, those discussions say at their request, um, they would like this taken up in the next term. And so um, at the request, I'm withdrawing the legislation. All right, so this one's uh, 16 is withdrawn. Thank you, Council Member Mendez. All right, uh, Council Member Toombs, item number 17, BL 2023-1911, ordinance to amend Title 17 by amending the specific plan on property located at 2306 Brick Church Pike at the southeast corner of Avondale Circle and Hampton Street. Council Member Toombs, you're recognized on your bill. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Request to open a public hearing. Okay, declare the public hearing open. A show of hands with those who are here in favor of this measure. We're on BL 2023-1911. Show of hands of those who are here in opposition to this measure. Councilmember Toombs, I didn't see anybody. You don't seem to be um, on most of your bills. Nobody <laughs> seems to be coming. All right, declare the public hearing closed. Councilmember Toombs, you're recognized. Move for approval. Got a motion to approve 1911 on second reading properly. Seconded any discussion. Seeing none, all those in favor of 1911 for passing on second reading say aye. Opposed, no. Uh, this one passes on second reading. Uh, we're on item number 18, which can be taken with item number 19. It's by Council Member Gamble. Uh, BL 2023-1912, ordinance to amend Title 17 by changing from AR 2A and R10 to SP on properties located at Hickory Hills Boulevard and Brick Church Pike, unnumbered, approximately 42 feet west of Summertime Drive. It's 92.63 acres. And then the companion bill is an ordinance to authorize building material restrictions requirement for BL 2023-1912. Uh, proposed ordinance requires certain materials restricted in the construction of buildings. Council Member Gamble, you are recognized. Where are you? There you are. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Request to open the public hearing. Okay, we're on 1912 and 1913. Declare the public hearing open. Show of hands of those who are here in favor of those two measures. All right, show of hands of those who are here in opposition of those two measures. All right, so I, got, I think I have a hand in favor and a hand against. All right, or a couple of hands in favor and a hand against. So anybody in favor wishing to speak, come on up. Name, address, two minutes. <clears throat> Thank you, Vice Mayor, members of the council. I'm Roy Dell, Dell and Associates 516 Heather Place, and I'm representing the property owner on this zone change request. Um, this is a process that actually took a long time. It's about two years, multiple community meetings, I think four or five community meetings, several hundred people most likely. Uh, this is a plan that was put together with great community input, the vision of the council member. Um, this is a mixed use development that actually its access does not pass a single residence, so that's pretty unique. It has access directly off of Oak Creek Boulevard, close to the interstate. Part of this plan is actually to rework an intersection there that needs to be reworked. 
uh, this plan meets the land use policy. There was actually a policy amendment that went with this in order to make sure that everything was exactly correct the way it should be. And so it's recommended approved by all the departments of Metro. It's endorsed by the community and hopefully the council member. I appreciate her vision. She's worked very diligently on this and we appreciate it very much. Thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, anybody else wishing to speak in favor? All right, uh, individuals wishing to speak in opposition, if you'd come forward, um, need your name, address, and then you'll have two minutes. Hi, my name is Susan Silvera, and I live at 109 Rachel Ann Court in the Cobblestone Creek subdivision. My backyard is adjacent to one of the parcels for which an application uh, for rezoning has been submitted. Uh, we chose uh, to build our property or to build our home on this property because of the peace and quiet and the safety that this area affords. Um, it's been very quiet and our backyard is a sanctuary, a quiet place where our children love to play. But these advantages of living on our property would go away if a mixed use development were constructed, were constructed right behind our home. Our family and other families on Rachel Ann Court, Summertime Drive, Fall Drive, Autumn Ridge Drive, and Winter Place, to which parcel 067 backs up, would be dealing with more noise and safety concerns, as, as there would be people from outside our subdivision constantly coming and going right up against our backyards. Our area does not have the infrastructure to support this kind of development. With Old Hickory Boulevard east of Hickory Hills Boulevard being a two-lane highway, and the very short portion of OHB that is a four-lane highway west of Hickory Hills is simply to accommodate the on and off ramps to the interstate. At rush hour, we already have a lot of vehicles entering and exiting the three convenience stores near the proposed development. The residents of the Cobblestone Creek subdivision have long needed a traffic light to exit our uh, neighborhood at the intersection of OHB and Cobblestone Creek. And I'm concerned about the um, increased chance of accidents in our area. I strongly urge the Metro Council to consider how a mixed use development would affect the livability of the neighborhood surrounding it and to vote against the rezoning request. Thank you. All right, thank you. All right, anybody else wishing to speak on this one? Okay, to clear the public hearing closed, Council Member Gamble, if you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor, and thank you to everyone who came out to speak on this project. As it was stated um, earlier, this we've had multiple, over a two year period, multiple community meetings regarding this project. It's gone through multiple iterations uh, and to get it to the point where it had a broad community support. Uh, the cobblestone uh, community does back up to this property. However, there's at least a 40 foot um, barrier or between the cobblestone Creek community and this project with, with screening of uh, trees that will not be disturbed. There will not be a connection, at least a driving connection to this uh, property. However, there will be a walkway so that the Cobblestone Creek community can enjoy the um, commercial and retail that this development will bring. There has been a lot of requests uh, over many years for more retail and uh, commercial development. This project brings that to this area as well as quality single family homes and multifamily homes that are also needed. Uh, the project is off of a major thoroughfare, uh, Old Hickory Boulevard. It's also right next to I-24. It's 92 acres, many of which they will not build on because of the typo, uh, type of type topography uh, on the property. So I, I understand and appreciate the concerns that have been expressed today. I, this is my first time hearing about a request for a traffic light at the Cobblestone Creek Old Hickory Boulevard intersection. I would will work with that community and looking at traffic calming measures because no traffic calming uh, application has been filed. So there are other things that we can do to address concerns for the community as in regards to traffic calming. However, uh, this project, as I said, has been vetted profusely and has brought support and asked for your support today. All right, thank you, Council Member. Um, 
any discussion? It's a motion to approve um, on second reading. We're on items number 18 and 19, 19, 12, and 19, 13. Uh, it's a motion to approve on second reading, properly seconded. Any discussion on this? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion to approve say aye. Opposed, no. Uh, motion is adopted. All right, we're on item number 20, Bill 2023-1914 by Council Member Syracuse. It's an ordinance to amend Title 17 by amending a specific plan on property located at 1636 Lebanon Pike, approximately 1,000 feet west of uh, Clover Nook Drive, zone SP. Council Member Syracuse, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Open the public hearing, please. Okay, declare the public hearing open. A show of hands of those who are here in favor of this measure. All right, show of hands of those who are here in opposition to this measure. I only saw one set of hands and it was in favor. Um, anybody in favor wishing to speak? No, see a head nodding no. Council member, um, declare the public hearing closed. Council member Syracuse, you recognize. Move approval, thank you, Vice Mayor. Okay, I got a motion to approve BL 2023-1914, uh, properly seconded. This is on second reading, any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. This one's adopted. Councilmember Parker, Bill 2023-1915, ordinance to amend Title 17, by amending specific plan for various properties located in the northwest and northeast corners of Cleveland Street, Meridian Street, to permit and increase the number of permitted hotel rooms and permit the construction of a new hotel. Councilmember Parker, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I'd like to open the public hearing. Okay, declare the public hearing open. A show of hands of those who are here in favor of this project. Okay, a show of hands of those who are here in opposition of this project. Didn't see anybody in opposition. Anybody uh, in favor wishing to speak? No, declare the pup. Wait a minute, hands up. Okay. All right, uh, need uh, your name, address, and then you'll have two minutes in which to speak. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Mm -hmm. uh, my name is Robert Devitt, and I live at uh, 1113 Stockel Street um, in East Nashville. And I also, I represent as deacon uh, to Faith Temple Church, which is located at 1600 Meridian Street. And pardon my lack of procedure, um, first time ever attending a council meeting, but we as a church have questions. I believe it's on this zoning because um, one of the parcels is absolutely adjacent to our left of our church. And we are in concern as to what is going to be taking place there at, I believe the location is 1602, it might be 1604 Meridian. And what is, we also have question and concern on what is our fate? Is, is somebody coming after our property in the near future? Uh, I, 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 I rest my case there. All right. Um, well, what I would tell you to do is after this is, uh, after we get through this public hearing, I think Councilmember Parker would be happy to talk to you. Uh, I would appreciate a meeting with Mr. Parker, yes. Yeah, and that way you can get your questions answered to kind of figure out where it goes. Thank okay? you. All right. Um, thank you. Um, we got another speaker, name, address, two minutes. Good evening. Chip Howarth, 7337 Cockrell Bend Boulevard. Um, Thank y'all for your time tonight. Um, this is actually 901 Meridian, corner of Cleveland Meridian Street. I believe the gentleman's thinking of a different property. Um, on this project in particular, we kind of border both McFerrin Park and Cleveland Park neighborhoods. We've had multiple meetings with both communities. Um, appreciate the involvement of the council member, council member Parker on this. Um, a long process through planning commission um, and have been working on this for over two years. So we would appreciate your support tonight and thank you for all that you do for Nashville. All right, thank you. Anybody else on this one? Yep, come on up. Name, address, two minutes. Hey, uh, David Brassfield, 1809 Meridian Street. Um, our area has a ton of abandoned buildings, and I'd love to see them filled. So I'm uh, for this measure. All right, thank you. Anybody else? All right. All right. Declare the public hearing closed. Councilmember Parker, you're recognized on your bill. It's 1915. Um, Thank you, Vice Mayor. So on this, um, I did get a request from one of the neighborhood associations to defer this to allow us to have another meeting. It's a little bit of an unusual situation because um, 
this project was recommended for disapproval by planning staff, um, which I think led neighbors to not show up to that planning commission meeting. Um, uh, but then the planning commission ultimately did approve it. Um, so what I'd like to do is um, um, to make sure that we have, we maintain the, the possibility of, of this passing this term, um, defer second reading to the first meeting in August, um, which will hopefully give us time to get both the Cleveland Park and McFerrin folks together um, who have remaining concerns about this um, to discuss. So that's my motion is to defer second to the first meeting in uh, August. Okay, you've heard the motion properly seconded. Uh, any questions about the motion? So we're not voting on second tonight. We'll defer second reading to the first meeting in August. Any discussion? All right, seeing none, all those in favor of that motion say aye. Opposed, no. Uh, motion is adopted. All right, we're on items number 22, which we can take with uh, 23 and 24. This is by Council Member Toombs. <clears throat> Uh, item number 22 is BL 2023-1916. It's an ordinance to uh, amend Title 17 by change from R8 and SP, uh, SP to SP zoning at 2156 Buena Vista Pike. Buena Vista Pike on number 1204, 1122, 120B, 1120, 1110, 1118, 1116, 1112, 1108, 1106, 1230, 1250, 1252, West Trinity Lane and River Pearl Place unnumbered along West Trinity Lane. Uh, the companion bill, which is Item number 23, Bill 2023-1917, uh, an ordinance authorized uh, building material restrictions requirements for Bill 2023-1916. Proposed ordinance requires certain materials to restrict in the construction of buildings. And item number 24, Bill 2023-1918, it's an ordinance to amend Title 17 by canceling a planned unit development on property located at 1260 West Trinity Lane and Buena Vista Pike, unnumbered at the intersection of West Trinity Lane and Buena Vista Pike, zoned R8. Council Member Toombs, you are recognized. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Request to open the public hearing. Okay, we're on all three bills. We're on 1916, 1917, and 1918. Declare the public hearing open. A show of hands to those who are here in favor of those measures. All right. A uh, show of hands of those who are here in opposition to those measures. I didn't see anybody in opposition. Those in favor wish to speak. I see Mr. White giving me the no sign. So um, I, anybody? I take that at his word. Declare the public hearing closed. Council Member Toombs, you're recognized. Thank you. I want to move for approval on second and defer third reading to the first meeting in August. All right. Um, okay. So uh, approved tonight and the third um, approved, uh, put it on third reading for the first meeting in August. Okay. Got it. All right. You've heard the motion properly seconded. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Uh, you adopt. All right. Uh, we are on item number 25. Uh, also, no, by Council Member Gamble, you have an amendment, Council Member Toombs. Where's Council Member Gamble? Okay. All right. While we're looking for her, we'll go on to 26 by Council Member Syracuse. Bill 2023-1920, uh, an ordinance to amend Title 17 by amending a neighborhood landmark overlay district on property located at 2250 Lebanon Pike, northeast corner of the Bradley Parkway in Lebanon Pike, zoned RS20 and R8, partially within the downtown Donaldson Urban Design Overlay District. Council Member Syracuse, recognized on your bill. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Open the public hearing, please. Okay. To clear the public hearing open, we are on item number 26, Bill 2023-1920. Declare the public hearing open. A show of hands of those who are here in favor of that measure. All right, thank you. A show of hands of those who are here in opposition to that measure. Didn't see anybody in opposition. Those in favor wish to speak. Seeing nobody coming forward, declare the public hearing closed. Council Member Syracuse, you're on your bill. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Move approval. Got a motion to approve, properly seconded. We're on item number 26. It's Bill 2023-1920. Um, all those in favor of the motion say aye. Opposed, no, you adopt. Uh, Council Member Gamble, we're on item number 25, Bill 2023-1919. It's an ordinance to amend Title 17 by change from R8 to SP zoning for a portion of property located at 4808 Buena Vista Pike, west of Whites Creek Pike, 45.64 acres. Council Member Gamble, you are recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Request to open the public hearing. To close the public hearing, open a show of hands to those who are here in favor of this measure. All right, show of hands of those who are here in opposition to these to this measure. Okay, I don't see anybody in opposition. Those in favor wish to speak. 
All right, nobody's coming forward. Declare the public hearing closed. Council Member Gamble, you're on your bill. Move for approval. Okay, I got a motion to approve, properly seconded. I um, don't want to take up the amendment. Okay, all right, so uh, I've got a motion to approve. It's BL 2023-1919, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of 2023-1919 uh, for passes on second reading, say aye. aye. Opposed, nope. Uh, that one you adopt. Uh, we're on item number 27, which can be taken with uh, item number 28 and 29. Uh, this is by Council Member Taylor, and somebody's picking up his bills, Council Member Toombs. All right, 1921 is an ordinance to amend Title 17 by applying a historic landmark overlay district for property located at 1926 10th Avenue North, corner of 10th Avenue North and Clay Street, zoned R6. Item number 28 is the companion bill, BL 2023-1922, Ordinance of authorized building material restrictions requirements for BL 2023-1921. Proposed ordinance requires certain materials to be restricted in the construction of buildings. And BL 2023-1923, an ordinance to amend Title 17 by applying a, nan a neighborhood landmark overlay district on property located at 1926 10th Avenue North, corner of 10th Avenue North and Clay Street, zoned R6. Uh, we can take all three bills at the same time. Uh, Council Member Toombs, you're recognized. Mr. Vice Mayor, request to open the public hearing. Okay, uh, I am opening the public hearing on 1921, 1922, and 1923. Show of hands of those who are here in favor of those measures. Okay, show of hands of those who are here in opposition of those measures. Don't see anybody in opposition. Uh, those in favor wish to speak? Nope, okay, declare the public hearing closed. Council Member Toombs, you recognize on all three bills. Move for approval. Got a motion to approve 1921, 1922, and 1923 on uh, second reading. Properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. All those in favor say aye. That's better. Opposed, no. Uh, those three bills uh, pass on second reading. Council Member Toombs, it's your night, BL 2023 1924. Uh, item number 30, ordinance to amend Title 17 by applying a sexual overlay district of various properties located north of Rich Acres Drive and east of Creekwood Drive Zone RS10. Council Member Toombs, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Request to open the public hearing. Declare the public hearing open. Uh, show of hands of those who are here in favor of that measure. Show of hands of those who are here in opposition to that measure. Don't see anybody in opposition. I uh, don't see anybody in favor. Declare the public hearing closed. Council Member Toombs, you're recognized. Move for approval. Got a motion to approve. We're on BL 2023-1924. It's item number 30. Properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the bill passing on second reading say aye. aye. Opposed, nope. Uh, bill passes on second reading. Uh, we're on items 31, which we can take with item 32 by Council Member Gamble. Uh, BL 2023 1925, ordinance to amend Title 17. By changing from R10 to SP zoning for property located at White Creek Pike, a number to approximately 56 feet south of Green Lane uh, <clears throat> to permit all uses of MUL, uh, with the exception of uh, uses listed uh, as prohibited within the SP. And uh, the companion bill, BL 2023-1926, ordinance to authorize building material restrictions requirements for BL 2023-1925. Proposed ordinance requires certain materials to be restricted in the construction of buildings. Council Member Gamble, you are recognized on the two bills. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Request to open the public hearing. Decla uh, declare the public hearing open on those two measures. Uh, show of hands of those who are here in favor of those two measures, right? Uh, show of hands of those who are here in opposition of those two measures. Don't see anybody in opposition. Those in favor wish to speak. No. Okay. <clears throat> Declare the public hearing closed. Council Member Gamble, you're recognized on your two bills. Move for approval. Got a motion to approve um, on 1926 and 1925. 1925 and 1926 for passage on second reading. Properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, ready to vote. All those in favor of 1925 and 1926 for passes on second reading, say aye. aye. Opposed, no. You adopt. Mm. Item number 33. B 
BL 2023-1927 by Council Member Parker. Ordinance uh, to amend Title 17 by changing a specific plan on properties located at 515 and 516 Foster Street, approximately 280 feet east of the intersection of Lishy Avenue and Foster Street. Council Member Parker, you're recognized on your bill. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I would like to open the public hearing, please. Declare the public hearing open on BL 2023-1927. Uh, show of hands of those who are here in favor of the measure. Show of hands of those who are here in opposition to the measure. Didn't see anybody on either side. Declare the public hearing closed. Councilmember Parker, you're recognized on your bill. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Move for approval. Got a motion to approve BL 2023-1927 uh, for passage on second reading. Properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the bill passing on second reading say aye. Opposed? No. Nope. You adopt. Uh, BL 2023-1928, uh, item number 34 by Council Member Syracuse. Ordinance amend Title 17 by changing R10 uh, to OR20 for property located at 2720 Old Elm Hill Pike, approximately 380 feet west of Old Donaldson Pike. Councilmember Syracuse, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Open the public hearing, please. Declare the public hearing open. A show of hands of those who are here in favor of this measure. Show of hands of those who are here in opposition to this measure. Don't see anybody on either side. Declare the public hearing closed. Councilmember Syracuse, you're recognized on your bill. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Move approval. Got a motion to approve 1928 for passes on second reading. Properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the bill passing on second reading say aye. Opposed? No. You adopt. Uh, we're on item number 35, BL 2023-1929 by Council Member Toombs. Ordinance to amend Title 17 by applying a contextual overlay district to various properties located north of Pine Ridge Drive and east of Dickerson Pike, zoned RS10. Council Member Toombs, you recognize. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Request to open the public hearing. Declare the public hearing open. A show of hands of those who are here in favor of the measure. Show of hands of those who are here in opposition to the measure. No one here is here at all. <laughs> all right. Declare the public hearing closed. Councilmember Toombs, you're recognized on your bill. Move for approval. Got a motion to approve. Properly seconded. Any discussion on 1929? We're on second reading. Ready to vote. All those in favor of 1929 for passing on second reading say aye. Opposed? Nope. You adopt. Uh, BL 2023 1930 by Council Member Gamble. Ordinance to amend Title 17 by change from AR28 to RS30 for property located at 4903 Laws Road, northwest corner of Whites Creek Pike and Laws Road. Council Member Gamble, you are recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Request to open the public hearing. Okay, to clear the public hearing open, a show of hands of those who are here in favor of this measure. All right, got a hand way in the back. Uh, Show of hands of those who are here in opposition to this measure. Didn't see anybody in opposition. Sir, would you like to speak? No, doesn't want to speak. Declare the public hearing closed. Councilmember Gamble, you're on your bill. Move for approval. We're on 1930, item number 36. All those um, proper motion to approve on second reading. Properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none. Uh, all those in favor of 1930 for passage on second reading say aye. Opposed? No. Nope. You adopt. All right. We're on item number 37, which can be taken with uh, item number 38. Council Member Toombs is um, person named Council Member Taylor tonight. BL 2023-1931. Ordinance to amend Title 17 by change from MUGA to SP zoning for property. Still get at 2400 Elston Place, 207 and 209 24th Avenue North, 206 Reedhurst Avenue at the corner of Elston Place and 24th Avenue North, and the companion bill, which is BL 2023-1932. Ordinance to Authorized building material restrictions requirements for BL 2023 1931. Uh, the proposed ordinance requires certain materials to be restricted in the construction of buildings. Council Member Toombs, you're recognized on those two bills. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Request to open the public hearing. Declare the public hearing open on 1931 and 1932. Show of hands of those who are here in favor of those measures. All right. Uh, show of hands of those who are here in opposition to those two measures. Don't see anybody in opposition. Those in favor of which to speak? Nope. All right. Declare the public hearing closed. Council Member Toombs, you're recognized. Move for approval. Got a motion to approve both 1931 and 1932 for second reading passage. Uh, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the two bills for passing on second reading say aye. Opposed? No. You adopt. Uh, next item, BL 2023-1933 can be taken with item number 40, BL 2023-1934. 
This is by Council Member Sledge, a 1933 ordinance to amend Title 17. By changing from CN and R6SP for various properties located along Bransford Avenue and 511 Benton Avenue at southeast corner of Bransford Avenue and Benton Avenue, and the companion bill, BL 2023 1934, ordinance to authorize building material restrictions and requirements for BL 2023 1933. Proposed ordinance requires certain materials to restrict in the construction of buildings. Council Member Sledge, you're recognized on the two bills. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Open the public hearing, please. Declare the public hearing open. On 1933 and 1934. Uh, show of hands of those who are here in favor of those two measures. All right. Uh, show of hands of those who are here in opposition of those two measures. Don't see anybody in opposition. Those in favor wish to speak. Nope. Declare the public hearing closed. Councilmember Sledge, you're on your two bills. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Move approval. Uh, motion to approve both 1933 and 1934 for passage on second reading properly. Seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of uh, passing on 1933 and 1934 for passage on second reading say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Uh, those two pass on second reading. Uh, we're on items 41 and 42, BL 2023, 1935 and 1936. Uh, 1935 by Council Member Toombs, Ordinance to amend Title 17. By changing from R10 to SP zoning for property located at 2724 Tucker Road, approximately 150 feet south of St. Mary's Lane at 2.4 acres, and the companion bill, which is BL 2023-1936, Ordinance to authorize building material restrictions and requirements for BL 2023-1935. Proposed ordinance requires certain materials to restrict in the construction of buildings. Council Member Toombs, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Request to open a public hearing. I declare the public hearing open on those two measures. Show of hands of those who are here in favor of those two measures. All right. Show of hands of those who are here in opposition to those two measures. Don't see anybody in opposition. Would you like to speak? Nope. Good to go. Declare the public hearing closed. Council Member Toombs, you're on your two bills. Move for approval. Okay, I got a motion to approve 1935 and 1936 for passage on second reading. Properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of 1935 and 1936 for pass on second reading say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Bills pass on second reading. Item number 43, Bill 2023 1937 by Councilmember Parker. Ordinance amend Title 17 by changing RS5 R6A for properties located at 817 Douglas Avenue, west of the intersection of Douglas Avenue and Klein Avenue. Councilmember Parker, you're recognized on your bill. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I'd like to open the public hearing, please. Declare the public hearing open. Show of hands of those who are here in favor of that measure. Okay. Show of hands of those who are here in opposition to the measure. I don't see anybody in opposition. Those in favor wish to speak. Anybody? All right. Declare the public hearing closed. Councilmember Parker, you're recognized on your bill. <clears throat> Thank you, Vice Mayor. I'll move for approval. Okay. Motion to approve on 1937, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of 1937 for passage on second reading say aye. Opposed, nope. Uh, Councilmember Allen passes that one on her own. <clears throat> Item number 44, BL 2023-1938 by Councilmember Sledge. Ordinance to amend Title 17 by changing from IWD to MULANS for properties located at 1514, 1516 4th Avenue South, approximately 170 uh, feet south of Bianca, Bianca Page Way. Councilmember Sledge, you're recognized on the bill. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, moving to open the public hearing. Declare the public hearing open. We're on 1938. A show of hands of those who are here in favor of the measure. Show of hands of those who are here in opposition to the measure. I have no hands either way. Declare the public hearing closed. Council Member Sledge, recognized on your bill. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Move for approval. Got a motion to approve 1938 for pass on second reading properly. Seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of 1938 for passage on second reading say aye. Opposed, no. Uh, you adopt. Uh, Item number 45 uh, by Council Member Gamble. Bill 2023-1939, it's an ordinance to amend Title 17. By changing from CS to M-U-L-A-N-S for properties located at 3976 Dickerson Pike and Dickerson Pike uh, numbered. Council Member Gamble, uh, you are recognized on your bill. Thank you, Vice Mayor. A request to open the public hearing. Declare the public hearing open. Uh, show of hands of those who are here in favor of this measure. All right. Show of hands of those who are here in opposition to this measure. Don't see anybody in opposition. Those in favor wish to speak. All right. Declare the public hearing closed. Councilmember Gamble, you're recognized. Move for approval. 
Okay, got a motion to approve, properly seconded. Councilmember Van Rees has to abstain on this one. Uh, an amendment, Councilmember Gamble? Yes, thank you. I would like to move my amendment. All right, so Councilmember Gamble is moving an amendment to be of 2023-1939, properly seconded back to you for an explanation of the amendment. Yes, thank you. This amendment just adds in the um, whereas clauses that the developer will um, uh, adhere to recommendations in a traffic study that they also uh, commissioned that require or that recommends that there be a, a crossing signal at the intersection of Hunters Lane and Dickerson Pike and some other uh, traffic calming uh, measures on uh, involved in the project. So this amendment just adds those recommendations in the recitals for the bill. All right, uh, you've heard an explanation of the amendment. Any questions on the amendment? All right, seeing none, we are on the amendment uh, to Bill 2023, 1939. Uh, Council Gamble has moved the amendment, again, properly seconded. All those in favor of the amendment say aye. Opposed, no. Amendments on. Now, Councilmember Gamble, you're on your bill as amended. Move for approval as amended. All right, so Councilmember Gamble has moved approval of 1939 as amended for passage on second reading, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the bill as amended for passage on second reading say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Uh, bill passes on second reading. Um, <clears throat> we're on item number 46, which can be taken with item number 47. Bill 2023-1940 by Councilmember Toombs and the companion bill, which is Bill 2023-1941. 1940, an ordinance to amend Title 17 by change from RS-10 to SP zoning for property located at 3101 Doak Avenue, south of the intersection of Doak Avenue and Haley Avenue. Uh, and the companion bill, which is Bill 2023-1941. Ordinance to authorize building material restrictions requirements for Bill 2023-1940. Proposed ordinance requires certain materials to be restricted in the construction of buildings. Council Member Toombs, you're recognized on those two bills. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Request to open the public hearing. All right, so we're opening the public hearing on those two measures, 1940 and 1941. Show of hands of those who are here in favor of those two measures. All right, show of hands of those who are here in opposition of those two measures. Don't see anybody in opposition. Anybody in favor wishing to speak? And nope. Declare the public hearing closed. Councilmember Toombs, you're recognized on your bills. Move for approval. Got a motion to approve both 1940 and 1941 for passage on second reading. Properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of 1940 and 1941 for passage on second reading say aye. Opposed, no. You adopt. Uh, 1942 by Councilmember Syracuse. Uh, Ordinance to amend Title 17 by changing from RS 10 to ON for property located at 20, 2894 Elm Hill Pike. Councilmember Syracuse, you're recognized on your bill. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Open the public hearing, please. Declare the public hearing open. A show of hands of those who are here in favor of 1942. All right, thank you. Show of hands of those who are here in opposition to 1942. Don't see anybody in opposition. Those in favor wish to speak. Declare the public hearing closed. Councilmember Syracuse, you're recognized on your bill. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Move approval. Got a motion to approve 1942 for pass on second reading. Properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of 1942 for pass on second reading say aye. aye. Opposed, no. That one passes on second reading. Uh, we are on BL 2023-1943. Uh, that's item number 49. We can take it with item 50 and item 51. This is by Council Member Hauser. Uh, 1943, an ordinance to amend Title 17 by changing from CL to SP zoning for property located at 7986 Coley Davis Road, east of Scenic River Lane, located within a plan unit development, uh, permit 26, 26 multifamily road residential units. Uh, item number 50, Bill 2023 1944, the companion bill, ordinance to authorize building material restrictions and requirements for Bill 2023 1943, proposed ordinance requires certain materials to be restricted in the construction of buildings, and uh, Bill 2023-1945, ordinance to amend Title uh, 17 by canceling a portion of a plan unit development for property located at 7986 Coley Davis Road, east of Scenic River Lane. Council Member Hauser, uh, you're recognized on all three bills. Yes, I would like to open the public hearing, please. Okay, declare the public hearing open on 1943, 1944, and 1945. Show of hands of those who are here in favor of those three bills. Okay. Uh, show of hands of those who are here in opposition to those three bills. 
So I've got hands on both sides. All right, so we're gonna start with those in favor. If you would come to the microphone, if you wish to speak, uh, I need a name, address, and then you'll have two minutes in which to speak. And then we'll do those who are in opposition. Again, remember name, address, and two minutes. Uh, good evening, Ryan Loveless, CSTG, uh, 2305 Klein Avenue. Um, Vice Mayor, Council, uh, appreciate the opportunity to get in front of you tonight. Uh, we've worked on this project for a long time. It's been a, a, at least a year, um, and we are very excited about it. It's evolved a lot during that time uh, to the plan that you see today, and um, we're really excited about this project and being a member of the community. Um, this project's part of, of an old commercial PUD, and we're requesting to modify that to uh, this uh, uh, residential development. And um, we had a well-attended neighborhood meeting many months ago and received great feedback. And we've addressed all the staff comments and we thank the planning staff and Councilperson Hauser uh, for working with us through this process. And we ask for your support tonight. Thank you. All right, thank you. Next speaker, name, address, two minutes. <coughs> Good evening, my name is Elizabeth Woodliff. I live at 3901 Elkins Avenue. I'm the dir Director of Operations for Spring Springboard Landings. I am in favor of these bills so we can provide housing for adults with developmental disabilities. We are not a developer, we are a nonprofit trying to help people. This is an overlooked portion of the disabled population because of their high ability. They fall through the cracks. They are capable of employment, many drive, and they can self-groom, but they are often lonely and need a small level of guidance. Springboard Landings was started by concerned parents who noticed that there was no appropriate housing options for their adult children. They need safety, community, and affordability. All things our project will provide. Our footprint is very small, but the quality of life impact for these adults with developmental disabilities will be very big. Thank you for your support. All right, thank you. Uh, next speaker, name, address, uh, two minutes. My name is John Cooper. I live in Bellevue in the Trace Side neighborhood, 1208 Middle Did you say John Cooper? Uh, I, I did, okay. uh, not to be confused with our mayor. Yeah, okay. <laughs> And thank you, Vice Mayor Shulman and council members. Um, we are building a home with heart. The genesis of Springboard Landings is to provide housing for a vulnerable population to help prevent isolation. And it answers the question, what happens when my parents are no longer available? It's an intentional community. It is a safe community. The only difference between this population and the general population is that they are slower. They wake up every morning with a mild developmental disability that stands between them and their dreams. They wanna be a part of the conversation, included and accepted. Normally when a new home enters a neighborhood, eyebrows are raised. This is the opposite. We've been searching for this safe space for over five years. And we've been looking at police reports and sex offender registries. We believe we found the right fit. They are fairly independent and hold jobs, but they'll never get ahead financially on their own merit. Roughly half own or drive a vehicle. The exterior will look like a large house and something the neighborhood can be proud. It will reside on 1.27 acres, and we ask for your support to embrace this loving, giving community. All right, thank you. Next speaker, name address, two minutes. Hi, my name is Kelsey Guzman. I live at 132 Lucille Street and 37207. Um, I have been working in affordable housing development in Nashville for the past six years, and I know that the council is acutely aware of the dire need for housing um, across the board in our city, um, but the folks that Springboard Landing serves are particularly um, acutely in need. Um, as we've heard, they face additional barriers, not just to being able to afford housing, but to access it. And this project is a really critical opportunity for those folks and their families to, um, to not have to worry about housing insecurity. Um, the organization that I work for actually has two similar projects in the Chestnut Hill neighborhood, and it's been some of the most successful and stable housing that we um, operate in partnership with another similar nonprofit. Um, so with the thoughtful conditions from planning staff and the unanimous approval from the planning commission, I urge council to vote in support um, and make this project a reality. Thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, next speaker, name, address, and then two minutes. 
Uh, Charlie Cooper, 412 General George Patton Road. Over 10 years ago, my, myself and several other parents started looking around for appropriate housing for this population. We traveled several places in the United States. We looked on the internet and we personally inspected places. But everything at that time was built for the more severely handicapped. This population does not need 24 hour supervision. Many of them work, some of them drive, but they need, as we said before, a safe place and a place to avoid loneliness for this population. Um, so at that time, uh, I'm the, one of the co-founders. So at that time, since we couldn't find it, we decided to do it ourselves. So we filed Fire 501c3 for Springboard Landings and began our journey over 10 years ago. And this is bringing us very close to a successful journey. And we ask for your vote. Thank you. All right, thank you. All right, anybody else wishing to speak in favor? All right, um, those who are in opposition, if you would come line up. Anybody wishing to speak in opposition, come on up to the microphone. Okay. Name address, two minutes. Uh, Sharon Morrow and um, 7141 Somerset Farms Drive. This piece of property is, if I hadn't been here tonight for something else, I would never have known about this. But this piece of property is in the floodplain fully. In the 2010 flood, it was totally flooded all the way up to the roads. And there is a culvert underneath the road into Somerset, which is why Somerset Farms did not, when they developed Somerset Farms, they chose not to buy that piece of property because it was in the floodplain. And it does get quite wet when it rains, especially if it rains a whole lot. So I would be, you'd have to change the land and take it out of the floodplain, which will change the floodplain itself. And I would say vote no for that because this would be a great place for where the RISA project's going. This would be a perfect location for that because that would, there's enough land there for them to build on. Okay, all right, thank you. Anybody else wishing to speak in opposition? Okay. I declare the public hearing closed. Um, Council Member House, are you recognized? Yes, I became aware of Springboard Landings uh, when I was actually running for office. I was not aware of them before that. And as I met with them, met with their board of directors, uh, and met with many of the adults, uh, children, I became really excited thinking, gosh, this is it. We need this, this will be fabulous. And as they were looking around the Nashville area for a property, I was hoping they would find it in my district. And I was really thrilled when they came back to me and said they had found the perfect piece of property. And as the speakers had noted, they were looking for a property that was safe for their individuals, as well as that their individuals could be safe neighbors to others. And they found the perfect property. As the speakers noted, this will look like a large home. Uh, it is perfectly located and being close to the WeGo uh, bus stop area so that for those that don't drive, they, they will have those services available. It's very close to shopping, it's very close to the highway. It makes a perfect spot for the residents and the residents will be great neighbors. So I ask that we move forward with this and approve the project. Thank you. All right, thank you, Council Member Hauser. Council Member Hauser has moved approval of 1943, 1944, and 1945 for passage on second reading, properly seconded discussion on the bills. Council Member Rosenberg. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Ms. Milligan, is this property in the floodplain? Hello, Ms. Milligan. Um, hi, no, I was actually just looking that up. This is not within either the 100 or the 500 year floodplain, so hey, thank you. not. All right, thank you. Uh, Count, Council Member Hurt, you wanna be recognized? Okay. All right, uh, any other questions on this? We've got a motion to approve 1943, 1944, and 1945. 
seeing nobody else, we're ready to vote. All those in favor of those three measures for passage on second reading say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Uh, those three uh, bills pass on second reading. Uh, we're on Bill 2023-1946 by Council Member Hager. Uh, ordinance to amend Title 17 by amending a specific plan on a portion of property located at 3939 Old Hickory Boulevard, approximately 2,600 feet west of Old Hickory Boulevard, zone SP. Uh, Council Member Hager, you recognized. Move, a, move, move for an open hearing. Okay, so I declare the public hearing open. A show of hands of those who are here in favor of this measure. All right, thank you. A show of hands of those who are here in opposition of this measure. Didn't see anybody in opposition. Those in favor wish to speak. Nobody's coming. Oh, nobody's coming forward. Declare the public hearing closed. Councilmember Hager, you're recognized on your bill. Move for passage, please. Okay. Got a motion to approve 2023-1946 for pass on second reading. Properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of 1946 for pass on second reading say aye. aye. Opposed, no. You adopt. Uh, BL 2023-1947 by Council Member Sledge. Ordinance amend Title 17 by changing from RM20 ANS and OR20 ANS to RM20 A, RM40 A, and OR40 ANS for various properties south of Lafayette Street, generally spanning from First Avenue South to, to West of Lewis Street, along and north of Hart Street, and within the Wedgwood, Houston, Chestnut Hill Urban Design Overlay. Council Member Sledge, recognized on your bill. I read all that, and he wasn't here. There he is. <laughs> Council Member Sledge, we are on Bill 2023-1947, as item number 53. Thank you, uh, Vice Mayor. Apologies for the delay. Uh, please open the public hearing. Okay. I declare the public hearing open. A show of hands of those who are here in favor of 1947. Show of hands of those who are here in opposition in 1947. Seeing nobody on either side, declare the public hearing closed. Councilmember Sledge, you're recognized on your bill. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, move for approval. Okay, got a motion to approve. Properly seconded. All those in uh, any discussion. Uh, all those in favor of the bill uh, for pass on second reading say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. You adopt. All right, we are on Bill 2023-1948. Back to Councilmember Toombs. Uh, Ordinance to amend Title 17 by changing RS 7.5 to R15 zoning for property located at 574 Ewing Drive, approximately 185 feet west of Vista Lane. Council Member Toombs, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Request to open the public hearing. Declare the public hearing open. A show of hands of those who are here in favor of 1948. Show of hands of those who are here uh, in opposition to 1948. Seeing nobody on either side, Councilmember Toombs, uh, declare the public hearing closed. Councilmember Toombs, you're recognized on 1948. Move for approval. Got a motion to approve 1948 for pass on second reading. Properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of 1948 for pass on second reading say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Uh, 1948 passes on second reading. BL 2023, 1949 uh, can be taken with 1950. This is Council Member Taylor and I guess Council Member Toombs. 1949, Ordinance to Amend Title 17 by change from RS5 to SP zoning for property located at 3013 Batavia Street, approximately 100 uh, feet east of 31st Avenue North. Uh, and the companion bill, which is BL 2023, 1950, Ordinance to Authorize Building Material Restrictions Requirements. For BL 2023, 1949, proposed ordinance to require certain materials to restrict in the construction of buildings. Council Member Toombs, you are recognized on those two bills. Thank you. Request to open a public hearing. Okay, we're on 1949 and 1950. That's item 55 and 56 on your agenda. Declare the public hearing open. Show of hands of those who are here in favor of those two measures. All right, thank you. A show of hands of those who are here in opposition to those two measures. Didn't see anybody in opposition. Sir, would you like to speak? No. Declare the public hearing closed. Council Member Toombs, you're recognized on the two bills. Move for approval. Uh, 1949 and 1950, the motion is to approve on second reading properly. Seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of 1949 and 1950 for pass on second reading say aye. aye. Opposed, no. You adopt. Uh, we're on item number 47 by Council Member Young. Uh, BL 2023, 1951, we can take it with 1952. Uh, 
Bill 2023 1951 by Councilmember Young. Ordinance to amend Title 17 by change from R10 to SP zoning on properties located at 203, 205, 209, 217, 219, 253, 255, 257, 259, and 261 Liberty Lane, 215B, 257B, and 253B Liberty Lane, approximately 251 uh, feet west of People's Court. Um, and then Bill 2023 1952, the Companion Bill, Ordinance to authorize building material restrictions and requirements for Bill 2023 1951. Proposed ordinance requires certain materials to restrict on the construction of buildings. Council Member Young, you are on your two bills. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Let's open the public hearing. We're going to open the public hearing. A show of hands of those who are here in favor of those two measures. All right. A show of hands of those who are here in opposition of those two measures. Don't see anybody in opposition. Those in favor wish to speak. Nope. Declare the public hearing closed. Council Member Young, you're on your two bills. I'll move the bill, but then I need to move an amendment as well. All right. Let's uh, go with the first one first. 1951. I think the amendment's on that one, correct? Uh, is it on both or just the one? Just the one. Just the one. Just All right. One. So <laughs> Council Member uh, Young is on BL 2023-1951. He's moving an amendment. Properly seconded. Back to you for an explanation of the amendment. Uh, clarify sidewalk contribution. All right. Uh, any questions? Seeing none, we're on the amendment. All those in favor of the amendment say aye. 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 Those, no. The amendment's on. Now, Council Member Young, BL 2023 1951 as amended, and BL 2023 1952. I will move both of the bills for passage. All right. So the motion is to pass those two bills, the first one as amended, for passage on second reading, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, we're on the motion. All those in favor of the two bills, the first one as amended uh, for pass on second reading, uh, say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. You adopt. Okay. Uh, number 59, Bill 2023-1953 by Council Member Hall. Uh, it's an ordinance to amend Title 17 by applying a contextual overlay district various properties located north of Ashland City Highway and east of Fairview Drive, zone RS-15. It's a disapproved bill. Council Member Hall, you're recognized. Open the public hearing, please. Uh, let's, I think we have to get slides first. Ms. Milligan? Uh, so, ladies and gentlemen, it's a disapproved bill uh, by the Planning Commission, so it gets uh, uh, it gets an explanation from the planning de planning department. And Miss Milligan has broken the um, cords. No, broken our computer. Sorry. Definitely plugged in. And now we get to see Miss Milligan's screenshot. I, I took that photo. Oh, you took that I, photo? I did. I took that photo of my room. Oh, it's very good. Yeah. I don't, sorry, it's not. All right, I'll tell you what, while, while that's, Hold on. do you want to boot up and then we can go on and come back? Hold on. We should be good now, Vice Mayor. Okay, so Ms. Milligan, there we go. There we go. Okay. Um, this is a request to apply a contextual overlay district. Um, the area is shown um, outlined in red. The Planning Commission recommendation was to disapprove. Um, this is an area that, the area that is included, included in the overlay includes various properties located within the Enchanted Hills and Royal Crest subdivisions. It's bounded roughly by Ashland City Highway, Drake's Branch Road, Kings Lane, and White's Creek. There's a predominant development pattern in the neighborhood consisting of single story and split level residents with consistent setbacks, bulk, and massing present throughout the overlay. The properties are all currently zoned RS-15, which is residential single family. A contextual overlay provides appropriate design standards for residential areas necessary to maintain and reinforce an established form or character. 
of residential development in a particular area. Development standards would apply to new construction and are tied to adjacent lots for similar pattern, including things such as setback, height, lot coverage, access garages, and parking. Um, the land use policy for the area is primary, primarily T3 suburban neighborhood maintenance. There, is, there are areas of conservation and one property noted as civic. The Planning Commission recommended disapproval while acknowledging that the area may be appropriate for a contextual overlay. Um, there was concern from the Commission on the lack of um, any residents that were indicating support. There were questions from the community about the area that was included and a desire for potentially the overlay to cover more properties. All right, uh, Councilmember Hall, you're recognized. Open the public hearing, please. Okay. So uh, we are on BL 2023-1953. Um, declare the public hearing open. A show of hands of those who are here in favor of that measure. Okay. Show of hands of those who are here in opposition to that measure. All right. So we've got hands on both sides. Uh, those in favor, if you would, please come forward. Need your name, address, and then you'll have two minutes in which to speak. Uh, good evening. My name is Bill McDaniel. I say at 4223 Drake Seal Drive. And I must say, you must give old people a few more seconds because it takes them a little while to get here. You have as much time as you but, want. I'll I give you five give seconds. You three points. Okay. Three points about this neighborhood. Across the street from me, my best friend died. His son moved back from New Jersey in the family house. Next door to me, a doctor died. A new young couple, Dr. Dennis, just bought that house and is moving in it. There's a lot of good things happening in this old neighborhood that need protecting. Uh, I bought my house years ago and repeated it. If you want to see some magic, look at the 4323 Drake Seal Drive, and you see that there is good movement in that neighborhood. So I asked this group, I spoke at the planning meeting the other night, and I didn't make it. <clears throat> but you need to drive through in Shannon Hills before you change it for all these years. It needs to stay like it is. Skilled people, people are moving back, new homes are being built. And I just want to say, <clears throat> if, you, if you need another reading or whatever you need in this body, before you change the layout of that, that neighborhood, drive by my house and take a look and eat some barbecue in the backyard. <laughs> All right, uh, when, how, when are you going to be serving? <laughs> All right, and are you related to the individual getting ready to speak? So many of you I know um, very well. Um, today I'm just Bill and Carol McDaniel's daughter, Fonda McDaniel, at 4223 Drake's Hill Drive. Um, you heard from the planning folks uh, what has been presented. The, they meet community character manual standards. It meets the Nashville Next plan. It fits the land use policy. And it was recommended by the staff of planning before it was voted down. So I would ask that you approve the contextual overlay and stop by 4223. We'll get you some barbecue. Uh, next speaker name, address, and uh, location of where the barbecue is going to be served at your house. <laughs> uh, my name is Clyde Bond, Jr. My address is 4220 Kings Court here in Nashville. Um, I've been a resident of this area for 50 years, I guess two generations. I'm the second generation. Um, this is a neighborhood that is, needs to be preserved, as they mentioned. You know, there are very unique homes, you know, big lots, all the things you want in a neighborhood. And growing up in that neighborhood, you've got so many friends, family, people moving back, as Ms. McDaniel spoke about, that want to preserve this neighborhood. And I, again, would ask that you take a look at it and I vote, ask that you vote, you know, in favor of the contextual overlay. All right. Thank you. Sure. All right, anybody else wishing to speak in favor of the measure? Okay, uh, those who wish to speak in opposition, if you'd come forward, I need your name, address, and then you'll have two minutes in which to speak. Anybody in opposition, come on forward.
Hello, I guess I'll carry it for everyone that was there at the Planning Commission meeting. Now you've got some people behind you now. There they are. Yes. Okay, my name is Ruby Baker, and I do live in Bordeaux Hills. I don't live in Enchanted Hills, but I got several phone calls from people that live in Enchanted Hills that thought they were in the contextual overlay, and they are not, because it says Enchanted Hills subdivision, but most of them were not included. So most of them spoke that thought they were included until they saw the map. And they only, some only learned that at the, the meeting that night when we were at the Planning Commission meeting. So although the contextual overlay is a really good thing for the neighborhood and we are trying to protect and preserve it, some of the people wanted to be included and some of the people that were included wanted to not be in it. And then there were some that didn't understand contextual overlay at all. So that's why the Planning Commission heard us when we were asking for a deferral. That's why we were strongly asking for that because there are several, several. We do want to protect the neighborhood, but we have not had a community meeting in almost two years. And it is very daunting trying to stay ahead of any bill that is introduced that has not come before the community to give an explanation. You are coming against about four neighborhoods, which is maybe 400 homes, and they have a right to speak and vet on this project. So it's embarrassing for us to have to beg to ask for a deferral so we can talk about this. So that's what we're asking, and the planning commissioners heard us, so we're asking that you do the same and do a deferral. That's why they did a disapproval rather than deferring it. So the council member will have to get at least 27 votes. So that's the best that we could do. We are tired of begging and asking for deferrals. Help us please defer this so we can talk about it. All right, thank you, Ms. Baker. Uh, next speaker, name, address, two minutes. Good evening. I'm Joy Kimbrough. I reside at 3901 Drake's Branch Road. I'm the owner of 3903 Drake's Branch Road as well. My daughter and granddaughter live down the street at 3952 Drake's Branch Road, and we are all in this area. I'm coming today to ask you, to plead with you, to ask to do what is just common courtesy and decency. Please allow us to have a meeting. We have not had a meeting, as Ms. Baker stated, in over a year. This proposal, and I think um, it's two bills, there'll be another bill as well, it covers almost 400 acres. And we have not had one community meeting. That's all we want. It may be good, it may not be good, but I think the community deserves to at least be able to have a meeting, ask questions, have planning come out, answer those questions, and then move. There is no rush. There is no rush. We're only asking, we're only asking that you not approve this this evening, that you give us time. And if we as a community decide that's what's in the best interest of the community, then we will come back. I'm sure with whoever is elected, um, in August. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Next speaker. Name address, two minutes. Good, ap good afternoon. My name is Joseph Bond. I live at 42, 4268 Kings Lane. Uh, 4268 Kings Lane. I'm going to take my head off on this one. Uh, my, uh, uh, my neighbors, a bunch of them, retired. Uh, they're not here. They ask, you know, of us all the time, you know, we just see what's going on. Like the young lady said, we haven't had a meeting in almost two years or two years. I've, I've been very, very active in the neighborhood. Uh, my son was a mental illness person. Uh, I lost my brother. I have 18 stab wounds in my body right now. And because of my neighbor, was from my wife going to my neighbor's house at 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning to get some help. So please, sir, please, ma'am, give us an opportunity to work as a neighbor. Neighbors, the Bible said, Jesus said, love your neighbor as yourself. Thank you. All right, thank please you. Please vote against this bill. All right, uh, next speaker. Name, address, and then two minutes. 
Good evening. My name is Erica Dixie, and I reside at 4020 Drake's French Road. And I would like to start off by saying I do not necessarily oppose um, this bill. I'm not for, I'm not against, but the problem I have or the concern I have is that, um, again, as a community, we have not had a chance to meet um, with our council person to communicate with him, for him to explain um, the several hundred acres that are in this contextual overlay. How did he come up with the boundaries for this overlay? Um, just residents have not been able to discuss details. Um, the proposal was made without basic informational meetings with the community or the residents. Um, so I'm asking that you defer this to after the August um, 2023 elections so that residents can um, or who are going to be affected by this overlay have the opportunity to meet and discuss this proposal with a council person who is willing to um, listen and do the will of the people. Thank you. All right, thank you. Okay, anybody else wishing to be heard on this one? All right, declare the public hearing closed. Councilmember Hall, you're recognized. Move for approval. All right, so I've got a motion to approve on this one, properly seconded. Um, discussion on the bill. I've got people in the queue. Councilmember O'Connell, you're recognized. Councilmember O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I'm asking about the the fact that it's a disapproved bill, I guess, Lisa, can you help me understand what, what the uh, policy aspect of this was that the commission found? Ms. Milligan. So uh, there was a recognition by the Planning Commission that an application of a contextual overlay in an area of neighborhood maintenance is likely consistent with the policy. Um, there was concern around um, if the community was supportive of the overlay from the Planning Commission's perspective. So anytime that there's sort of an overlay that is adding restrictions, um, they were concerned about support from the community for the overlay, but there was recognition of the overlay being consistent with the policy. I appreciate that very much. And I know my colleague, Councilmember Withers, is up next to probably share some uh, insight from that. But I think, so what you're saying is, this is not a, a policy objection, this is a community concern. This is, this um, a contextual overlay, sort of the first level of review that we would look at from a staff perspective on a contextual overlay is what the policy is. So if there was a policy that was neighborhood evolving, we would likely say, no, that's a, a non-starter for us. Um, if it's neighborhood maintenance, then it's sort of checking the first thing. And then if the community has sort of consistent lots, blocks, um, um, houses, then that's sort of the second thing. And, and from our perspective, it did check those boxes um, from policy. Great, that is helpful. Thank you, Mr. President. All right, thank you. Uh, Councilmember Withers. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Just wanted to um, uh, address again the, the items that Councilmember O'Connell asked and, and that we have heard. Uh, as well as from Ms. Milligan. Um, th this one did have um, a, a fair amount of debate, uh, I guess I would say, on the Planning Commission. Um, I, I'm really of the opinion myself that the Planning Commission is a policy-making body and that the political body is the council. Um, nevertheless, uh, some of the deliberation that we had on the Planning Commission, in my personal opinion, uh, did veer into inserting personality and politics rather than policy. Uh, and so the mover of the motion to disapprove um, kind of cited uh, a little bit of a, a history of potential a lack of communication or things of that matter in District 1 and moved for uh, disapproval in the interest of requiring 27 votes versus 21. Um, I don't think that, I personally, this again, this is my personal opinion. I don't think that is a good move necessarily for the Planning Commission to take. I think the Planning Commission needs to make a recommendation based on policy. That way, frankly, even if this does get deferred into the next term, it would potentially at least still have a recommendation that is based on policy, even if it were to be taken up later if the, if the legislation were to die. Nevertheless, uh, that, is, that is the motion that carried. Um, I will say as well that um, the, really the request from the community was not for disapproval, it was for deferral. Um, if the request is for community meetings, there frankly is still time. This item could be deferred and brought back this term. Um, and so again, I don't, I don't know that 
a disapproval motion was um, the, the, the one that, that I would have wanted to have on record. But I, I think the uh, really what this speaks to is the Planning Commission did have some concerns that there may not have been adequate community uh, engagement in the initial end. Um, there is still time for that to happen at this time. Uh, so uh, I, I will defer to uh, Councilor Moore Hall to let us know if he's willing to do a deferral to, to bring it back. But uh, what I will also say again is I, th I think Councilmember Hall is right in bringing this forward. Most things that I've heard during my eight years uh, uh, on this body from this particular community is that they do want to preserve the neighborhood character. They do have concerns about um, density. They do want to preserve um, somewhat of the suburban character uh, that a lot of members who initially bought in that community, they, they wanted the same things that other folks moved to suburban communities did um, and had been denied to African-American home buyers. And they're kind of wanting to preserve that. And we, we've seen contextual overlays and con conservation overlays be applied in some of those areas. So for policy reasons I support it, I would uh, invite uh, colleagues to listen to Councilmember Hall to see if he's willing to do a deferral during this term, but to potentially have some additional community meetings before it comes back to us on third. Thank you. Council Member Hall, do you want to respond to the question? So just for a quick clarification point, there were community meetings. There were two. There's a third one scheduled. It's a reschedule for next Thursday. We would have already had it. Um, planning would have attended that meeting, but the facility we were, we were going to meet, the AC went out. Nobody knew until we got there, so that one had to be rescheduled. Um, so there is a third meeting or another meeting scheduled. And hopefully the, the folks that attended the first two will be able to attend and help the others get caught up quicker. Um, if not, we can easily produce that, those sign-in sheets and those folks that were at those other meetings. Um, and you've heard again that the most of the concern on this was for people wanting to be included. And planning can speak to why those other additional lots weren't. Again, it was about consistency of the lot size and, and things of that nature. But overwhelmingly, this is something that's been asked for for two terms, even before that, when Council Member Hurt was our interim council person when the first one was done in this. Okay. All right, I've got other people in the queue. Council Member Murphy, you're recognized. Thank you. Um, I think everybody on this floor knows how I feel about disapproved bills, um, which is why at the Planning Commission, <laughs> I hate disapproved bills. Um, which is why the Planning Commission, I went over to Councilman Hall during it and during, while this item was being heard, and the other contextual overlay that he has with the same vote and said, I got you on this one. Because I had to sit through um, what was a very long night at planning already for, because my case was, was almost last on that one, uh, on that agenda. And so I, I listened to the whole debate and everything and um, Councilman Withers has characterized it correctly. Um, policy wise, this fits, it tracks. Um, planning Commission should do policy work. We are the political body. I've said that there when I represented us then and, and I've said it here as well. On this one, um, what I heard from the community was that the people in favor of it, and there were a lot of people in favor of it, were excited and happy and want to save the affordability of their area and kind of the character of their area. And the people against it were against it because they wanted to be included. Um, now, I, I, you know, Ms. Miller can get, in, can get into why they were or why they weren't, so can Councilman Hall, but like, that makes me excited that people want to be in an overlay, but we shouldn't stop the overlay that's happening simply because we can't expand it. As we all know, we can shrink overlays once they're filed. We can't expand them, right? And so this does sound like that needs to be, you know, told to the community you weren't in it because of this reason or that reason. And he can do that. He can get that done. Um, I don't think there's any reason to slow this one down because people want in it. I also, when I have uh, overlay meetings, I've got one coming up soon, I typically mail to the people who are in that overlay because I wanna hear from those property owners who have filed and requested it, right? So you might not know about it if you're a couple blocks over. Um, and there's reasons that we all do that type of thing. I wanna hear from those property owners whose property is being affected. And that night I heard from people who were being affected and they said, I want this. And I heard from people who said, I don't want this because I'm not in it, which says to me, they, they support it. They just wanna be in it, right? So, so with that, I'm gonna support both of his disapproved bills and that is totally against my track record here. Um, so I wanted, to, I wanted all y'all to know 
exactly why I was doing this. And I'm the first one who has criticized uh, Councilman Hall in the past for not having enough community meetings, but he had community meetings for this one and he had the support there. So Councilman Hall, you, you did it right. Um, and I appreciate the work you've done on this and, and I'm gonna support you and I hope our colleagues do too. Councilmember Hart. Thank you, Councilmember Murphy. I don't have to say all of that. Yes, you do. But I do want to stand because I was the one to actually have the first contextual overlay approved in that community. And it's really, really important to preserve it. Sound like that they were more concerned about having a meeting, not necessarily about the contextual overlay in itself. Because the contextual overlay is actually a, a tool for protection of what it is that they have. And, and you know, I have to go back and get some history to know that some of those people who were displaced as a result of the Jefferson Street uh, interstate coming in was moved out to that community. And when they came over to bring Briley Parkway, that was another issue for many of those residents. So for these people to be able to get great land, have their homes there, and, and be able to live a good quality life, I think they deserve it. And it should not be in a situation where they may have others coming into the community that will disrupt what it is that they're having. So I stand in support, but I also ask Councilmember Hall if he would have a meeting for the community for them to be able to hear uh, and get a full understanding because when I push for the contextual overlay, many of them really did not understand what it was and what it was going to do and how it was gonna be in their benefit. So I would actually ask you to do that, but I do um, agree 100% that it is uh, a good thing for the community. All right, thank you, Council Member. Council Member Benedict. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, many of my questions also have been answered so far. I think I just want to clarify with the planning desk. So the boundaries of a context, well, let me back up. We passed four contextual overlays in District 7 and it's a fabulous tool. And it sounds like this is a great spot for it. I'm very supportive of it. I just want to confirm, once the legislation is filed, can the boundaries be expanded? Uh, they, can, um, they cannot. They cannot, so okay, but can they be amended to be smaller? Yes. Okay, I just wanted to clarify those two questions for the public, for the audience to understand. I'm, I'm uh, familiar with how they work. Councilmember Bennett, did everybody hear that? Because the microphone's on, but it, it Can you guys hear me? If, if I can just clarify, I can repeat what Matt said, what Mr. Wilkinson said. The boundaries, once the legislation is filed, the boundaries cannot be expanded, but they can be made smaller. They can be amended. And this bill is amendable on third reading, correct? Okay. I see nodding. Sorry. To, to make it smaller, yes. Okay. Yep. So um, I think what I would ask then, the community meeting, it sounds like has been set for next 30, next Thursday. I'd love to know more details about that just because there's people here who feel that they weren't communicated with. So if you, if council member hall would let us know, or you know, the public know tonight where that meeting is and what time it is. Um, I think that would be helpful because I think some people who are here from what they said at the public hearing um, don't feel like they've had that communication, whether they have or haven't. They don't they, they don't feel that they've had it or they wouldn't have said that. So, um, and then just in my own experience, we did pass in District 7 um, three contextual overlays that were the result of the, the first one. So two additional that were surrounding the area where we did one. So it definitely can be done. And I would ask that if in that community meeting, people do want it expanded to other areas, that um, as, a, as, a, as a handoff, I know when I came into office, my prior um, uh, council member let me know what was happening so that way I could be able to hit the ground running. So if folks do want this, maybe the next council member um, could be prepared and know what those boundaries are. I think that would be very helpful to the community as well as um, to the body. Thanks. All right, thank you. Council Member Toombs. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I, I wanna stand in support of, of passage on second reading because um, we do still have third reading. Third reading can be deferred if that's necessary to have time to have a community meeting. 
contextual overlay, overlays, I've done several of them. Um, they are really a great tool in preserving neighborhoods. It's been very important to me to preserve uh, historic and established neighborhoods. And Shannon Hills is one of those historic neighborhoods that needs to be preserved. Um, we all know that there's a, a lot of development going on and it's pushing north of the river. Um, and so looking after those uh, established neighborhoods and making sure that, that that character is, is preserved is very important. Um, I've spoken to a lot of folks who are District 1 residents uh, who were in support of the contextual overlay. Some didn't understand what a contextual overlay was, so they wanted me to explain it, and once I did, they felt like it was a good idea. Um, and so for those uh, reasons, I'm in support of passage on second, but I, I would, uh, again, uh, reiterate that there needs to be another community meeting. I know for me, when I've done community meetings for the contextual overlays, uh, Rosie has helped me send out notices to everyone who is within the contextual overlay so that they would know about the meeting. Um, so I would suggest that, that that same process be used so that everyone within the boundaries will know about the meeting and come can come learn about the overlay. All right, thank you. Um, Council Member Allen. <laughs> Thank you. Just to pick on what's been said, and I appreciate the, the folks that have come to speak on both sides of this and, and do think that the contextual array is a fantastic tool for preserving the neighborhood. Uh, and I hope that the sponsor would uh, follow all the suggestions about the notification and hopefully then when we get to third reading, we'll either have lots of emails that say, great, we're good, or if we don't, if the sponsor would then be willing to consider a deferral on third if, we, if it sounds like people still need to be communicated with. And I, I feel like that gives us the possibility to be responsive to what we've heard tonight. Right. Thank, you. Thank you, Council Member Allen. So uh, that's the queue. Council Member Hall, back to you. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, and I'm completely open to that. Um, those are, again, the conversations that have already been taking place and we've already had that one additional meeting. Um, we will have that one in before we get the third meeting. Um, it's, again, like everyone has said, it's a fantastic tool. I'm glad uh, planning recommended it, and it came from other rezoning pro uh, projects in the area. Um, this is a very unique community in a lot of ways, and um, Council Member Toombs had done one just up the road, and that area is called the Gold Coast for a reason. Um, it's one of the few places left in this city that averaged almost an acre size lot and minimum home size of 2,700 square feet but it was farmland when I was a kid. That whole area just got built up over time. These are doctors, these are professors, these are teachers. These are folks where two, three, four generations now, uh, my generation has moved back to. I live in this neighborhood. Um, and so this is one of those things where it's something, again, that they've been asking for for a decade at least. Um, Council member her kicked the ball off when she was interim and we've just kind of found our way through the process dealing with land policy and neighborhood maintenance bumping up against neighborhood evolving and those sorts of things. And so I think the timing is perfect on it. Um, and I'm more than happy to have the next one already laid out and ready to go for who comes behind us. As a matter of fact, those conversations are started with planning um, to include the next folks in the next one adjacent to this, which uh, have slightly different lot sizes. But um, with all that, I uh, move for approval. All right, so we're back to uh, Councilmember Hall moving for approval of Bill 2023-1953 for passage on second reading, properly seconded. Uh, we've had discussion on the bill, so we're, we're ready to vote on Councilmember Hall's uh, motion. Um, all in favor of the motion to approve 2023-1953 for passage on second reading, say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. All right, so the bill passes on second reading. Again, remember, it's three readings on these bills. So the uh, bill passes on second reading. Um, and because it's a disapproved, it requires a certain number of votes on third reading to actually pass, right? Uh, item number 60, Bill 2023-1954 by Council Member Toombs. Ordinance to amend Title 17 by change from R10 to SP zoning for property second at 3312 and 3320 Curtis Street, approximately 275 feet northwest of Courtney Avenue. Council Member Toombs, you're recognized on your bill. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Request to open the public hearing. Okay, declare the public hearing open. A show of hands of those who are here in favor of the measure. All right, thank you. A show of hands of those who are here in opposition to the measure. Don't see anybody in opposition. Those in favor wish to speak. Don't see anybody coming. Declare the public hearing.
public hearing closed. Councilmember Toombs, you're recognized on your bill. Move for approval. Got a motion to approve 1954 for passes on second reading. Properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of 1954 for passes on second reading, say aye. Say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Uh, bill passes on second reading. Uh, item number 61, BL 2023-1955 by Council Member Stiles and Toombs. Ordinance to amend Title 17 by amending a specific plan for various properties located on the north side of Old Franklin Road between Cane Ridge Road and Interstate 24 Zone SP. Permit 300 additional multifamily residential units. Uh, Council Member Toombs, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Request to open a public hearing. All right, declare the public hearing open. A show of hands of those who are here in favor of this measure. All right, thank you. Show of hands of those who are here in opposition to this measure. Right, Council Member Pulley stood up and I can't see. There you go. Anybody in opposition? All right, anybody in favor wishing to speak? I don't see anybody coming. Declare the public hearing closed. Council Member Stiles. Uh, Council Member Toombs, you recognize. Sorry. Move for approval. Uh, Council Member Toombs moves for approval of um, uh, 1955 uh, for passage on second reading, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of Bill 2023 1955 for passage on second reading say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Uh, you adopt. Uh, we're on Bill uh, 2023 1956 by Councilmember Van Reese, which we can take with items 63 and 64. Uh, Bill 2023 1956, Ordinance to amend Title 17, by amending specific land on property located at 2634 Bethwood Drive and 0 Allenwood Drive. It's approximately 200 feet east of Oakwood Avenue. Item 63. BL 2023-1957 is the companion bill. Ordinance authorized building material restrictions requirements for BL 2023-1956. The proposed ordinance requires certain materials to be restricted in the construction of building. And item number 64, BL 2023-1958, ordinance to amend title 17 by change from SP to RS 7.5 zoning for a portion of property located at 2634 Bethwood Drive, approximately 40 feet east of Sladen Drive. Council member Van Reese, you're recognized on all three bills. Let's open the public hearing. Please. All right, let's open the public hearing. A show of hands of those who are here in favor of those three measures. All right, show of hands of those who are here in opposition of those three measures. Okay, we got people on both sides. All right, those in favor, if, if you would, please come to the um, microphone. I uh, need your name, address, and then you'll have two minutes in which to speak. Come on up. Uh, uh, name, address, two minutes. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor, members of the council. My name is Michael Garrigan. I'm with Dale & Associates, 516 Heather Place. Um, these three bills uh, all kind of deal with one SP. It was originally approved in uh, 2016, and it had a section, uh, a five-acre section that was planned uh, for a future phase, and we originally uh, met with the community back in March, I believe, and presented that plan for that future phase. And the community, they just didn't want the future phase. Um, so the purpose of the three bills, one is to amend the SP to remove the future phase from the SP, and the other is to rezone it to RS 7.5, exactly like the neighborhood that's next to it. So um, what ends up happening with this future phase of the SP is, is similar to the development pattern of the neighborhood it connects to. Um, it's just a rezoning tonight to the RS 7.5. Uh, the, that will require uh, concept plans and development plans to go before the Planning Commission, which is when um, I'm assuming a lot of the questions tonight will be what's going to be built there. Um, what the zoning will allow will only allow what the neighborhood next door is, and the details will be outlined in those uh, concept plans that go before the Planning Commission, All right. uh, which will have their own public hearings. So, as for your support, and thank you for your time. All right, thank you. Uh, next speaker. Anybody else? Uh, anybody else in favor of this? All right. Uh, anybody in opposition? If you would, if you want to come forward and speak. Name, address, two minutes. Anybody in opposition? Come on forward. My name is Wanda Jordan and I live at 2561 Slayton Drive. Now, when this bill was presented, all we kept hearing when it came to the meeting was about Bethwood and everywhere else, which we did not like it. And then all of a sudden it's, it's affecting Slayton Drive. We in 
the back of my house was a whole field of trees and they built about 20 apartment complex, 12 townhomes, and we accepted that. We still are not dealing with Oakwood, where all of us have to come out. So when you come to Slayton, which I know this is being proposed, and build some more units at our dead end, some more units, these people got to come out of Slayton or come out of Bethwood and go out to Oakwood. We already lost a life on Oakwood because it's a roller coaster. It is not no flat hill. You go down one hill and then you go up the other one. It is just ridiculous. Please do not let this be approved. Or we got a school behind us, we got a park, we got kids. You're building sidewalks for kids to walk on and it's not even safe for them because people flying down the street because we did not even tackle that. Thank you. All right. All right, Any, anybody else wishes to be, you know, wish to be heard on this one? Name, address, two minutes. Hi, my name's April McCray. I live at 2531 Allenwood Drive. Um, Ms. Jordan did a great job of describing the neighborhood. Um, we just had the complex that she was describing, Oakwood Flats, as a 21-acre property with almost 300 units that they did build five years ago. They slid that under the radar, kind of like what it feels like they're trying to do now, slide some more density under the radar um, by just not educating the community on what it is they're proposing. Um, as far as I know, we've had two meetings um, scheduled on this topic. I attended one of them. It was a Zoom meeting. Meeting. The majority of the neighborhood is like elderly people. I went door to door and talked to a lot of them. They're like, I don't know how to get on a Zoom. I don't have a device to get on a Zoom. And so I talked to Council Member Van Reese about maybe having an in-person meeting so that we could get to the majority of the community, which is people who don't have Zoom capability. Um, but that meeting got canceled. We had one scheduled and something conflicted. We didn't get to have it. So at this point, I feel like a lot of the neighborhood still doesn't know what's going on. He said that they're talking talking about this is changing their plan to the um, development pattern of the neighborhood. So is he talking about the Oakwood Flats that's 300 units and 21 acres? Or is he talking about what we currently have, which is I have a house on a quarter acre lot. Is that what he's talking about doing more of, which I'm in favor of? You bought 14 acres, you wanna build quarter acre houses like what we already have? That's great, Nashville needs more homes, but if you wanna build more 10-foot apartment complexes in an already struggling community with crime, traffic. There was a traffic study that they said they were going to do and that nothing was going to change with zoning until that traffic study was done. We haven't seen it. And I just feel pressured and stressed about what's happening in my neighborhood without my knowledge. So be dope if y'all could just deny the rezone. But if you can't do that, can you just defer it so we can have another meeting and we can just know what's happening? Please. All right. Thank you. Anybody else on this one? Okay. All right, declare the public hearing closed. Council Member Van Rees. Thank you so much. And I know that there's been a lot of passion because of a tragedy that took place on a young woman who was killed uh, from a speeding car on Oakwood Avenue. And we have worked very hard and I've worked with Council Member Parker on securing uh, traffic calming along Oakwood. Uh, we had a pretty good showing of neighbors at the uh, traffic calming meeting. We're at that phase, um, colleagues, where the plans are already there and now the balloting begins. So that's where we are on that traffic calming process. I know that you're all familiar with it. Um, the traffic calming will be, I'm sure, approved and installed before any of these, um, this development moves forward. Uh, and so I wanted to make sure that uh, everyone knew that that, that that took place. Traffic calming is a major issue. 
This technically is actually a down zoning because it was an original SP along Bethwood. There was a phase one and a phase two. Phase one was approved. This was phase two when we went back to the community and said, "There's this is what we plan for phase two. They, as uh, was mentioned, uh, preferred the density not to happen on phase two. So uh, the developer has agreed to downzone it back to its original zoning. And so uh, by going back to, uh, I believe it's RS 7.5, um, then um, only the, um, the available uh, parcels uh, that would already be approved just by right uh, would be available to them. So, so this um, uh, landowner has, agreed to uh, to do all the things that the community has asked for. There were two meetings and the traffic calming meetings. Uh, I uh, take responsibility for anybody who did not receive notifications of that because um, this was uh, particularly in a, in a radius uh, regarding the development was different from the radius regarding the traffic calming. There may have been some spillover, but um, as I leave office, I'm very proud of what we've been able to do at Oakwood Park. Um, and uh, the current district date begins at Slayton. And so we've been, uh, I keep looking over at Council Member Parker, District 5 is the Oakwood Flats and and Bethwood Commons is, is uh, District 8. In the new election, it all becomes District 5, and so um, the current council member has been involved in all of the communications. So um, I believe we've done everything that we needed to do, um, but there's clearly some additional communication that needs to take place, so we'll make sure that that becomes available. And with that, uh, I ask for your approval. Okay, thank you, Councilmember Van Rees. All right, so we are on a, um, a motion to approve on second reading 1956, 1957, and 1958, properly seconded. Uh, Councilor Emma Murphy, you're recognized. Thank you. I think Council Lady Van Reese addressed my um, question. I was just confirming that this is a down zone because uh, I think that could be the only one on this agenda. We rarely, rarely lower the density. Um, we so often are trying to increase density, increase affordability, and we've really been working on that. Um, across the county, and so that was my my confusion that I thought uh, I, I was a little confused, but but the fact that this is a down zone sounds like that's what the neighbors want, and so thank you for clarifying that, Council Lady, um, and I'll be in support of this. Um, again, most of my district is RS 7.5, and they adore it, so thank you. Thank you, Council Member Murphy. Anybody else on this one? All right, we've got a motion to approve, and there's three bills involved, 1956, 1957, 1958. Councilmember Van Rees has moved approval on second reading, properly seconded. Nobody else in the queue, We're ready to vote. All those in favor of the three bills um, passing on second reading say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Uh, those three bills pass on second reading. Um, we are now on item number 65, BL 2023, 1959 and 1960. These are by Councilmember Hancock. Uh, Item number 65, BL 2023, 1959, ordinance to amend Title 17 by changing from RS 15 SP zoning for property located at 1231 Pawnee Trail, approximately 300 feet southeast of Grants Pass, and the companion bill, BL 2023, 1960, uh, ordinance to authorize building material restriction requirements for BL 2023, 1959. Proposed ordinance requires certain materials to restrict in the construction of buildings. Councilmember Hancock, you are recognized on your two bills. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Could we open up the public hearing, please? We certainly can. Uh, declare the public hearing open. Uh, I'd like to see a show of hands of those who are here in favor of those two bills. Show of hands of those uh, who are in opposition of those two bills. Don't see anybody in opposition. Those two in favor wish to speak. Oh, somebody's coming up. All right. Name address, two minutes. Hey there, my name is Patrizia Murdaka. I'm 1231 Pawnee Trail. Um, first of all, I just want to really praise Councillor Tawny Hancock for having the highest regard for her community's desires and the level to which she was tuned into that, the way she handles her community meetings, the frequency with which that happens. It was just really impressive to me to see that format and how she engages with her, with her community. So when it came to working with her on this, she was very in tune with their needs and 
that was a top priority. Um, from what I understand, there were previous submissions for this site and for this project that were significantly higher density apartments, you know, 120 units in the same space. And um, it was a really, it was a privilege to work with Councillor Hancock and Catalyst Engineering, our engineering firm, to uh, actually propose a plan that was a extremely low density by comparison single family plan that preserves green space and walkability for the neighborhood. So I was really proud to be a part of that. Um, another important accomplishment of this SP was actually the termination of a right of way, which was previously threatened to connect uh, a suburban area with a rural area, and neighbors on both sides were concerned about what the potential uh, addition of a future roadway connecting those two areas, what that would feel like when that would be like to them. But with this, we were able to accomplish a termination of that right away, giving a lot of peace and security to people on both sides who really didn't want those two areas to connect. Um, I'm honestly humbled by the community support that we've received at our previous meetings. Neighbors actually came alongside me to voice their approval and their support, so that really meant a lot to me. And uh, honestly, as a builder and a professional here in Nashville, I'm honored to get to be a part of contributing to Madison and legacy in the community with some really beautiful homes. So like I say, just really grateful across the board for uh, all that this project has been and meant to me and the way it's evolved. So thank you so much for all those involved and especially to Councillor Tanya Hancock. Have a great day. All right, thank you. All right, anybody else wishing to speak on this one? All right, uh, declare the public hearing closed. Councilmember Hancock, you're on your two bills. I'd like to move for approval with a brief comment. All right, um, Councilmember Hancock has moved for approval of 1959 and 1960 for a, a passage on second reading. Properly seconded, back to you. So uh, this particular property that's involved here was the very first one I was approached by a developer within a couple of weeks of my being elected in August of 2019. And as um, Patrizio alluded to, there were several renditions over the course of the four years, none of which were suitable or um, spoken of favorably by either side of the community. And this is a pretty, you know, interesting area since it's right in between the division between T2 rural maintenance and T3. T3 suburban maintenance. Um, the 12 acre parcel also has a cemetery just beside it that has already been saved and preserved. And on one side of the parcel where the right of way was supposed to connect is a historic stone wall. So this um, win for the community was also to save this wall and not have the right of way, you know, kind of tear that history down. So that was um, pretty exciting to everyone. The um, Cumberland Station neighborhood where this is going to directly connect to is a suburban neighborhood with sidewalks and, you know, um, separated houses they, and they all have uh, similar size yards and this was something that the community through the regular HOA meetings that I've attended was very concerned and insistent about is that the um, expansion with this 12 acres would be similar to theirs and have um, you know two-story homes the garages in the same place they were they were so very specific and it was just amazing to have someone come in and want to design something that fit their needs and and talk to them about it and when they came out with the original design it, um, or the design that we have today it's actually better than anyone we've seen before. Instead of just a standard circle, it's like an oval shape. So if you've seen the plans, um, it's just beautiful. We're all very excited to have that. Um, you know, no one loves to have change or not very many people do, but this one is one that the community on both sides are embracing. So um, with that, I'd like to move for approval. All right, Councilmember Hancock has moved for approval of um, it's 1959 and 1960 for passage on second reading and properly seconded. Uh, Councilmember Young, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, I just, I saw this is on Pawnee Trail and I wondered, did we get any sort of recommendation from Leslie Nope or Ron Swanson? <laughs> Thank you, Vice Mayor. Councilmember Hancock, do you want to even respond? 
I, I think that Leslie Knope is always in favor of any legislation I put forward as a former parks type employee as 10 years with the YMCA myself. I think that we are in lockstep together. All right, sounds good. All right, so Councilmember Hancock has moved approval of 1959 and 1960 for passage on second reading. Properly seconded. Nobody else in the queue ready to vote. All those in favor of the uh, two bills for passage on second reading say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Two bills pass on second reading. We are on, uh, once again, back to Council Member Toombs. Uh, BL 2023 1961, ordinance to amend Title 17 by change from CL and RA to MULA zoning for properties like 2605 and 2611 Old Buena Vista Road and 1001A and B West Trinity Lane at the northwest corner of Old Buena Vista Road and West Trinity Lane. Council Member Toombs, you are recognized on um, 1961. Thank you. Request to open a public hearing. All right. Declare the public hearing open. Show of hands of those who are here in favor of the measure. A show of hands of those who are here in opposition to the measure. Didn't see anybody on either side. Declare the public hearing closed. Uh, Councilor Toombs, you're on your bill. Move for approval. I uh, got a motion to approve Bill 2023-1961 for pass on second reading. Proper motion, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion to approve on second reading 1961 say aye. Opposed, no. You adopt. Uh, Bill 2023-1962 by council by birthday girl council member Roberts. An ordinance to amend Title 17 by change from IR to R6A zoning. Properties located at 4421, 4423, 4425, 4427, and 4427B Michigan Avenue, approximately 250 feet west of 44th Avenue North. Council member Roberts, you recognized all on your bill. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd like to open the public hearing. All right, declare the public hearing open. A show of hands of those who are here in favor of the measure. Show of hands of those who are here in opposition to the measure. Don't see anybody on either side. Declare the public hearing closed. Councilman Roberts, you're on your bill. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd like to move for approval, and I really appreciate you all giving me number 68 since I was born at 10 o'clock on 1968. That was really thoughtful. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> You're out of order. No, I'm just kidding. Councilmember Roberts, we can uh, we can stay here for ten more minutes on this bill if you really want to do that. All right, all right. So I get the motion to uh, is to approve 1962 for pass on second reading, properly seconded. Uh, any discussion on this one? Seeing none, all those in favor of the bill for pass on second reading say aye. Opposed, no. You adopt. Uh, we're on 1963, item number 69 by Council Member Hauser. Ordinance to amend Title 17 by change from R40 to SP zoning for portion of property located at 7750 Highway 70 South, approximately 250, 240 feet west of Harpeth Valley Road to permit office and vocational school uses. Council Member Hauser, you're recognized. Yes, I'd like to open the public meeting, please. All right. Council Member Hauser has moved to open the public hearing. Uh, open the public hearing. A show of hands of those who are here in favor of this measure all right show of hands of those who are here in opposition to this measure don't see anybody in opposition those in favor wish to speak okay declare the public hearing closed council member hauser you're recognized on your bill yes i'd like to move for approval please all right council member hauser moves for approval of 1963 for pass on second reading properly seconded any discussion council member young Thank you, Vice Mayor. You might regret it. Uh, we're putting a school, I, I think, on uh, Harpeth Valley Road. Uh, Councilwoman Hauser, are you going to be president of the Harpeth Valley PTA? Oh, you are so bad. I'm on you a roll tonight, so okay? Now, with that, I'd like to have Councilmember Young break out in song. Ta da! I don't have objection. I, I heard that objection. <laughs> that would. That would require a suspension of rules, and I see several objections. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. All, right. All right, so we are on Councilmember Hauser's bill, Bill 2023-1963. Oh, Councilmember Rosenberg, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. Councilmember Young, I'll just mention that Harper Valley PTA is actually about Harpeth Valley Elementary School in Bellevue, so you're not far off. For real. Yes. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, 
uh, we're voting on 1963 for passage on second reading, uh, properly seconded. I've, fortunately, I've gotten everybody out of the queue. Uh, we're voting on second reading. All those in favor of Bill 2023-1963 for pass on second reading, say aye. Opposed, no. Bill passes on second reading. Hold on. Just All right, we are on um, uh, item number 70, Bill 2023-1964 by Council Member Hager. Ordinance to amend Title 17 by Chamber RS5 to SP zoning on property located at 2411 Lakeshore Drive, northeast of Dabbs Avenue. Council Member Hager, you are recognized. Uh, request open the hearing, please. All right, declare the public hearing open. A show of hands of those who are here in favor of 1964. Okay, show of hands of those who are here in opposition to 1964. Okay, uh, those in favor wish to speak? Nope, declare the public hearing closed. Councilmember Hager, you're on your bill. Move for passage. Uh, Councilmember Council Hager has moved for passage of 1964 on second reading. Properly seconded any discussion. Seeing none, all those in favor of 1964 passing on second reading say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Uh, 1964 passes on second reading. Councilmember Pulley, you've got the next one. Item number 71, BL 2023-1965. Ordinance to amend Title 17 by amending the Lipscomb University Institutional Overlay District for various properties located south of Grandview Drive and east of Granny White Pike, zoned R10 and CN and within the Lipscomb University, uh, University Institutional Overlay District. Councilmember Pulley, you're recognized on your bill. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Move to open the public hearing. Okay, declare the public hearing open. A show of hands of those who are here in favor of the measure. All right, thank you. A show of hands of those who are here in opposition to the measure. Okay, I've got a hand in opposition. Let's start with those in favor. Anybody wishing to speak in favor, if you would come on to the microphone. Um, I need your name, uh, address, and then you got two minutes in which to speak. <coughs> Brent Culberson with Lipscomb University, One University Park Drive. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor and members of the council. The institutional overlay that is before you in this amendment was originally adopted uh, in 2003 with amendments in 2006, 2012, and then a minor adjustment in 2018. Uh, the amendment really covers two main items. First, uh, internal adjustments to uh, building proposed buildings on campus, and then the addition of a retail strip that the university now owns on Granny White Pike. Uh, there is a third piece that was originally uh, intended uh, for an expansion of boundaries across uh, Belmont for university properties uh, that we own, uh, but we have now reevaluated those and are working with councilmen to uh, amend that in the upcoming uh, third reading after uh, having both uh, meetings in with the community and neighborhood in March. Uh, we met with the Avalon Neighborhood Association twice in June, and then Councilman Pulley held a community meeting last Thursday, June 29th, uh, and so we've been in touch both with those meetings and then uh, a robust uh, phone calls, emails. And so with that, would appreciate your support of this bill. All right, thank you. Next speaker, name, address, two minutes. Yes, Chuck Miller, Anecdote, Architectural Experiences, formerly Tuck Hinton Architecture, um, uh, 508 Houston Street. Uh, I've been uh, Lipscomb's architect for 30 years. Our firm has actually worked with Lipscomb since 1988 and formed our the master plan originally with them in 88. We were involved with the, as Brent mentioned, the 2003 uh, original overlay approval amendment in 2006, then amendment in 2012. This current plan um, actually um, increases, preserves more green space. It's removing surface parking that was shown um, on the uh, Grady White Pike side. It's improving the Grady White Pike entrance at Maple Hurst. Um, there's approximately 21 buildings that are proposed in this plan. 
12 of those are in the same location as 2012. Four of those are being relocated and five new are added. One existing building is actually being removed to improve the uh, Maplehurst entrance. Uh, we would appreciate your uh, vote on this. Thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, next speaker, name, address, two minutes. Good evening, Jeffrey Bond, 3902 Grading White Pike. I uh, reside uh, directly across the street from the university, and in full disclosure, I'm also a member of the administration. So I had the pleasure of working on developing the master plan, and a couple things that I think are really exciting. Uh, the university is a very open space available to the community who use it quite frequently uh, for recreation. Uh, as we've gone through this, we've not only uh, maintained that, we've increased the green space on campus. We've also focused on trying to address uh, a, a concern that's increasing in our community, which is security, both for those uh, using our facilities and for our students. Uh, we focused in the future on improving the uh, security around campus, as well as the number of entrances available so that it's a much more secure environment for our community. Thank you. All right, thank you. Anybody else wishing to speak in favor of this one? Okay. All right. Um, anybody wishing to speak in opposition? Come on uh, up. Name, address. You got two minutes. Hello, my name is Michelle Vanderpool. I'm at 4201 Rockdale Avenue. I am three houses from the Lipscomb University Academy football and track. <laughs> I believe in this project, but I have concerns pertaining to the stormwater and flood waterways. I would like to never see a Waverly happen to Lipscomb University. We are talking about children. I believe we need to hold this a little bit closer to our hearts. In our area, it has ex extensive flooding, advanced floodings. Now the roads are going from a 100-year flood happening once a year to eight times a year. I have a creek that went from 10 feet to 30 feet in less than five years. We have no trees that are gonna be holding this in. Lipscomb Academy sports fields are already in a wet floodplain. We have had group meetings. We have had numerous phone calls, but no movement forward on any above what the city requires. I really plead to your hearts, please make it a little bit more strenuous for the whole entire area. Requirements, please put flood gauges, hold newer, more accurate surveys. I move to hopefully protect this area. It's not a just about housing. It really truly is about the children that we host in these areas. So I, prop, I request the flood gauges in all directions of Lipscomb University's property within one mile radius and a warning system please put in place. I feel that you probably will vote and move this forward if you do, please put safety measures in this. I thank you so much for your service. All right, thank you. Anybody else wishing to speak in opposition? Okay, declare the public hearing closed. Uh, Council Member Pulley, you recognize. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd move approval on second reading with a very, very brief uh, comment. All right, so Council Member Pulley is moving approval on second reading, properly seconded back to you. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. We did hold a couple of community meetings, one at the end of March, which I was unable to attend due to some unfortunate circumstances that you guys are all well aware of. Uh, and then we held another one last week and had some robust community conversations out of this. This got a lot of feedback from the community and uh, one of the Lipscomb officials uh, indicated that there would be an amendment forthcoming that I'll bring to planning committee and third reading to address uh, the majority of the community concerns we've heard. So with that, I'd uh, ask for your approval. All right, Council Member Foley has moved for approval of 1965 for pass on second reading properly seconded. Any discussion? All right, seeing none, we're ready to vote. All those in favor of the bill passing on second reading say aye. Opposed, no. 
bill passes on second reading. We are now on item number 72. We can take with 73. This is by Council Member Swope. Uh, bill 2023-1966. Ordinance to amend Title 17 by changing specific plan for properties located at 6415 and 6419 Holt Road and 6401 Nolensville Pike. Southern corner of Nolensville Pike and Holt Road zone SPNCL. And the companion bill, Bill 2023-1967. Ordinance to authorize building material restrictions requirements for Bill 2023-1966. Proposed ordinance requires certain materials to be restricted in the construction of buildings. Council Member Swope, we're on your two bills. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Let's open up that public hearing. All right, public hearing open. A show of hands of those who are here in favor of those two measures. All right, thank you. Show of hands of those who are here in opposition of those two measures. Don't see anybody in opposition. Those in favor wish to speak. Nope. Uh, declare the public hearing closed. Council Member Swope. Move approval. Council Member Swope moves approval of 1966 and 1967 for passage on second reading. Properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the two bills uh, for passage on second reading say aye. Yep. Opposed, no. Uh, bills passed on second reading. Okay, so it is now 10 o'clock. Um, we are about to take on items number um, 74 and 75. Um, the staff here has not had a break in three and a half hours. Um, what we want to do, we, we just want to take a five minute break for everybody to stand up, okay? Five minute break um, and we will be back at 10.06, all right? Um, because we're gonna be here I think for a little while and we just need to give these people a break. 10.06, uh, we'll be back, five minute break. We got it. We cover there. We are ready to begin. Okay, so um, we learned at the break that we had a staff problem with one bill. Um, it is item 229. Um, it is bill 2023-1990. It's on second reading. Um, that's the ordinance regarding the community oversight board that council member Syracuse has. Hold on. No, this is, um, I mean, we're gonna move right through this if we can, so we can take care of the staff issue. Please don't applaud. We we got people waiting. They've been waiting for three and a half hours. We're going to move quick on this. Council Member Syracuse, Bill 2023-1990 on second reading. Without objection, we're taking it right now. Ordinance amending Title II, uh, Reconstructing Community, Community Oversight Board as a Police Advisory Re Review Committee. Council Member Syracuse, you were recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, committee reports, please. I got public health comes to you. Public Health and Safety considered uh, BL 2023-1990 recommended approval, six in favor, zero against, as amended with amendments one and two. Okay, uh, Council Member Murphy, Rules Committee. Council Member Murphy. Council Member Murphy, I need a Rules Committee report. We're on 2023-1990. Five in favor, zero against on both amendments. All right, thank you. And Council the Mayor bill Sy as amended. Council Member Syracuse, you're on your bill. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Move uh, amendment number one. Okay. Uh, the, the motion is to amend, uh, to move amendment number one, properly seconded. Back to you for an explanation. Thank you, Ms. Darby. If you could run through it real quick. <laughs> Thank you. Put you on the spot. Okay. All right. One second. Let me pull it up real quick. I thought you'd be quicker. Uh, amendment, than me. sorry. Amendment number one. Um, this makes some uh, changes to the legislation that would. Uh, change the name internal affairs unit to the police department office of professional accountability. It also um, specifies that the uh, the budget is to be prepared in accordance with article six of the Metro okay. charter. Um, it uh, spells out the subpoena requirements and limitations um, rather than simply refer to state law that spells those out. And it corrects a um, typographical error. Okay, thank you. Council Member Syracuse. Move approval. Council Member Syracuse has moved approval of amendment number one, properly seconded discussion on the amendment. Seeing none, all those in favor of the amendment say aye. 
Those no, amendments on, that's number one. Council Member Hurt, um, on not on the amendment. Okay, Council Member Porterfield, you have the second amendment. Uh, thank you, Vice Mayor. Committee reports, please. Uh, we've already gotten them. Already You're got good. it, okay, uh, move for approval. Okay, so Council Member Porterfield has moved for approval of amendment number two, properly seconded, explanation of what the amendment does. Uh, Director Darby, could you do the explanation, please? Yes, that. The uh, amendment number two changes the effective date from its passage to October 27, 2023. This is in line with the state law that requires that a new board be approved uh, within 120 days of the effective date of the state law, which was July 1. The 120 days runs on October 29, which is on a weekend. And so this uh, would make it effective on the Friday before that weekend. Council Member Porterfield. Thank you, move for approval. Okay, motion is to approve, properly seconded. Any questions on the amendment? Council Member O'Connell on the amendment, okay. Um, all right, any discussion? We're on the amendment, amendment number two. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Amendment, amendment number two is on. So Council Member Syracuse, you're on your bill as amended, 1990 with amendment number one and amendment number two. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Move approval as amended with a brief comment. All right, Council Member Syracuse has moved BL 2023-1990 for passage on second reading as amended, properly seconded back to you. Thank you so much. I just wanted to say thank you so much to our COB staff, the board for working uh, together and helping us to, to put this together to be as effective as possible. Um, so we're, we, I think we, we really got it right. So thank you. Move on. All right. Thank you. Council Member Hart on the bill. Yes, I just wanted to uh, stand and thank uh, the sponsor and the COB staff and Metro Legal for working on this. I was sponsor of the first uh, COB legislation that failed on the council floor and People went out and got over 8,000 signatures in order for it to become a referendum, and it overwhelmingly passed. And I am so proud because I thought that was the greatest thing that happened on this chamber floor because the voices of the people spoke and they spoke loudly. And for the community to come out in droves as they did, and now Metro is respecting their uh, voices is a wonderful thing. So I'm just standing asking uh, uh, my colleagues to support this effort to let the people know that their voices do matter and we want to hear from them because we could not be who we are without them. That ex exercise that we had, I think was the most diverse um, exercise that we had in this chamber and we made sure that that board looked and reflected like this community and i'm just it was i'm just proud of it and i just thank you all so much for uh the efforts that have been made all right remember we are trying to get through this very very quickly council member o'connell Thank you, Mr. President. I, I know we're trying to do that, but this is a big deal to the citizens of Nashville. And I just, if we could, if Ms. Darby could help, I think, for the general public, uh, describe what the, and summarize maybe just what the major differences are between the existing uh, state of the Community Oversight Board and this. Um, so remember, this is on second reading. We've got the bill on third reading. I, we, we've got a lot of people back here that, who, and I know that, and who we're, we're in front of and they're waiting. Uh, I appreciate that, Mr. Vice Mayor. This is one of the biggest things that the public asked for and it is changing now. So um, I think it deserves its time. Ms. Darby, you're recognized. Um, some of the, the major areas that are changed are the uh, the way that the the number of board members, the way that the board members are um, appointed, they will be appointed by the mayor as, a, as opposed to the uh, the method laid out in the charter provisions currently. Um, the the work of the the board will be limited uh, as opposed to what they are currently um, able to do with regard to investigations. They will be limited to reviewing um, complaints and submitting those complaints to the police and then reviewing the reports that the police submit and um, back to the the board. Um, uh, I think those are the, the primary distinctions. 
um, the ability to issue subpoenas is limited, is limited, greatly limited by state law. Um, and that's been laid out in the, the ordinance as well. Um, uh, the, the board will no longer be able to receive uh, confidential or non-public information from the police department with regard to uh, the work that they do as well. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. All right. Um, um, that takes care of the queue. We are ready to vote because of the requirements of the state law. We are on the board. Okay, Mr. Clark, uh, we are we are voting on approval of BL 2023-1990 on second reading, but it requires 20, uh, a two-thirds vote of those people who are voting. So we have to go on the board. No, 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 no. So pursuant to the state law, we have to have two separate votes on this, on second reading and third reading. It has to get two-thirds vote in order to pass. That's one of the requirements of the state law, correct, Ms. Darby? Two of the readings uh, to, on two separate days have to have a two-thirds vote majority. So we just have to do it on the board to make sure There's that we've no got it. There's no public hearing. Right, no public hearing. All right, we're ready? All right, so we are voting on motion to pass on second reading as amended. This is bill 2023-1990. We have to do it on the board. So uh, if you're for the bill as amended, you'd vote aye. If you're against it, you'd vote no. Mr. Clark, open up the machines. Good, everybody in? Mr. Clark, close machines, take the vote. Ayes 32, no zero, uh, zero abstentions. The bill passes on second reading with the required number of votes and it'll come up on third reading at the next meeting. All right, thank you everybody. We are now on items 74 and 75. These are by Council Member Rosenberg. Uh, BL 2023, 1968 is an ordinance to amend changing uh, Title 17, amending Title 17 by changing from AR 28 SP zoning for property located at 1084 Morton Mill Road, current terminus of Morton Mill Road, partially located within the floodplain overlay district at 43.87 acres and the companion bill which is item 75 it's bill 2023 1969 it's an ordinance to authorize building material restrictions requirements for bill 2023 1968 proposed ordinance requires certain materials restricted in the construction of buildings council member rosenberg you are recognized on those two bills sorry Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to open the public hearing, please. Okay, I'm um, gonna open the public hearing. We are on BL 2023, 1968 and 1969. Show of hands of those who are here in favor of those two measures, All right? Show of hands of those who are here in opposition to those two measures. All right, I see uh, some people with two hands raised. Okay, that's good. All right, so we'll start with uh, the first uh, people who are in favor, those who want to speak, if you would, please come to the microphone. I need your name, I need your name, address, and hold on, hold on. So one of the reasons we ask for name and address is to figure out where people are, okay? So um, that's what we're doing, name, address, and then you'll have two minutes in which to speak, okay? And we, we are courteous to both sides, all right? All right. Uh, sir, you are recognized. Name Thank you, Vice Mayor. My name is Mike Novelli. I live at 42 Palmer Crest in the Woodlands, Texas. I am founder and CEO of the Cypress Brook Company, the applicant you're seeking approval tonight for this rezoning. We are a 27-year-old company that builds and buys apartments around the country. We have done projects in Florida, Alabama, Kansas, Colorado, and a lot through Texas. Our brand has done particularly well in Austin and other cities with similar demographics as Nashville. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, uh, so I know this is a controversial one, but we try to be fair on both sides, okay? So um, we, we, we applaud folks, but we don't try to get disrupt them. So, and that goes for both sides, all right? So uh, we try to keep it very professional, so continue on. Um, 
but realize that we're trying to listen. We are very much trying to pay attention to what's going on. Go ahead. Today we have 395 families that invest in our projects, some of which from the great state of Tennessee. In our 27 years, we have never had a project foreclosed on or frankly ever sold an asset under duress. Our journey in Nashville began 15 years ago when my wife and I fell in love with the city when we visited our oldest daughter who was at Vanderbilt at the time and worked here for several years thereafter. Five years ago, we began looking for sites in Nashville. Three years ago, we saw the potential of this project to, ne to connect Bellevue to the Nashville Greenway system since we had run or biked on many of the parks. It took us almost a year of design and engineering work to develop a plan that might unlock this opportunity. During that time, we became 100 convinced all the easements and access points were there to make the project viable. In our second year, we began meeting with neighbors for input. We encountered typical NIMBY oppositions, but there was one issue that resonated with me, namely that many of the residents down Coley Davis to our west were still dealing with the trauma of the 2010 flood. We then assembled some of the smartest civil engineers, traffic consultants, and hydrologists on the planet and determined that we could, as part of the project at our expense, provide a major life safety improvement to thousands of residents by raising Coley Davis above the 2010 flood level Level, keeping two lanes of traffic functioning during construction with no meaningful effect on the levels, flood levels in the area. So we humbly request your support for the project tonight. Thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, next speaker, name, address, two minutes. My name's Andy Ward. I live at 866 Glendale Lane here in Nashville. I'm a native Nashvillian and have seen firsthand the <coughs> the uh, ups and downs of all the growth that we've experienced in our city. I know that there are some minor inconveniences compared to the, um, so that said, I think there are some minor inconveniences compared to the immense benefits that come with population growth. We have a front row seat to the new restaurants, businesses, and diversity that are coming to Nashville as a result, as a result of living in this uh, now world-renowned city. One thing is certain though, uh, this city will continue to grow and we need more homes. Right now, the cost of housing is skyrocketing. I'm concerned about the housing options for the middle class. I did some research on so home prices in Bellevue. The average home price is $440,000. At today's interest rates, around 7%. That's $2,800 a month. Um, when you compare that to average rents in Bellevue, it's $1,700 a month as a middle class family. Um, it's a big difference. It's a really big difference. I think it's clear that more competition uh, and more diverse housing options will only help to provide more attainable housing solutions uh, for those uh, who cannot compete with today's competitive market and rising interest rates. I urge you to support this rezoning and I thank you for your consideration. Okay. Thank you. Um, next speaker, name, address, two minutes. Good evening. <laughs> Good evening, Metro City. City Council members. My name is Sarah Ryburn. Um, I live at 5902 McComas Boulevard, Dallas, Texas. And I work with the applicant seeking your approval on this bill. I'm a Vanderbilt graduate and lived in Nashville for 10 years. I spent many a day cycling the parks and using the greenways near where this development would be located. So this city and this project are very near and dear to my heart. Over the past year, I personally with our team door knocked and met face to face with hundreds of Bellevue residents and businesses to share the information and facts behind this development. In doing so, we collected letters and signatures from community members who supported the project, which you will find in the support booklet that has been provided to you. I'm extremely proud to be part of a project that has the opportunity to bring $12 million worth of public improvements to the community, including, most importantly, raising Coley Davis above the 2010 flood level. This is an opportunity to say yes to smart growth in Nashville, as well as solve a major public safety issue for the residents of Coley Davis. Don't miss the chance to approve a housing project that in the broad context checks all the boxes. It promotes public transportation being located near WeGo stations. It directs traffic to major artery roads and freeways rather than through neighborhoods. It includes public infrastructure improvements to roads, bridges, and greenways. And it brings 417 needed apartments to Bellevue. I urge you to support this rezoning. Thank you for your consideration. Okay, thank you. Uh, next speaker, name, address, two minutes. 
My name is Beth Ward. I live at 866 Glendale Lane here in Nashville. I'm here to speak in favor of the bill for a few reasons. First, I'm an active user of Nashville bike paths, trails, and parks, and I think it's important we find opportunities to see that our parks are preserved and greenways extended, particularly as our city grows, because this is something that makes our city so unique and special. The project accomplishes all of those objectives. First, um, the developer will be extending the Greenway bike path. I understand the opposition is complaining this Greenway is in the floodway, but my understanding is that virtually all the Greenways in the system are in flood zones. Further, this is a critical linkage point outlined in Metro's Park's master plan to play future Greenway system. Second, this project will donate 20 acres of land back to the city and help preserve green spaces. Third, this will also open up the opportunity for Metro to activate the exiting or the existing 51 acre Bellevue Park for public use. Lastly, I'm a small business owner here in Nashville. I have a heightened awareness of the rising cost of living in this town. And as costs increase, it's becoming more and more difficult to grow and hire new employees that can afford to live here or near my business. More housing will be a critical component to helping small businesses like mine survive. Thank you for your consideration and please support this rezoning. Okay, thank you. Uh, next speaker, name, address, two minutes. Good evening, Council. My name is Brian Ralston. I live at 2115 Buckskin Court uh, in Spring Hill, Tennessee. My role as part of this team is to review the hydraulics. Um, I have looked at the the model of the Harpeth River, uh, and I have worked with your staff at Metro Water Services Stormwater Division, at FEMA, and at TEMA, and reviewed this uh, first looking at a bridge crossing from Coley Davis to the development, then looking at the addition of a greenway system under the CSX bridge and also a, a tunnel option. And then lastly, we looked at raising Coley Davis Road above the 2010 flood. All of those limit the map revision to the property. Um, we are in a draft stage right now, but that is because uh, we have not finalized all the plans. Once that is done, we will continue to work with your department and with FEMA to verify that all of this is correct, and we look forward to doing that. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Good evening. My name is Daniel Mota, and I live at Two Howe Creek Place in the Woodlands, Texas. I am a development principal with Cypressburg Company and will oversee the Bellevue project and ensure the commitments we've made are fulfilled. I would like to address several claims that have been made regarding the viability of key elements of the project. First, we have committed to the left turn lane from Coley Davis onto the public bridge to allow free flow of traffic and prevent delays for first responders. Secondly, we have draft agreements from CSX covering the terms of our license to use the existing easement and rail crossing for construction traffic and emergency use. These documents and the permitted design of the Greenway crossing will be finalized once we secure approval of this rezoning. Additionally, I can confirm that we do have a contract in place for the Smith parcel north of the CS CSX tracks needed for the Greenway connection. There have been some questions regarding the height and density of our project. Our density of nine units per acre is comparable to the nine units an acre of the River Plantation subdivision and lower than the 12 units an acre of the Harpeth Springs subdivision, which are both near our property. Our three-story buildings are 400 feet from the closest residence, and the 44 feet in height are actually lower than the maximum allowable height for a single-family residence at 45 feet. Our four-story buildings are 1,000 feet from a residence and are permitted in our proposed zoning. Finally, there have been questions regarding the absence of programming for the donated parkland. This space is left unprogrammed in Metro Parks request. They have a process that usually includes public input to develop programming and parking plans for new parks. We understand the city park staff will do that programming in due course. I hope this addresses these issues and request you vote in favor of this rezoning. Thank you. All right, thank you. Next speaker. Name, address, two minutes. Thank you, Vice Mayor and Council. Eric Wise, I live at 2249 Bell Creek Way in Bellevue. I'm a 25-year resident in Nashville and currently own my home in Harpeth Spring townhouses just past the proposed development off Coley Davis Road. My elderly parents have lived at the Meadows Lakeshore Senior Living on Coley Davis Road since 2011. In addition to being a Bellevue homeowner, I'm an avid bicyclist. 
who utilizes Nashville's greenways frequently. I'm in support of the Ariza development and see the following as benefits to our community. With a tight housing supply in Metro Nashville, I welcome additional housing in Bellevue and believe it is a good use of the land available and will enhance our community. This proposed project has lower density than our Harper Springs community in which I live. The improvement to Coley Davis Road by raising the road to avoid flooding such as we experienced in 2010, while it may be inconvenient in the short term, I believe in the long run, this improvement to the infrastructure will be good for all who utilize Coley Davis Road. The completion of the greenway to the terminus of the boat launch, which will connect Bellevue residents to the Warner Parks via the greenway, is a plus for cyclists as well as walkers and joggers. The addition of a left turn lane as motor, motorists approach the bridge to the development will ensure a smooth traffic flow for those who live further down Coley Davis. I travel Coley Davis to Highway 70 intersection every morning and evening and have never waited at the light more than one cycle and I'm not fearful the additional traffic will be a detriment. While tenants of apartment housing do not directly pay property taxes, they pay them indirectly at, as it is included each month in their rental payments as landlords pass property taxes on to their tenants. This additional property tax income as well as the sales tax that tenants will pay in the, our community will further increase our tax base. I wholeheartedly support this proposed development. I believe it's positive, smart growth for our community, and I would ask for your vote on this project. Thank you. All right, thank you. Next speaker, name, address, two minutes. Hello, my name is Andrew Terrell at 4808 Nebraska Avenue. Uh, I just want to start off by thanking you all for being here today. You know, I appreciate your service to the city and just know that it is not taken for granted, but also do not envy you. And I understand the difficulties of your position and your responsibilities in rebalancing the wants and desires of two very passionate but differing sides while simultaneously being able to look ahead and deliver what Nashville will need in the future. This project is a good project now and for the future, and I'm in favor of the proposal, and I ask that you support and approve it tonight. There were many community meetings and planning commission meetings and vetting of this project over years, and this project is a standard for which we have strived with the, to achieve with public-private partnerships as Nashville continues to grow. So I won't repeat things that have already been said, but one thing I do want to bring up is all of these improvements that have been talked about are no use of public funds in all and at no additional expense to the taxpayers. The developer uh, team is incurring all those expenses as a, as a part of the project. So thank you and I hope you support this project. All right, thank you. Uh, next speaker, name, address, two minutes. Adam Klink at 911 Halcyon. I wanted to start off by saying I'm in full and complete support of this project. I'm an avid user of the city's parks and bikeways, and now being a new father, I realize that the need for these uh, parks and greenways is, is more clear than ever. Um, I'm extremely, uh, it's, it's extremely rare for a private developer to use private dollars to grow Nashville's network of, of bike paths and bikeways, and I think as a city, we need to take advantage of that um, every time that we can. Um, you know, in my day job, I assist owners in selling land and have been in the business for many years and have never seen a developer go to this length to truly improve the area uh, on their expense by means of bike paths, parks, lower density than most developments in the area. Um, additionally, I've been following this development since the beginning and have heard countless concerns about the project, only to have a, almost every single one proven to be false with actual data instead of emotional pleas. I believe this was deferred uh, last time over concerns regarding emergency vehicle access on Coley Davis. And uh, all I have to say about that is if we can put a new uh, bridge over Broadway in three months and you know put people on the moon, I, I don't have any uh, concerns of overcoming that issue. All right. Thank you. Next speaker. Jim Terrell, 6027 Landmark Place. I'm a lifelong Nashville resident, and I attended several of the public meetings that the two council people here uh, put on out in the Bellevue area. At the first meeting, the, the main objection I heard was about life and safety. The people out Collie Davis, and rightly so, in the 2010 floods, it, part of it was underwater. They, they were worried about... Uh, 
emergency and safety equipment, being able to get to them should they need it. And if it was me, I'd feel exactly the same way. At the second meeting, surprisingly, the developer listened to him. He came back with a proposal that, okay, I, I hear you, and I'm willing to raise that section of Coley Davis out of, out of the floodplain, and that will improve y'all's y'all's safety, and it will improve ingress and egress to everyone who lives out in Coley Davis. And he further agreed as part of the development, he's building the bridge, he's donating land for public use, and he's connecting the Greenway. The developer has listened to the residents. He has continued to listen to the residents. He's continued to make tweaks to his project to, to hopefully satisfy them. I mean, to me, from I don't live in Bellevue, but from looking in, you know, the goal line's moved on him several times. So every time he, he agrees to do something that seems like it's great and good for the community, the goal line changes. Communities need growth like this in order to be successful. They need it to be able to support jobs, businesses, housing, and recreation. I believe this project does all of the above, and I support this project. Thank right. you very much. Thank you. Next speaker. I'm Marilyn Manga, 608 Copperfield Court. I will agree with the previous speakers. I think that the plan is well thought out, and it will benefit and enhance the entire area. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Next speaker, name, address, two minutes. Hi, uh, my name is Charlotte Mello. I live at 921 Near Top Drive in West Mead. Um, I've been working with the development team on the community outreach and along with Sarah knocked hundreds of doors in Bellevue. And I support this project because I support bringing more dense multifamily housing to Nashville in addition to a greenway and a park. All right, thank you. Uh, <clears throat> Donovan Degree, 271 Carrollton Drive. Um, I don't live in Bellevue. However, I've built probably over 100 homes and sold over homes in the, that area. Um, when you look at Bellevue and you have the idea of bringing 417 units to a site, it's always going to get resistance. And so I think in the past, developers um, have tried to force something. And I think I've sat with uh, Councilman Rosenberg in the past, and he's been very straightforward of saying, hey, look, if it's not a good fit on the right side, it's not going to go. And so I think in light of that, the, these developers have done a really good job in my mind, and I have no ties to the project, of coming to the table and saying, what are the needs of this area, and how do we satisfy those needs? Specifically, when it comes to public safety, when you look at Coley Davis Road, and I'm a licensed engineer, and to raise that out of the floodplain in a 500 year event is a very big price tag. Now that's a public safety matter, and I think it's important to not only this project, but the surrounding residents to make that uh, right and to undo a previous wrong with that road. So in light of that, I do support this project mainly because of that, but also because Additionally, it's going to support Bellevue One Mall right there. It's also going to support a diversity of housing types. I know everybody wants one type of housing, uh, but I'm thankful that throughout my life I've lived in all types of housing and eventually moved to Nashville and uh, attended Vanderbilt University. And I'm thankful for that opportunity that everybody didn't grow up in the same exact home and that there was options on the table for people to better themselves. So thank you for growing the city. Thank you for everything you do. And I ask that you support this project. All right, thank you. Next speaker. Good evening, Vice Mayor. Good evening, members of the council. Alan Thompson with Reagan Smith and Associates, uh, 315 Woodland Street. Uh, we did the land planning and the preliminary engineering and the traffic impact study on this process. Uh, that tra traffic impact study was coordinated with NDOT back in 2021. We produced it that per their scope. They accepted it. They approved it. Uh, we ran second traffic counts in 2022 to verify our traffic counts in 21, and they did exactly that. Um, the level of service that we see at Highway 70 and Coley Davis on the peak hours in the AM is a level service of C. That is a fantastic, fluent, running uh, intersection. That's what they are today. When you add this development to that, it continues at a level service C during those peak hours. In the peak hours or of the PM, is currently running uh, at a level service of D. And that's an acceptable functioning 
uh, intersection. That's what it's doing today. When you add this project, it continues to run at a level service of D. Uh, this project has a 20 year history with my company. We've seen developers come and go. Um, Cypress Brook came to us three years ago uh, and they said, we've got it figured out. We're gonna make a commitment. We're gonna build a bridge. We're gonna connect this landlocked piece of property. We're gonna open access to Metro's existing 50 acre park. We're gonna develop uh, a greenway and give another 20 acres to make that a 70 acre park. And then we're gonna connect Bellevue with that greenway and a multimodal path that goes all the way to the park and ride. Bellevue is a suburban area. We lack sidewalks, we lack connectivity. This is a huge improvement in our community. I ask that you judge this on the merits of the project. It's a good project. It makes Bellevue better. Thank you for your consideration. All right, thank you. Next speaker, name, address, two minutes. Good evening, councilmen and councilwomen. Um, my name is Grace Shockey. I live at 122 Cherokee Hills Drive. Um, <clears throat> Everyone has said really, really great points tonight, and I agree with all of them, so I won't rehash them. But one thing that I want to convey, I'm from Nashville, born and raised. I've seen the growth just like all of you, and I don't think it's stopping. Um, I also work in real estate. I'm not involved in the project, but I understand the need for housing, and I understand the need or the, the desire for people to live here. And it's gonna go somewhere if it doesn't go here. And it's not really a matter of if, it's a matter of when. And I really think we have an amazing opportunity to partner with somebody who understands the community. And there's no possible scenario where 100% of people are gonna be happy. But I really think that this checks a lot of boxes. And it provides a greenway for people, nature, like there's not enough nature for us to enjoy around Nashville without driving an hour out. So this brings it into the community. Um, it, you know, raising Coley Davis Jr. as people have mentioned is a huge plus for the community. and. Overall, I think it is going to be a benefit long-term. So I urge us to think long-term, not short-term, and hopefully we can all see that this is a good decision. Thank you. All right, thank you. Next speaker. <clears throat> thank you for your time tonight. My name is Chris Sudicum. I'm an attorney here in Nashville. I live at 700 Center Point Lane here in town. Uh, and my stepfather was Dr. Jim Fusell. Uh, he was a family dentist in Bellevue his whole career. In 2010, he retired due to medical issues at 62 years old. He's owned the piece of property that's at issue here since the 1980s. I think it was 1982 that he bought this property. The farm has been used for decades as a commercial horse boarding facility. And although he's held the property for 40 years, he always thought that someday the property could be used for some way to help Bellevue and the community as Bellevue continued to grow and develop. Dr. Fusell passed away unexpectedly last year, and my mother inherited the farm. The farm, her homestead, and her Social Security are basically the only assets that she has. Earlier this year, the neighboring Harpeth Crest Homeowners Association filed a lawsuit against the property, even though that homeowners association did not exist when Dr. Fusell bought the farm in the 1980s. When he bought the farm in the 1980s, there was already an easement used to access the property. The homeowners association has filed a lawsuit attacking that easement because they want to delay and obstruct the property from being used to its best potential. And they don't stop there. Their lawsuit also tries to argue that there should be no easement for the property or any right of access to the farm. Even though the easement is noted on the recorded plat and even though people have entered and left the property for decades on a daily basis. Two minutes isn't enough time to tell you how frustrating that is to see these arguments get made. The lawsuit should be seen for what it is, a transparent attempt to manufacture the appearance of confusion about the property. The lawsuit is meritless multiple attorneys, including the legal staff of the city oh, of Nashville. So we have to stop you at the two minutes. Have agreed, okay. my mother will prevail. Thank you. Mr. President.
President, members of the council, my name is Sean Henry, 500 11th Avenue North. Uh, you hear infrastructure from this microphone as the battle cry throughout Nashville from neighborhoods all over the county. Constantly, infrastructure, infrastructure. This project at $12 million is enabling you to not amend the capital improvements budget by adding $12 million for public parks and for street work. The private developer, my client, is, is, is performing that. So we're going to have a new public road in Coley Davis, raising it out of the floodplain, new, a new park, new greenways. Uh, and if you don't know where this property is, and it's hard to know where this property is, as soon as you pull on onto Coley Davis Road, you've got a five-story Hampton Inn on your right. You've got a WeGo Park and Ride on your right. You've got soccer fields, fields on your left. And a little bit around the bend, you, you're going to turn left across a brand new bridge to access this property because currently it's not accessible but for Morton Mill Road. You're going to hear opponents arguing that the easement that there, that's there now uh, is not legal. Right now, it's an unrestricted access to this property, to this farm. This project turns that into a secondary emergency access only. That'll have your traditional lockbox on it for the fire department to use only in the event there's an emergency. Uh, so you would think they would appreciate that. But when it comes right down to it, they don't want renters. They don't want renters off of Coley Davis Road at the terminus of Morton Mill Road. That's really what's the under, underlying uh, common denominator here. The question for you all on any preliminary SP, and that's, that's what you all consider, is whether the project is feasible. Your, your professional staff, NDOT, all of the departments and agencies that have reviewed this find this project feasible. Of course it's subject to final construction drawings that will come at a later date when the final site plan is submitted. The neighbors want that now. That's premature. Once this council decides whether zoning is appropriate, my client is free to spend a heck of a lot more money in drawing up those, those plans. Uh, we support Amendment 1, very thoughtful of Councilman Rosenberg to generate that. Amendment 2, however, is a deal killer. We ask that you disapprove Amendment 2. Thank you. Fine. Uh, by the way, I'm sorry, Mr. I have a document to file for the record. Fine. That's fine. Thanks, sir. Uh, next speaker. Uh, Austin Ethcock, uh, 106 North H Street. Uh, I'll be quick because I can't, uh, I support everything the attorneys and the civil engineers and you've had a lot of people speak here. Um, so I'm a broker for this for this property. We, we took this on three plus years ago and it's been, it was you know quite a journey <laughs> through the entire process. Um, in short, this is the most logical location um, that apartments made sense in this area uh, for all the reasons that everyone has said. Um, we also, you know, ensured that there were no easements whenever we were working through this process uh, three years ago. So it's interesting that it's, it's come up recently. Um, through the marketing process, uh, we had several clients across the country. We had several local uh, developers that wanted to pursue this property. And out of everyone, we we chose Cypress Brook because their their diligence, their ability, their experience, um, and just overall capability to to complete this project. Um, so. Lastly, just want to say, as just a resident of Nashville, I think it's pretty impressive what they're doing um, with this project um, by connecting the the, uh, the Greenway. So just thanks for your time. See you. All right. Thank you. All right. Anybody else wishing to speak in favor? Anybody else in favor? All right. Um, folks who want to speak in opposition, if you would come on and line up. Um, and don't wait. If you are interested in speaking in opposition, go ahead and line up. And um, I need your name, address, and then you'll have two minutes. Hi, my name is Donna Wood. I live at 382 White Oak Lane in the Meadows, which is right off the Coley Davis Road. Coley Davis Road in Bellevue is a one inlet, one outlet road uh, that connects to Highway 70. We have approximately 3,500 residents that use this road daily with 12 very busy soccer fields. 350 of those residents are our Lake Shores Meadows independent and assisted living community. In 2022, from the OEM, Office of Emergency Management, we had 285 emergency calls that were made on and off of Coley Davis Road. So to summarize, for this development... Oh. Oh.
Sorry, no, you can keep going. Okay, for this development, it's gonna take five to six years of construction on Coley Davis Road with delays of emergency care for 350 able and disabled seniors. But number one, creating a third temporary lane on Coley Davis Road, 12 to 18 months. Number two, current two lanes lifted one at a time on Coley Davis Road, 18 to 24 months. Building a 500 foot bridge off of Coley Davis Road, 18 to 24 months. Building 417 apartment complex, using the bridge from Coley Davis, 24 months. We will have congested traffic on Coley Davis Road for five to six years. This is unacceptable to our 350 seniors that require immediate emergency care in the Lakeshore's Meadow Senior Communities. Just because a developer promised two lanes does not mean the traffic on construction will be a passage allowed 724. As I stated, we now have a five to seven minute response time with strokes, heart attacks, and time is our enemy for these critical issues. As Coley Davis Road is one inlet, one outlet road that will hinder emergency care to our seniors. Ask yourself, would you put your mother, father, grandparents in a place where you know for sure the emergency care is gonna be delayed up to 30 minutes with a heart attack or a stroke? Currently we have nine to 10,000 apartments in the 37221 zip code with over 1,000 1, current vacant. So another affordable is not, apartments are not needed. All right, thank you, Ms. Wood. Next speaker. Hi, I'm Mandy Marshall. I live on 929 Glen Ridge Lane, which is in Bellevue, and I wanted to sort of change the tone a little bit. I see some of you all chatting and laughing and so forth and so on, but this is really serious stuff. Uh, I know that you hear a lot about density and hear a lot about money and hear a lot about all that everything body's going to do for everybody, and et cetera. And you also hear about the, how traumatized we are by the 210 flood. I didn't even live there in 210. I lived in West Mead. I lived there 2022, no, 21, I'm sorry, when we did have a flood and all the roads were cut off, even the emergency road. So if you talk about the floodplain and all that other stuff and the trauma of 2010 flood, that is bogus, you all. You all are hearing things that are bogus. You really need to be paying attention because this is not a whole bunch of old folks that just don't want, I believe, that are afraid of renters. I'm not afraid of renters, and I encouraged you all one time when I spoke to you to drive around Bellevue. We have nothing but renters. We are not a huge community that has a lot of huge houses on it. We have renters everywhere, all along everywhere. Um, we, and then you're building, they're building this huge complex that is, that is gonna be on stilts because of a little worry about malt water there. Think about that. Um, and that um, it is gonna have an emergency exit to it because Coley Davis is so tiny, y'all. It's a tiny road. You just have to drive down it, which I encouraged you to do if you really wanna see what we're talking about. It's a tiny road. I don't live on Coley Davis. I never go down Coley Davis except to drive down and show people when they wanna know how controversial it is. And I see you smiling again. This is not funny for us. This is not a high density issue that is thrown about over and over and over again in this town. Y'all, this is not high density. We're not afraid of renters. I'm not afraid of renters. I used to be one when I was a college and, a, and first getting into business. It is not that, but it is the building a large one bedroom on a tiny little road that floods. Simple. All right, thank you. Next speaker, name, address, two minutes. Mr. Vice Mayor and Council Members, my name is Carol Childress, <clears throat> and I live at 307 White Oak Lane in the independent housing of uh, Lakeshore on Coley Davis. I'm here to tell you that this development is not appropriate for Bellevue. It's not appropriate to be funneled onto Coley Davis Road. It's not, it does not fit, and it needs to be placed elsewhere. It is not compatible with the, commun with the Bellevue community plan. In fact, it works in opposition in regard to density, which is increased in density of 2,000%. The height and the size of the buildings, it will be the tallest and the largest buildings in Bellevue. Um, 
of any infrastructure in Bellevue. Um, these, it will be seven buildings that are clustered together on just a section of this property that is not in the floodplain. It needs to be rezoned. And with all of these dramatic changes, it is required that the residents impacted by this development would have an in-person in meeting with the planning staff, which should have been done before this was even presented to the planning commissioners, but we did not have an opportunity to do that in District 22 nor District 35. The rezoning to T3 requires that there be multiple routes or outlets. Now the bridge over the Harpeth River connecting to Coley Davis was mentioned as early as 2010. So we can consider Coley Davis for one outlet. But the only other possible route is a gravel one lane road that extends from the end of the Morton Mill Road and goes down towards the CSX railroad tracks. There are two turns that needs to be made. It has and still serves as a driveway for the residents that have lived on the farm and those that are still living on the farm. It is not intended for general public public use and it's not appropriate for general public use. We were first told that the construction, all the construction and traffic of building the bridge would be coming from the Morton Mill side. Then we were told that emergency cars for the Arizzi residents would come across the tracks by way of a gate, a gate with a code. Can I finish one more sentence? You can finish one more sentence. Now we're told that the only time that these emergency vehicles will be able to use that entrance off of Martin Mill Road is if Coley Davis is impassable. That's not both and, that's either or. So this is going to be rezoned I think with three sentences. one outlet. <laughs> Thank you. Uh -huh. Thank you Thank for you. your attention. <laughs> Good evening, members of the council. Jason Holloman, 4210 Park Avenue. And I'm here tonight on behalf of the Harpeth Crest HOA. Um, you heard reference earlier tonight to a lawsuit that was filed. Uh, that is my lawsuit I filed on behalf of the HOA. And the reason that I did that is because there is dispute about whether or not uh, a driveway that crosses the HOA's property is or is not usable by this developer as a significant ingress and egress as part of this project. And I just want to call your attention that there's a yellow uh, envelope on your desk. Uh, you will see that when we filed this lawsuit, the court did not find it meritless. In fact, uh, immediately there was a motion for dismissal of our action, and the court ruled against that, found that our action was viable, and we are continuing in discovery, but we believe that not only uh, is this overburdening of an easement, but in fact, we believe it's a license uh, that, it, that my clients can simply deny the use of this property entirely, and so if that is the case and we are correct, um, then obviously that significantly changes the scope and usability of this property, and for that reason, I would encourage you to hold on this rezoning and changing the zoning rights on this property unless and until it is established that this ingress and egress that they want to utilize is in fact available to them. And we believe it's not available to them and initially the court has found merit in our action and we are continuing with that litigation that I expect will conclude in the next few months. And at that point, it may be appropriate once we know the answer to that question to proceed, uh, but we don't believe that's going to be the case and for that reason I ask for you to defer or vote no tonight. Thank you. All right, thank you. Good evening, Vice Mayor and Council Members. My name is Paige Coy. I'm at 8445 Marymount Drive in Newsom Station in Bellevue. And I just want to reiterate not only what Jim just said about the easement, but we have no data supporting that CSX says this plan is feasible. Furthermore, like a woman a few people ahead of me said, this does go against the Bellevue community plan. The Greenway doesn't have the easement. The problem is you saw the tremendous line of folks that stood up in support of this plan, one, one of them was from Bellevue. The rest, half of them aren't even from the state, let alone will they suffer the impacts from potential flooding or safety concerns. There's 
real concern here for me as to why the developers bundled the raising of Coley Davis Road and the Greenway into this development. And it's because y'all simply wouldn't consider it otherwise. In fact, at one of the meeting planning commission meetings, um, Commissioner Henry, is it Henley, said, can we reverse this zoning approval if the development doesn't go through? Y'all, that's a red flag that even the Harpeth Conservancy says this needs to remain as it is. Please hear the constituents that are in this district that's being affected or the two districts that are being affected and either defer or vote no on this tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, I'm Carol Casas, 308 Harpeth View Circle in Bellevue. Um, I'd like to begin by thanking Councilwoman Sharon Hurt, who took the time to write a personal response to my concerns about the environment of this project. The developer has said that they're going to be doing something for us by extending the greenway and by adding parks and that it's not going to be any cost to the city but they're not taking into consideration maintenance of the Greenway and maintenance of the park. And I walk that area every single day up to Martin Mill, Morton Mill Road where the um, farm is all the way down to the other end, um, nearly to Innsworth School. And right now, the fence that separates the golf course, Sam Sneed Golf Course, from the walkway is down. It goes down every year, and when I call um, the Metro Parks Maintenance Department, they tell me we are short staffed. We don't have the staff to take care of um, everything. And Sharon Hurt was kind enough to say that Metro Council has thankfully approved an increase in budget for Metro Parks, but there is no guarantee that any of it is going to maintenance. So I really don't think we're ready to have all this extra park space until we can actually take care of it. I go through there myself, as do many volunteers, picking up beer bottles, Sprite bottles, things that can end up in the river, condoms even are out there. It's really, really disgusting, dog, dog poop bo bo um, bags. So until we can get that up, I don't know what we're gonna do. And um, the person who came around surveying everybody, this young lady here with the brunette hair came to my door and I told her that I was against the project when the survey came around. So I don't know where all that data is that's, you know, could be added in about people that are against the project. Um, my voice is, is um, stuttering because I'm nervous, but it's a very important um, issue to all of us in Bellevue. So if you would put down your phone, ma'am, and listen to us, I'd be grateful. <clears throat> all right, uh, name address, uh, two minutes. My name is uh, Ron Nave. I live at uh, 7345 River Bend Road in Nashville, not, not Texas, Bellevue, Bellevue. Uh, in Bellevue. Uh, I've you know, been sitting here five hours. I've seen you approve bill after bill after bill in favor of density. Now, why would you not do this one? Why would you vote against this or defer this? Maybe because it's different, because it's dangerous. Why is it dangerous? I want to reiterate some of the things that people have said here before, um, uh, especially members of the Lakeshore uh, Assisted Living Community. Coley Davis Road is a two-lane road that cannot be widened. That's a fact. That's a given. No matter what the, the developer would do or any planning, you cannot widen that road. It's a two-lane road. And... Uh, by Dave Rosenberg's own numbers, the, congest the congestion will increase 56% on a weekday. So, consider this scenario. You are 80 years old, which we're all going to be one day. You're living in the assisted living facility, and you have a heart attack or a, or a stroke. And, and you're sitting there waiting for the emergency vehicle to come. And this project is going to increase the density by so much uh, that puts your life in an increased danger. Um, you don't want to have that on your hands. You don't want to uh, be responsible for somebody 
you know, not recovering from a stroke because uh, this huge project is coming to this neighborhood, increasing the, the, the congestion by such a huge number. So I ask you to not throw these people under the bus. Please, you know, help these people and disapprove this project. Thank you. Uh, next speaker. Hello, uh, Kathleen Gewalt, 318 White Oak Lane. Thank you for being here. Thank you for your time and your concern. I moved to Tennessee seven years ago, and uh, it's just a lovely place to be. If I had wanted to move to Texas, I would have moved to Texas. But it seems like Texas is now telling you how to run Tennessee. And Texas seems to have a challenge with their border where there's been up to six million people coming over their border and they don't seem to know what to do about it. So why don't they tell us how to run Tennessee? Please don't let them do that. The big problem with this project, and they've offered you all kinds of shiny toys, and I like shiny toys too, but the fatal flaw is it's a potential death trap. There's only one road going in. There's no other exit. Everybody has got to get out the same road if there's an emergency. One of the things about the times we live in is that we live in a time of unprecedented events. If somebody had said in 2015, hey, the whole world's going to shut down with the virus, we've all gone, yeah, fine, go away, go color. <laughs> but it did. And there's lots of unprecedented events happening. And the fact that they're, they're, you're making nice plans and you're trying to care for us. But if there's a fire, if there's a terror attack, if there's a railroad derailment, because I've got a railroad growing right by my back door, we don't have any way of getting out safely. This isn't just you know somebody having a stroke. This is this whole population not being able to get out of there, including the firemen. There was an incident in Colorado years ago where a bunch of firemen died. There was an incident in uh, California, Paradise, California. Anybody remember that? 81 people burned to death because they had limited the number of, of access routes getting in and out of the city. You're, you're making a potential death trap. Please, um, I know you, you care very much about your city and your state, and again, you're offering all these shiny toys. Please remember, it's a shiny toy with a death trap. Bye. All right, thank you. Uh, good evening, my name's Nathan Kennedy. I live at 1001 Morton Mill in Bellevue. Uh, Councilman Rosenberg has consistently touted the Greenway expansion as the primary community benefit of this proposal. On multiple occasions, we have asked Councilman Rosenberg to provide records of community requests for Greenway expansion to connect to the Coley Davis area. Councilman Rosenberg has not provided this information, which triggered a public records request for five years of his emails. These records indicate less than 10 instances of any requests for this expansion of the Greenway prior to the Ariza proposal. This community has not asked for this Greenway expansion in the manner that Councilman Rosenberg has alluded to. And in light of Cindy Harrison's comments from Metro Parks, publicly stating in last week's community meeting that Metro Parks is underfunded and understaffed, how can it make sense to further expand this Greenway? The existing Greenway is not adequately maintained today. Furthermore, uh, I'll call your attention to the yellow packet you have. Uh, the council has been provided with the existing recorded plat from 2002, showing the agreed upon design for the Greenway. Nowhere in the plat is there any indication for this greenway to expand anywhere beyond what is shown in the plat today. Additionally, the design actually loops backwards, indicating a clear end to this path. The plat is very specific to all details associated with the greenway design and what can and cannot be constructed. This proposal requires a public taking in violation of a previously agreed plat. Are you concerned about the precedent that this taking sets for future Greenway dedications, particularly in light of the Knight versus Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County court case? Thank you. All right. Thank you. Good evening, Lorelai Samuelson Bergen. I'm at 1063 Morton Mill Road. Um, I am one of the founding members of the Bellevue Strong Group, as well as the president of the Harpeth Crest HOA. The Bellevue Strong Group was formed in relation to our council people not listening to their constituents. It also consisted of Harpeth Conservancy people as well. In July 2022, after many attempts to have our council people listen to us, we, we conducted a petition. Since then, we've received over 1,600 individual household petitions against the Ariza Bellevue development. And in, in addition to that, we also have 300 from the Meadows. 
Uh, now I would like you to, sorry, uh, I do have that for record. I have a summary of that here if you'd like to have that. Thank you. Uh, I'd also like you to refer back to your yellow packet that Nate just uh, referenced. So you just heard from this previous speaker regarding the plat that was specifically designed for the protection of our HOA floodwater retention system. In addition to what is he addressed, the floodwater retention area is also an essential component of the HOA's stormwater drainage system that protects our homes and our families. This stormwater drainage area fills up completely once or twice a year. Yet we have not heard a single word from Metro, the developers, or anyone on how this greenway is to be constructed in such a way to cross over the drain water channel so that it does, this does not pose an additional risk to further flooding. The greenway today currently only goes so far, and this is by design to give enough clearance for this 30-foot wide drainage channel flowing directly into the Harpeth River. This greenway extension could potentially disrupt the flow, and no further studies have been produced even after multiple requests to our council members. You will also see in the yellow packet two provisions of the plat listed. Number 11, the plat shall comply with the requirements ordinance 0941104, the tree ordinance. The limits of the clearance shall be limited to the areas necessary to construct roadways and utilities to serve the site shown on the final plat, as well as number 14. So please refer to those because it's very serious in this plat design. Thank you. All right, thank you. Good evening. My name is Natasha Long. I live at 209 Clady Court in Bellevue. Um, this is not affordable housing. Entry point for a one bedroom starts at $1,668 and high point for a one bedroom at $2,662. Affordable housing is deemed at 30% or less of total income. With that being said, you would have to earn on average $68,000 a year to afford an entry level apartment. The average medium household income in Nashville is $62,000 a year for a household. I doubt any of your homes or your families would like to live in a one bedroom. Entry level is above the medium household income and is not affordable. At the highest point, for a three bedroom at $4,280. In order for that to be considered affordable, you would have to earn around $171,000. You can't have affordable and luxury housing. Those two cannot coexist. Lastly, not sure if you're aware of this article in WKRN News 2 last week, but there is 37,000 apartments currently being built in Nashville. Supply is exceeding the demand so much so that they're offering free rent to existing current renters due to their being, due to the competition. So this talk about we need more housing, we have a surplus, ladies and gentlemen. With that being said, with the apartments not being affordable and there being a lack of demand due to supply, this is bad business and it's also bad for Bellevue. Thank you. Good evening, my name is Michael Riggs. I live on 1042 Morton Mill Road. Uh, on Morton Mill Road, we are always concerned with flooding. I have lived uh, in the residence on Morton Mill for uh, 19 years now. We've seen, uh, we've lived through uh, the 2010 flood. Um, obviously, we lost a lot of homes, as many did uh, there. And what we've seen is a constant, a constant rise in the water with less, less rain. It just it, it's happening. I'm watching it and I have been for a long time. So to think that this area that they're looking to build in won't flood, it's very surprising to me. I'm not sure how that, how that, that can be calculated. I also think that raising it up, raising it up on stilts, raising up Coley Davis, the water's got to go somewhere. Um, and it's just going to make things even worse for the current residents who are there. We really feel that way. Um, I would also say, you know, again, I, I live in Bellevue, um, and it, it's, I think, 
People need to listen to what those who will be affected are asking for. We do not want this. We do not want this and you know, we just don't understand why the need to pass something that's going to negatively affect uh, the people who it will affect, and that is us. So I ask you to vote no, and thank you. All right, thank you. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission. My name is Jesse Joseph. I reside at 1072 Morton Mill Road. <clears throat> Given that the planning commission for the entirety of metropolitan government has stated twice, first in 2015 and again in 2017 within the Nashville Next Community Plan, that the policy for this parcel, which is map 141, parcel number 17, was and remains T2 rural maintenance, meaning that the entire parcel should be intended to maintain rural character as a permanent choice for living within Davidson County. The intent of the community plan in this regard was that higher density zoning or development is not to be expanded. However, the developer here seeks to place a 417 unit higher density development on this rural parcel with the maximum gross density higher than the maximum of, ha of one dwelling unit for two acres, which applies currently to T2 rural maintenance property. It appears that the recommendation of the planning commission staff and the vote of the planning commission to allow this community plan to be amended to change a portion of this parcel to T3 suburban neighborhood evolving is inconsistent with the Nashville Next Plan and with the current rural character of the parcel and may constitute impermissible spot zoning. Given that the Planning Commission has voted and this council has before it legislation to single out this small portion of parcel 17 for a use classification totally different from that of most of the larger parcel itself for the sole benefit of the developer and the new property owner and Metro government given the free Greenway extension, the free bridge from Coley Davis and the donation of rural acreage to Metro for green space. We ask that you vote this proposal down. Thank you. All right, thank you. Good evening, council members. My name is Doug Jayner. I live at 8495 Poplar Creek Road in Bellevue. I wanna thank the 17 individuals that spoke in favor of the project that don't live in Belleville for showing me that I probably need to spend more time sticking my nose into zoning matters in communities that I don't live in. <laughs> Vice Mayor Shulman, I think it's important to recognize for the record that project consultant Alan Thompson and his firm, engineering firm Reagan Smith are campaign contributors to Councilman Dave Rosenberg. And while, oh. while, um, and while these are not illegal, they should be disclosed. I think for full disclosure, they should be disclosed. Now I'm gonna read you a quick paragraph real quickly out of the current Nashville Next community plan. Through the experience of the 2010 flood and other flooding events, Nashville has learned the value of preserving woodlands, steep slopes, floodways, floodplains, and natural wetland areas. Preservation of these areas aids absorption of the excess water, protects and improves improves water quality, provides habitat, and provides natural areas. Nashville places restrictions on building in the floodway and floodplain and has come to value the use of land adjacent to the community's waterway for parkland and natural habitat. If you vote to approve this project tonight, you're evidencing the fact that we have learned nothing from the 2010 flood. If you vote to approve this tonight, you will display that important guidelines in our community plan can be easily bought out by developer bribes. If you're not familiar with this parcel of property, I plead with you, please don't vote in, in favor of this. This is a wetland, this is a flood area. This project sits on a peninsula surrounded by a flood zone surrounded by the Harpeth River. I don't know how much more you need to think about that uh, than that right there. So again, I ask you to please consider this very seriously. Thank you. Next speaker. Name, address, two minutes. Hi, my name is Suzanne Lanier, and I live at 983 Todd Priest Drive in Bellevue and have for 40 years. Before we start, I wanna make sure everybody understands there was an allusion to meetings being held in Yakety Yak about this project. There was one 
face-to-face -face meeting held by our council member, none by the planning department. And the one that was held was after y'all, the first, y'all y'all already passed the first thing. So I just wanna make sure you understand. Who is in charge here? Who's, who's in charge of planning and approving how Nashville develops? You, who represent constituents, who represent Nashvilleans, who represent working people, or those people who have money, power, and connections? Is it okay for everybody to sneak around the standard processes of planning and zoning and community participation to push through what they want? Or is it just those people? You know, the ones with money and power and connections. It sounds a lot like George Orwell's quote, all animals are equal, but some are more equal than others. Are they really more equal than the rest of us? Those who have gold really get to make the rules? One of you said in a recent interview, neighborhood concerns are minimized. We've lost those perspectives. In deals that y'all have considered in the past, you asked for protection for working people, for real clarity and transparency, and the chance to be involved early in the process. So here we are. Who's in charge here? You or them? Right, thank you. Hi, my name is Mirabel Stoder. I live at 980 Todd Priest Drive uh, in uh, River Plantation, Section 4, right across the river, stones throw away from where this new development will be. Now, I don't have a lot of statistics, and you've heard plenty of uh, uh, information from a lot of people, but the one thing I'm going to stand here and ask is if you can't vote against this development, please defer it until you have it, had a chance to look at all the evidence that has been presented. I have not had my door knocked. I haven't heard a single thing uh, about, uh, I haven't been asked my opinion once about this development. So please, when you get the statistics that so many doors have been knocked, please make sure that you have the evidence in front of you before you agree to this development. Thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, thank you um, for giving me an occasion to show off my yellow wardrobe. Um, my name is Jim Rossi. I live at 7704 Scenic River Lane. And I just want to make a few points about this. First, the Planning Commission's SP zoning came to you in a manner that's not legally valid. It's seriously problematic from a legal perspective. Um, uh, to begin, uh, the MPC policy change that was voted on a couple weeks ago was premised on an as yet proposed, as yet adopted supplemental policy. We don't even know what that supplemental policy is at this point. On top of that, the kind of public engagement that is clearly required by the Metro Planning Commission's rules for a major amendment to Nashville Next did not occur here. Those rules require an in-person meeting in the Bellevue sub area. That did not happen prior to the Planning Commission staff making a recommendation to the commission in favor of this policy change. So to the extent this is not a legally valid recommendation by the Metro uh, 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 Planning Commission, I do not believe that Metro Council can approve this on third reading without the 27 required votes. Second, you've heard from others about how this zoning proposal would cite the largest apartment complex in Bellevue on a landlocked site surrounded by floodplain with just a single point of access. How is that a good idea? Experts don't agree with this. We haven't had a comparative risk study of uh, what this might mean in terms of access points, including a risk study of the raising of Coley Davis Road. No quantitative study of those risks other than reference to the historical uh, flood maps that FEMA uh, uses, the one out of 500 year, as we were told a week ago, the one uh, 
uh, out of 500 year event flood. Uh, that's just not an accurate description of the quantitative risk here. And we need more detail about those things. Uh, in sum, I agree with others that you ought to reject this. If you don't reject it, at least defer it until we can have a more comprehensive quantitative assessment of the risks and the planning associated with this. Thank you. All right, thank you. Renato Antun, uh, 7744 River Bend Way. A lot of people made a, a lot of really good comments about this project, but I think the common theme here is that the people that were in favor of this project did not leave in Bellevue and are not gonna have to, the benefits of this or the negative impacts of this project, the people that actually live in Bellevue and in the area are telling you, we do not want this. The Greenway, the raising of Coley Davis, none of this is worth the 400 units on a very sensitive piece of land. Please oppose this project. Thank you. All right, thank you. Ann Gwynn, 1060 Todd Priest Drive. You just heard that name a few times, didn't you? Um, I've lived in my residence in River Plantation for 40 years, so, so did another woman. Um, it, it, it's been a few years, but I had six feet of water in my house. I don't wanna see that again. It was what, two or three years ago, I lost track during the pandemic, as some of you all might have too, uh, that we were moving furniture upstairs overnight. I'm fortunate I have an upstairs uh, because there was so much water coming up behind my house again. It didn't come in, but I don't wanna see it in ever again. I am not convinced. I know Dave says it's all good. It'll all be fine. Dave will be gone, so it won't matter. But he's gonna protect us, but you'll be gone. Um, I, I, I'm not convinced that those of us who live at the bottom of the hill are not gonna be affected. But I have a different question. It seems to me that those of you in this room have come to us and asked us to vote for you. And some of us, some of you are coming to us again to vote again for you. To do what? To represent us? That's what I thought we were voting for. But if we can't have a community meeting, or we get to have one a week before this meeting, um, after you all have already voted on this, that doesn't feel like representation to me. Are you representing your constituents? Or are you re representing the state of Texas? Are you representing, you know, developers? I don't know who you're representing. But if you want our votes, represent us. Thank you. Good evening, I'm Steve Sosha, 7740 River Bend Way in Bellevue. Been in town since the Carter administration in Bellevue since the mid 80s. Uh, I wanna shed some light on a potentially dangerous situation that really hasn't been discussed and it may be something that comes back to smack uh, the good people of the, of the council uh, later on when if, if something occurs. And it's the, um, it's the issue of creating a potential hazardous homeless encampment, encampment in the park that is adjacent to the proposed Ariza Island. As you know, Nashville is already facing a crisis of homelessness up 11% over last year per the latest pin count. We've seen the scenario play out over several grueling years on the Brookmead Greenway, as well as the ongoing situation in Hermitage and in other areas across the city. The parkland adjoining this site is more than 90% floodplain and, and floods several times each year. I know this because I've lived on the land directly next to it for 24 years, separated by only the railroad tracks. When the river comes up, it comes up fast. And if it can scour rigid fencing from the land, it can imagine what it can do to unaware humans and their belongings. I work in the mental health field and I know the majority of those in such encampments are suffering from significant mental health issues as well as substance abuse. Approving this proposed development will be putting these people directly in harm's way. Nashville has demonstrated that we cannot and will not be able to prevent this from happening once a bridge is erected over the Harpeth River. 
In fact, random homeless campsites started appearing when the pedestrian bridge from the soccer park was erected years ago. At that point, it was all still private property, yet the crime both there and on neighboring properties began to, to, to seep in. I have personally had to call Metro Fire Department on two different occasions to respond to active fires that were intentionally set on the railroad bridge in that location. This is all on the record. If this, can, if this can occur with just a footbridge and a long walk, imagine what will happen when a multimodal bridge is erected a stone's throw from a Wego park and ride. You've got basically an attractive nuisance of such magnitude that it's going to draw homeless populations from near and far and result in death and injury, followed by yet another multi-million dollar cleanup right, effort to, for the city. I need to get you to stop. Yeah, yeah I appreciate thank it. You. Thanks for your attention. All right. Hi, uh, my name is Laura Tosh. I live at 8592 Sawyer Brown Road. My grandparents built their house on Harpeth Valley Road in 1968. They had, my grandfather had to call and ask NES to come and install a power pole so they could have electricity on top of that hill. At the bottom of that hill, my uncle lives. It took him a year to rebuild his house after the 2010 flood. Now, if you know Bellevue, that's exit 196. You take a right immediately off the exit. You take your first right, that's Harpeth Valley. My uncle's house is the first house on the left. A year it took. My mom and I live on Sawyer Brown Road. And we were lucky. We only got four feet of water in our house. It floods a lot in Bellevue. And it floods every time it rains on the soccer fields. I just am coming to you as a native, as someone who was actually born in Vanderbilt and was raised primarily in Bellevue I spent a lot of time at my grandparents' house. So I am Nashville through and through. I'm very proud of my hometown most of the time. Um, I just want y'all to think about that and think about this is our hometown and we really need to be proud of it. Also, my grandparents, my grandfather spent his last days at the Meadows. And yes, that is a very tiny street and people fly up and down it all the time. So please think of my grandparents when you make this decision. Thank you. All right, thank you. Good evening, my name is Sarah Casas and I live at 308 Harbor View Circle in Bellevue. I've been here since 6 p.m. like most of you and the people who have spoke, um, listening to all of you rapidly and repeatedly approve expansion of development in every case. My neighbor asked me to speak today and say that this project is shameful and I ask that you make an exception tonight for the very first time and say no to this development. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Sharon Morrow. I'm 7141 Somerset Farms, which is off of Coley Davis. It's the second neighborhood now that's out there. Um, Coley Davis is not in the 500 year floodplain that they've been telling you. If you look at the flood maps, the 500 plain is below the road. But it floods. So RISA is wanting to build on the non-flood area. But if you take their development over the floodplain maps, it's sort of there. They're in spitting distance of the flood. They're going to be in the middle of it and surrounded by it when it floods. Now, if you take the ERISA development and overlay it over the 500-year flood picture that I sent you several weeks ago, it is in the flooded areas. So do you want to vote for something that is 
potentially a risk because they're going to be flooded unless they do massive land development to bring their land up out of the floodplain so that they're not flooded. It'll change the course of the river and the flood areas around it and thus cause more flooding on downstream and upstream probably too. We don't want to do that. In the last week or two, there was a thing on Face the Nation where they were talking about people were now with the extreme climate changes and larger cities and their immense growth and the fact that government agencies are using flawed flood planes to make decisions. All right, thank you. Good evening, Carson Smart, 7469 Old Charlotte Pike. Uh, when looking at the National Next Plan, it would be one thing uh, if the access along the I-40 corridor were completely full and developed, and other crucial areas that are wanting to be developed by 2040 were already full. But the fact that these areas still have a lot of growth potential, it is inappropriate to disturb areas along a river adjacent to a conservation land. This proposed development contradicts the overall plan uh, although there is a need for more housing, the amount of density development change in ignoring to the constituents is not appropriate and should not be approved, uh, let alone, excuse me, let alone there is, there is no density, uh, there is no amount of density to this size along the Harpeth River anywhere. Uh, this is a slippery slope and should not be considered or tolerated. If you give them an inch, they're gonna take a mile. Plus, if we were somehow gonna ignore all the evidence that is against this proposal, shouldn't we try to work within our state, state's economy and have a local developer? I don't think that this is respectful or appropriate to let someone from out of the area come in and change the life of an entire community in a negative way just to get benefits and rewards from the taxpayers and city. Lastly, this area where the bridge over the Harpeth is being proposed has a conservation overlay and is off limits to development and should not be disturbed or tampered with whatsoever unless it is for all of the community to, to enjoy. Also, when looking at the National Next, I want to read uh, a quote. It says, uh, there are also areas of endangered and rare flowering plants for the safety of those areas, the species information and information about these areas is maintained by the Tennessee Department of Environmental and Conservation. Due to their sensitivity and nature, the location of these areas is confidential. We've not even had any survey. No one from the state, no one from the uh, you know ecological area, no one from parks statewide has given any look at this and has not approved this whatsoever. Uh, this is also the reason I'm running for uh, the district council for 35 right. due to this project. All thank right, you. Thank you. Yes, sir. My name is Rex Roberts. I live at 300 White Oak Lane in the Meadows. And uh, most of everything I was going to say tonight has already been said by my neighbors. Um, I will tell you one story. One of my closest friends at the Meadows, and the average age of our community is probably around 85 or so. One of my closest friends had a bad case of pneumonia. The, his wife called the ambulance it came out and told him that if they had been there 15 minutes later, he would be dead. If we build this construction for this project or two years in raising the road and building the bridge with huge trucks bearing equipment cranes, whatever, and also uh, bringing all the pylons and whatever you need to raise the road, that's gonna cause 
trucks to be, for some period of time, huge semis on Coley Davis, a two-lane road. With traffic coming from both ways, you're going to have a congestion at times. And if it's at a time when one of those ambulances comes and they can't get through, if they're delayed for 15 minutes, some of my neighbors will be dead. And I don't want that. And I hope you will turn this down. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good morning. Not quite. Uh, good evening. Uh, I'm Devin Schultz, 7348 River Bend Road. Just a quick housekeeping thing. The meeting with respect to uh, Councilman Rosenberg's first in-person meeting was one week ago today at the behest of Councilman Hauser. Gloria, I'm sorry about this. Councilman Hauser, I'm sorry about this. But Councilman Hauser told me that Dave was very upset with her for even organizing that meeting. Sorry. Um, <clears throat> do you believe in climate change? whether man-made or naturally occurring, do you believe that the climate is changing? I had the good pleasure to work as in-house counsel for a Nashville-based barge company for six and a half years. I have seen flood impacts, I've seen flooding, I have seen, seen flood impact studies. You know which one I have not seen? I haven't seen this one, and neither have you. Brian Ralston admitted today they're dra they are only in a draft form. They do not have a final impact study yet. The study that they have uses a 100-year FEMA floodplain. The FEMA, the FEMA flood maps uh, do, not, uh, do not contemplate a changing environment. I submitted to you in the yellow packet a, uh, a New York Times article that was recently published. I ask that you take the time to consider this project in light of what is in that article. I think it will be in informative. What did we learn from the flood from the flood study that they did do? We learned that there is at least three inches of impact in the 500-year floodplain. Not zero. There's at least three inches of flood impact to the 500-year floodplain, and we know that this doesn't even include all the impervious surfaces that will be there, including the greenway and any parking for that will be part of the parking the the general parking area. So, um, so my time is is coming to an end, but there's a I mentioned I worked on the river. There's, there's a saying that the towboat captains and the deckhands use, and that is, the river don't care. Man goes overboard, river don't care. You know what else doesn't care? Floodwaters don't care. And we may not want this project to create a flood hazard. The river don't care. Thank you. Thank you. All right, anybody else wishing to be heard on this one? Okay. Declare the public hearing closed. Uh, Councilman Rosenberg. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I'd like to move approval and then explain. All right, so Councilman Rosenberg is moving approval of BL 2023 1968 and 1969 for pass on second reading uh, properly. Second it back to you. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Um, I appreciate everybody coming out tonight uh, to speak on this. I think that there are a lot of good faith concerns being expressed. Um, I'd be glad to speak to any of them specifically as they come up. Um, I think there's been a pretty uh, substantial uh, fear and smear campaign that has um, caused a lot of the concerns. I'll only speak to flooding before I turn on to the good of the project. This project is well above the level of pretty much, well, a large number of the neighborhoods in Bellevue. Um, Bellevue was an archipelago in 2010, and the next time a flood like that happens, it'll be the same. Uh, the exception is this time, the residents of Coley Davis Road won't be cut off from the rest of the world because of this project. The hydraulic assessment that was uh, referenced earlier says that there could be up to a three inch change in the 500 year flood plan, and that three inch change will only uh, exist on this site. That means once you get downstream past the site, that impact is gone. That means that no homes would be affected by the construction of this. In fact, that three inches is only due to the Coley Davis Road raising. Uh, the, the actual on-site project has zero impact whatsoever. Um, so what we're gonna see here is the finishing of a portion of the Greenway 
uh, that's been long requested in Bellevue, uh, bringing it across the railroad tracks that bisect Bellevue to the soccer fields. It will then connect to a new lengthy bridge that will be built at the developer's expense that includes two travel lanes and a protected multimodal path, which will then connect to Coley Davis Road, which will include a multimodal path, protected path from the neighborhoods all the way to the WeGo Park and Ride, and I support that kind of connectivity. Um, between that and the road raising, we're seeing a lot of benefits to this. Now, the question becomes, are these just empty promises or the real thing? And with that, I would like to move Amendment 1, please. All right, we have uh, Amendment Number 1 by Council Member Rosenberg, uh, properly seconded back to you for an explanation of the amendment. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, in addition to the requirements that are in the SP, this codifies, a, well, codifies the promises that have been made by the developer over the last two to three years. It requires the bridge to be built with a 10-foot multi-use path. It requires the greenway from the railroad tracks to the pedestrian bridge to be built prior to the issuance of any building permits for the residences. It requires a separate greenway to be built from the railroad tracks to the 40-acre Metro Parks land to the west to be built prior to the issuance of final permits for the residences. It requires a 10-foot multi-use path with a two-foot foot buffer and vertical delineation on Coley Davis Road, east, eastbound from the bridge to Wego, though it may be narrowed if necessary to make room for a left turn lane, and a multi-use path with a buffer westbound from the bridge to the existing sidewalk at the neighborhoods. It requires a left turn lane into the development that meets NDOT requirements and will ensure no slowdown in emergency traffic or other traffic. It requires two lanes of traffic to be maintained on Coley Davis Road at all times, and it prohibits the issuance of any lane closure permits that would reduce Coley Davis below two travel lanes for any length of time. It limits traffic on Morton Mill prior to the building completion, and I expect to have an amendment on third reading to flesh that out more. And it prohibits construction vehicles, which is defined as any vehicle associated with construction, including workers' personal vehicles, on Morton Mill Road outside of 7.30 to 6.30 Monday through Saturday, and provides a penalty of a two-day stop work order for violating this. And it also requires the installation of speed cushions at developer expense on Morton Mill Road, something that was requested by the HOA uh, two to three years ago as well before this project came up. Um, so I ask for your approval on this important amendment. All right, so uh, Council Member Rosenberg has moved amendment number one, properly seconded discussion on the amendment. Any discussion on the amendment? All right, uh, we are voting on amendment number one. Uh, all those in favor of amendment number one say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Okay, uh, amendment, amendment number one is on the bill. Uh, there's also another amendment. Council Member Hurt. Thank you. I am actually going to ask for a deferral on this amendment. We need to make some changes to the language. Uh, I think it has been a misunderstanding uh, the intent of this because I did talk to council member, I mean to Director Odom in regards to the park and the maintenance of the Greenway and the parks and what commitment we could get in regards to this. I did speak to council member Rosenberg um, in regards to some of the concerns that I did have. I, I really personally want to thank the residents of Bellevue for coming out and staying here. Uh, much of what I learned in terms of, uh, of, of process in this government, I learned from people in Bellevue. I, um, I really, when this first started, I thought about, it was reminding me of something I'd seen before, and it was Fontanelle. I had gotten a telephone call from one of the residents, and, and well, first I was first introduced to this from a lobbyist, and it sounded like it could be a good thing for Bellevue. That was before I knew all of the development that was taking place. And then um, I heard from one of the residents, set up a meeting with Metro Water. We talked about Coley Davis and what we would have to do to prevent the flood because he had said that we were gonna have to raise it in order for it to happen. And he was right. So I'm like, okay, this sounds just like what happened in Fontanelle. 
My whole council body voted in favor of Fontenelle except for me. Two years later, after that zoning change had been made, they sold the property and it was already set for them. So to me, it's all by design. And I'm listening to the residents and the things that they're saying. And I too heard when they indicated that this was a draft and it was incomplete. The hydraulic plan was incomplete. I looked, I heard that someone say that it was admitting it was going to be inconvenient. I think that uh, Councilmember Rosenberg said there were seven requirements and then there were two prohibits. This is a complicated situation here. And I think it is very serious. And I think that we should stand up and at least defer this so much more can be discussed in regards to it. It is also interesting to me that two miles down the road, we approved for a TriStar emergency room for the residents that we know that's gonna be at Lakeshore Meadows and now we're gonna have construction that's gonna prevent them from getting there. So I am in oppose of this and I ask my colleagues to support that opposition. All right. Uh, um, so Council Member Hart, um, so I gotta go back and make sure I know where you are. So you had a, a, a second deferral. amendment. You had amendment Yeah, amendment two, that I asked for deferral. You are not doing, you're not putting the amendment on. Well, not this meeting. Right for this meeting, are you asking for a deferral? I'm asking for a deferral just in case if this does pass, we can go back and correct and get the amendment with the right language and... Yeah, so it's a, are you asking for a deferral of, this whole, a deferral of this whole thing or just of your amendment? Well, I thought that I had to ask for a deferral on the amendment okay. first. No, the amendment can go on. Uh, okay, well, I'm asking for a deferral for the whole thing. Okay, so you are... All right, yeah, your amendment number two can go on on third reading, for that matter, okay? Right. But, but, but I wasn't sure what you were asking for, so you are moving to defer this whole thing. Yes. How long? Two meetings. Two meetings, okay. So the motion is to defer two meetings, all right? So... Well, hold on. Um, so properly seconded. Um, now, discussion on the deferral motion, which you've already done. I'm going to go to Council Member Rosenberg. Council Member Rosenberg, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to move that motion to the table. Okay, so Council Member Rosenberg is moving that to the table. The way that works is that, so there's going to be a, a discussion only between the two parties. Uh, it is between Council Member Rosenberg and Council Member Hurt. Always like to check this just to make sure. My page is missing. I think I pulled it out. It is. It's rule 30. All right, so uh, it's rule 35. A motion to the table may be debated only by the maker of the motion and one proponent of the ordinance resolution. If the motion is to table is directed on motion, which this one is, the motion to table may only be debated by the maker of the motion to table and the maker of the motion against whom the tabling motion is directed. So Councilmember Rosenberg, you go first, um, and then Councilmember Hart. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Um, I'd like to read a letter if I could, please. Dear planning commissioners and staff, I've had the opportunity to review the details of the pro proposed Ariza Bellevue project and would like to encourage Metro planning staff and commissioners to join me in recommending approval of the requested land use change in SP zoning. While city budgets are too strained to meet the demand for all the infrastructure needs throughout the county, we have a developer agreeing to provide several amenities that will enhance the quality of life in Bellevue while creating additional housing options for incoming residents. The opportunity to complete the Greenway connection to the CSX tracks, a much needed amenity to the Bellevue community and beyond is a perfect example of how development can serve the needs of the existing residents. In addition to the Greenway connection, the developers are proposing to donate 20 acres to Metro Parks, which opens numerous opportunities for future programming. The developers will have to build a multimodal public bridge to access this property. This element will activate 51 acres of land recently donated by the Friths. This multimodal bridge is a great example of the connectivity sought in the Metro Nashville Transportation Plan. The Ariza team has conducted multiple outreach efforts, both through community meetings and door-to-door -door discussions to educate residents.
residents on the benefits of the project and answer their questions. The opposition still points to concerns over flooding, traffic, density, and schools as reasons for not supporting ERISA. However, this location is an ideal spot for this type of density precisely because of its proximity to retail and major thoroughfares, which will depend on adequate and sustainable demographics to be successful. The developer must follow all established design regulations and as proposed, meet all requirements for stormwater management and traffic impact. I trust our city's public servants to ensure all these regulations are met before approval. Nashville is growing and will continue to grow. It is critical that the community supports smart growth projects like this that help shape the regions for future generations. Respectfully, Sharon Hurt, council member at large. This deferral motion is pandering and it's an effort to kill the bill and I ask that you table the motion. All right, council member Hart, you're recognized. Thank you, as I said, when I first got this information, I got it from a lobbyist. And when I found out, you know, it's pretty much like when you're going down the road and you realize you're going the wrong way, you turn around and you start going the right way in which it is that you need to do. So I'll be the first to admit when I am wrong or when I've done something and when I was ill-advised and I didn't do what I needed to do. So I thank you, Mr. Councilman, because he's my councilman and he never called me about this Ariza project. And I live in the district, I live one street over from Morton Mill Road. So I, I want to say for them to be willing to do all of the things that is necessary, they've got to be making some money because it's gonna take a lot of money to put up a bridge, raise up the road and do all of those things. But first and foremost, I'm more concerned about those at Lakeshore Meadows. Social services already told us that people are living longer. So we're gonna have one in four people become centenarians. So if we've got that many people, and as someone said, we are going to be them soon ourselves. And they, the life we save may be our very own. So I think we really need to look at this, flush it out, and make absolutely sure that we are doing the right thing because we've done so many things in this chamber that has not been in favor of the people. We've had some policies. We've had good policies, but they've been good policies for government, good policies for developers, and not good policies for our citizens. So I'm just asking us to look at this with some type of compassion for the people that we serve each and every day. I understand the council matter courtesy, but these people have been here since 30, waiting for this meeting to occur. It's always right to do right. And if we don't do it now, then I don't know when. But I know it is always the right time to do the right thing. I ask you all to defer this motion. I didn't ask for you to kill it. I ask for you to defer it. All right, thank you, Council Member. So here's where we are. Um, Council Member Hurt has moved for a two meeting deferral. That's where we were. Council Member Rosenberg has moved that to the table. So we will be on voting on Council Member Rosenberg's tabling motion. So if you are basically against the deferral, then you would vote for Council Member Rosenberg's tabling motion, which basically defeats the deferral motion. If you rather get back on the discussion of a deferral motion, you would vote against the tabling motion. Everybody clear on that? Again, Council Member Rosenberg has moved um, Council Member Hurt's motion to defer to the table. He's trying to table her motion to defer. So if you want to vote, obviously, with Council Member Rosenberg, you would vote aye on the tabling motion. If you're with Council Member Hurt, you would vote against the tabling motion. Okay, everybody clear? Good. Mr. Clark? Yeah, we'll, we'll put it on the board in just a minute. We're on BL 2023-1968. We put one amendment on. Um, 
in the discussions, council member heard, she moved to defer this measure, the whole thing, two meetings. Council member Rosenberg again moved that to the table. And so we're voting on a motion to table. Uh, so if you're with Councilman Rosenberg and you want to defeat, you never want to get to the deferral motion, you would vote to table. If you want to get on the discussion on the deferral, you would vote against the tabling motion. Mr. Clark, you ready? Open up the machines. Close machines, take the vote. Eyes 25, uh, no seven, zero abstentions. Uh, the tabling motion prevails. All right, so uh, the motion to defer is defeated. All right, so now we're back on um, uh, Council Member Rosenberg's motion to um, pass his bill as amended on second reading. Councilman Rosenberg, and then I do have people in the queue. There you go. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, welcome. Any questions about any concerns anybody's ha anybody has? The planning's uh, table, of course, is available for questions too, and I renew my motion to approve. Uh, Councilmember Hauser, you're recognized. Gloria Hauser, 222 Plantation Court, 30 feet from Flat Creek and across the creek from Todd Priest that has been mentioned tonight. I mention that to say that I am a very close to this project as those in the audience. I wish I had a time machine. If I had a time machine, I'd go back to when uh, the Meadows and Lakeshore decided to put vulnerable people at the back end of a one-way one in-out road that frequently flooded. I would ask, the meadows and lake shore are you sure you want to put vulnerable people at the back end of a one way in one way out road that floods but i don't have a time machine i am here today and as a council person one of the things that i need to do is look at the safety of my constituents until we got to the raising of coley davis i was i don't think so we kept talking back and forth as we had community meetings, and yes, we did have community meetings. With the community, we realized that safety was one of their biggest concerns. Until the developer was able to come back with something to help my people on Coley Davis, the con side of the teeter-totter was much heavier than the pro side. When they came back and said they were willing to spend four and a half million dollars to raise Coley Davis so the people that are today blocked off whenever there is a flood, when today the, the emergency vehicles cannot get to them when the road floods, they will now, once this bridge is, uh, excuse me, once the road is raised, be able to have those emergency vehicles get to them, be able to get out and not be stuck when the road floods. So if we are concerned about the safety of the people on Coley Davis, we will vote for this project because there's no way that the city is going to put four and a half million dollars in to raise Coley Davis. And as a council person, one of the things I have to do is be willing to take the, the arrows, be able to take the punches and say, what I need to do and what is most important is to take care of the safety of my people, to not do that would be to ignore my most important role in this. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member. Uh, Council Member Sledge. Thank you. Just a moment of levity. I was going to, uh, it's now Council Member Sepulveda's birthday, so just wanted to wish her a happy birthday. <laughs> Thank you, Council Member. Member O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to welcome Council Member Sepulveda to the old caucus. Um, 
I have had, uh, I, I was following the conversation to some extent, but I think it would help me understand the rezoning request in context if maybe Ms. Milligan uh, could give a, a little bit more of the history and status of the uh, community plan and sort of the interrelation with Nashville next. I think that just based on what we heard in, in public hearing tonight. Thank you. Ms. Milligan. Certainly. So the application um, was two-part. Um, first, an application to amend the community plan um, from T2 to T2 Rural to T3 Neighborhood Evolving. Um, applications to amend community plan are made to the Planning Commission, and those decisions are made by the Planning Commission alone. Um, the Planning Commission recommended approval of the plan amendment to change the policy from T2 rural to T3 neighborhood evolving. And that with that approval, they also included a supplemental policy um, that would include uh, conditions related to um, mobility, greenway connections, um, that they wanted to ensure essentially that those details were codified in the, the plan amendment update. And so the plan, um, was approved to be amended to T3 Neighborhood Evolving with the supplemental policy. Okay, thank you. And, and then I see with this bill um, approved, I'm assuming then that the commission found the rezoning request to be consistent with that updated community plan with the supplemental policy. That's correct. The Planning Commission recommended approval with conditions and disapproval without all conditions of the SP um, following the approval of the plan amendment. And one of the reasons that they included the supplemental policy was because there was concern um, issued, or there was concern that they heard from the community that if you change the, the policy to neighborhood evolving and let's say this project was didn't move forward, then the policy has been changed to neighborhood evolving and what happens if another project comes forward that has similar density but does not include the types of improvements that have been outlined, including greenways, the bridge, um, the connectivity, those those sorts of things. And so they wanted that tied also through a supplemental policy to the actual policy language. So if something happened to this project and there was another project that was um, reviewed in the future that staff would then look at that supplemental policy guidance to ensure that any um, any future plans, if there happened, if this happened to not happen, would be held to those same um, standards. Thank you, thank you, Mr. President. All right, thank you, Council Member. Uh, Council Member Suara. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, first, I wanted to say that Council Member Rosenberg is one of the colleagues that I respect on this body. He's a data guy and he does his own work. And so I wanna push back against some of the conspiracy theories. Uh, there's no truth to that at all. I also wanted to thank Councilmember Rosenberg for bringing the amendments that he did tonight that actually enhances the project. However, I was at the meeting that was held last week in Bellevue, I live in Bellevue as well. And I know that those amendments came out of that meeting that was had because the people were complaining and they had some issues with it and they were able to make some recommendations that led to those amendments. What I think ought to happen and what I would like to see happen is for more conversations to be had because people still said they have some more things and some more changes they would like to see. So with that, I'm gonna move for two meeting defer again to be able to allow that conversation to continue and hopefully that we can have more additions or more amendments that could make it better. So, Council Member, we've already had a motion to defer two meetings. So, um, Okay, I'll, I'll move to defer one. We're, we're double checking. This comes up every so often. I'm not sure if you can do that. Yeah, let's see. <laughs> because it's more specific. Okay. Thank you. Day 13, okay. First meeting in August. All right, so we're gonna allow, based upon discussions with legal counsel, a motion to defer one meeting. Okay. Okay, so I've got a motion to defer one meeting, properly seconded. Uh, I'll go back to Council Member Rosenberg. 
Thank you, Mr. President. Move to table. All right, so Councilmember Rosenberg is moving that to the table, so we go through the same scenario we went before. Uh, Councilmember Rosenberg would go first. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, to be clear, this amendment was prepared or was in the process of being prepared long before that meeting last week. These were the commitments that have been made throughout the process. Um, at this point, the, the conversations have not continued in a productive direction. At this point, I think everybody who has suggestions has made their suggestions. Those who are opposed to the project are opposed to the project, and we've landed on something really good. We can continue to bring amendments on third reading, and I intend to do that. Um, so there's no need for a deferral. So I ask for you to support the tabling motion. Thank you. Okay. Councilmember Sora. Uh, thank you, colleagues. I think what we always talk about is the opportunity to give constituents the opportunity to be engaged and to be part of the conversation. I saw that happen last week. I see a lot of people come out and speak about this. And I always feel like even if we think something is the best idea, what is the risk in allowing people to always have their say? People claim that we don't listen to them, we don't want to do what they say. At least let the people have their say. I saw in the meeting that I went to, concerns that were raised, and I saw suggestions that were made, and even though it's been discussed, the people felt like part of the conversation was what led to the amendments that we had to uh, vote on today. And so if there are more concerns and there's more things to be done, let the people have that. What is the rush uh, uh, in, in going ahead with it if we can make it any better? So with that, I'm going to say, let's give the people the voice to still look at it, to still voice the opinion, and. If we come back in a week and it's still good and it's still the best idea, then we vote for it. But I always just felt like we owe the people the responsibility to, to listen to them and to continue to listen. That's our job. I mean, I, everybody that came tonight had something to say, and they continue to say that. And so if I did not see anything come out of that meeting, maybe I wouldn't be saying this. But I sat there and listened, and I saw what happened. And so based on that, I hope that we will allow the folks to still be able to put in their suggestion. I hope that uh, we'll, we'll vote for the deferral. Thank you. All right, so same analysis from before. Um, Councilmember Sawara has moved to defer uh, this measure one meeting. Uh, Councilmember Rosenberg moved that to the table, so we we will be voting on the tabling motion. So again, if you want to consider Councilmember Sawara's um, deferral motion, you would vote against the tabling motion. If you don't want to consider the deferral motion, you would vote with Councilmember Rosenberg on the tabling motion. All right, so um, going to the clerk. You ready? Uh, we are voting again. Uh, Councilmember uh, Rosenberg's motion to table the deferral motion. If, if you're with Councilmember Rosenberg, you would vote aye. If you're against, you'd vote no. Mr. Clerk, open up the machines. All right, Mr. Clark, close the machines, take the vote. Eyes 25, uh, no seven, zero abstentions. Um, the uh, tabling motion prevails, okay. All right, so again, um, okay, we're back to the queue. Uh, it is uh, Council Member Swope, you're recognized. Previous question. All right, so Council Member Swope has called the previous question. So uh, we're voting on the previous question, not on the bill at this point on second reading, just the previous question. Uh, if you're ready to vote, uh, then you vote obviously on the previous question. All those in favor of the previous question say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. no. Previous question prevails. Um, so we are on, um, we are on the bill on second reading. We'll try it. Um, we'll try it on voice vote. Well, we'll try it voice vote. So we're we're voting on Councilmember Rosenberg's motion to approve BL 2023-1968 as amended, and BL 2023-1969 for passage on second reading. Remember, they require three readings. All right. All those in favor of those bills for passage on second reading, say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. I've got one no and one no. Any other no's? Councilmember Druffle. I've got people voting no in the audience. Okay, so, um, all right.
right, so, so uh, three no's, all right. All right, so um, the bill, uh, bill uh, BL 2023, 1968, as amended, passes on second reading, and BL 2023, 1969, passes on second reading. We now move on to item number 76, BL 2023, 1970, by Council Member Van Rees. Ordinance to amend Title 17 by change from RS-10 to SP zoning for property located at 212 Sunset Drive, approximately 820 feet east of Dickerson Pike. Council Member Van Rees, you're recognized. Uh, yes, if we could open the public hearing, please. Okay, so um, give it just a second so I can see back there. Or at least I can clean my glasses. So we are on um, BL 2023-1970. Uh, the public hearing is open. Could I see a show of hands of those in the audience that are for that particular ordinance? We're on 1970. Show of hands, who, whoever's in the back who is in favor of 1970, a show of hands. Show of hands of those who are in opposition to 1970. All right, uh, don't see, I see people waving, but I don't see anybody <laughs> waving about this. Uh, declare the public hearing closed. Council Member Van Rees, you recognized all uh, Yeah, this, this is particularly harmless, but it means a lot to the people who are doing it, so I move approval. Okay, Council Member Van Rees has moved approval of Bill 2023-1970 for passage on second reading, properly seconded. Any discussion on the bill? Seeing none, all those in favor of 1970 for pass on second reading, say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. This one passes on second reading. We're on BL 2023-1971 by Council Member Roten. We can take it with item 78, 1972. Uh, this is an ordinance to amend Title 17 by changing from R10 to SP zoning for property located at Bell Road, unnumbered at the intersection of Old Hickory Boulevard and Bell Road. Um, and the companion bill, which is an ordinance to authorize building material restrictions requirements for BL 2023-1971. Proposed ordinance requires certain materials to restrict in the construction of buildings. Councilmember Roten, you're recognized on those two bills. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Moved up to the public hearing. Okay, declare the public hearing open. A show of hands of those who are here in favor of 1971 and 1972. Thank you. Show of hands of those who are here in opposition to 1971 and 1972. Don't see anybody in opposition. Those in favor wish to speak. Nope. Declare the public hearing closed. Councilman Roden, you're recognized. Move approval. Move approval of 1971 and 1972 for passes on second reading, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of 1971 and 1972 for pass on second reading, say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. You adopt. Um, BL 2023 1973 by Council Member Hall. That's item 79. Ordinance to amend Title 17 by applying a contextual overlay district to various properties located north of West Hamilton Road and east of Meadow Road. Council Member Hall, uh, this is a disapproved bill. You're recognized on the bill. Planning. Planning. Um, Ms. Milligan, this is a disapproved bill. We need to see some slides. This is a request to apply a contextual overlay district um, to the properties that are outlined in red. It's located south of Kings Lane and west of Meadow Road, approximately 100 acres. Uh, Planning Commission recommendation is was to disapprove. Uh, the existing zoning of the property is RS-15 single-family residential. The proposed zoning would be a contextual overlay. The area included in the overlay, in the proposed overlay, includes properties located south of Kings Lane, east of Drake's Branch Road, north of West Hamilton Road, up to Cedar Circle. The properties are included in the Creekwood subdivision and have developed primarily with single-story split level and two-story homes. The contextual overlay, as a reminder, uh, provides appropriate design standards, including those related to setbacks, building heights, lot coverage, access garages, and parking. The standards are based on the um, surrounding and existing homes. The land use policy for the area is primarily T3 suburban neighborhood maintenance um, with areas of conservation reflective, uh, reflective of um, flood, flood zone. Um, the land use policy of neighborhood maintenance generally supports application of a contextual overlay. The Planning Commission recommended disapproval um, uh, with indicating concerns of um, lack of community support. Additionally, um, they did, however, recognize that application of a contextual overlay may be appropriate in this area. And I did want to note that this application, along with the previous, um, because of the timing of when the bills had been filed um, and when the public hearing was scheduled, the Planning Commission 
um, their only opportunity to make a recommendation was at the June 22nd meeting when these were heard. So in other words, they couldn't defer it based on the timing of when the bill had been filed. And so, so in order for them to make a recommendation, they had to do it at that meeting. Okay, all right, thank you. All right, so we're back to um, Council Member Hall. Uh, you're on your bill, Bill 2023-1973. I'd like to open the public hearing, please. Okay, declare the public hearing open. A show of hands of those who are here in favor of this uh, measure. A show of hands of those who are here in opposition to this particular measure. Okay, I've got one hand in opposition. Uh, saw no hands in favor. All right, um, uh, Ms. Baker, um, you are recognized at the podium. I'm here again. Most of the people had to leave because of the hour. And I got a very disturbing text earlier while I was sitting here, and I'm not gonna repeat it, but if I have to stand out on a limb by myself, I'll do that because I promised people that I would speak for them. I heard a lot of talk tonight about public hearing and that's what we're here to do, is to tell you how we feel about these bills. I'm tired, the others are tired, and it's almost over. So I'm not gonna keep speaking about meetings that we have not had, because you can cherry pick who you want to talk to and call it a meeting. But those that are directly impacted have not been communicated with about this contextual overlay on either one of these bills. And I wanna make sure that there's no spin put on my truth and why I'm here. There are those that are in the contextual overlay that did not want to be. There are those that are not in that wanted to be. So if you're trying to hear from the people like you're saying you're hearing, we are asking for a deferral. But because you may have gotten a letter from a political official and we are not in that position, we deserve a right to be heard and ask for a deferral. So if you've already made up your mind, then just do me this justice and act like you're listening to me. So we ask for a deferral. So if you don't give it to us, that's fine. At least I'm on record saying we ask. At this late hour, we're asking for a deferral. If you choose not to, then that's your choice. I listened to the people and spoke for them. Thank you. All right, thanks. Thanks, Ms. Baker. Okay, anybody else on this one? All right, declare the public hearing closed. Uh, we're back to Council Member Hall. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, again, just like the other one, guys, this is um, something that was suggested by planning, met with planning staff approval, met with community character plan, met with land use policy. Down the line is exactly what the community has been asking for and in place. Um, you know, th this one is slightly different in the sense that you have neighborhood maintenance bumped up against neighborhood evolving um, in a particular area. And so, there was some question or concern there, but in that part that's bumped up against neighborhood evolving, um, those neighbors had already told the largest track owner no to selling their land to them or to developing that, um, to put multifamily inside this, um, inside this neighborhood, inside this subdivision. This is also one of those areas, just like you were hearing with Bellevue before, this whole area was underwater after the 2010 flood. <laughs> We've had churches leave, we've had community members leave, we've had a community that was left in shambles. So part of it is viable and part of it isn't. But what we've been able to do through this process with other rezonings and other questions about land policy and whatnot, um, we've been able to set the comps. You've got a lot of new single family home development in this community um, that are doubling the current comps for that neighborhood. You've got people wanting to invest we're sandwiched between a greenway and a park, and now private citizens are trying to work with parks and donate money to have that park revitalized. The three largest track owners inside of this overlay have those tracks simply to build one or two single family homes. This is not a place where they want multifamily inside of a, of a, a suburban neighborhood 
we want to leave that to the corridors. And so that was the purpose in bringing forth this overlay. It's just like the one before. Um, you got more people that want to be in it, in it than don't want to be in it. And so um, I always am hesitant or, or cautious when we start getting into conversations about um, speaking for others. Um, we just saw tonight a great display of a community coming out and voicing their opinion, but every community is not structured the same way. And so um, this same overlay will also be covered in, in that meeting next Thursday at six o'clock. We're at a life church, we're at Thousand Clarksville Pike, right? You will have several other members um, present for that that are interested in this. And so um, I ask for approval on second reading. Okay. All right. So again, Councilmember Hall is moving for approval of Bill 2023-1973 for passage on second reading and properly seconded. Discussion, Councilmember Allen. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I appreciate the conversation that we've had about the use of this tool and the appropriateness of it. Um, I'm still not totally comfortable with hearing from constituents who feel like they have not had the full opportunity to have the community engagement. I know when I did historic conservation overlays, we worked through house parties and, and neighbors going door to door because it's it's a decision you make about how you're gonna be able to develop with your with your property. Um, I realize these are sort of two parallel ones and maybe they should be traded the same, but but I would like to move for one meeting deferral on this one just, just so we can at least sound like we're being responsive to uh, to what we're hearing from the neighbors and, and they can still have the same meeting at the same time, but if there's a, a possibility for different methods of community engagement so that maybe the people that feel like they've been missed can be included in the process, then, and then I think that's just a, a, a courtesy to the to neighbors to ensure that they know that they've been felt All right, heard. So Council Member Allen is moving for a one meeting deferral, properly seconded. I'll go back to you, Council Member Hall. Sorry, there you go. And while normally, again, um, I, have, I would have no issue with that, we're talking about this, a great example of the neighborhood with this particular overlay. Um, we've got four traffic calming processes happening between these two overlays. NDOT can't even get a response from everyone from doing multiple mailers. We're literally trying to scramble and get people to respond to a traffic calming within this all before the end of August, and they've been trying since March. So, I mean, this is one of those examples of... Um, I understand, um, but you've not heard community from this neighborhood or from this project show opposition to this, um, so I would like to table that motion. Well, you can't, you have to table it from the very beginning, so you, so you can't do that, okay? It's just the way it is procedurally. So, That's um, fine. So we're on Council Member Allen's uh, motion to defer one meeting. Okay, so let me see if anybody else wants to be heard. Councilmember O'Connell on the motion to defer one meeting. Councilmember O'Connell? Uh, no. Sorry, not on the deferral. Uh, Councilmember Hurt on the deferral motion. Councilmember Murphy on the deferral motion. Councilmember Murphy. Table the motion. Okay, so Councilmember Murphy is moving to table the motion of Councilmember Allen. So same thing from before. Councilmember Murphy, uh, you go first. You're on the tabling motion. Thank you. Um, I know we're tabling a lot tonight, but we're we're. I know that we're also on on late night as well. I'm gonna. I don't want to completely rehash everything that I said earlier, but I listened to this at the planning commission in detail because, like I've said, I've been critical of Councilman Hall. I have not been the, the, the cheerleader for him. I am out of office in August. He's out of office in August. I got nothing to gain by, by backing him up here. Except for I went over to him and I said, this time it sounds like you've done the work and you still can't win for trying at times. This is a time when at the public hearing at the planning commission, what I heard were people saying, we're in support of this, we want this. Thank you, Councilman Hall. And the opposition said, we want to be included, but the bill had, the, the application had already been filed. 
um, you know, traditionally we are looking at uh, up zonings without plans that don't that go against the community plan in District One a lot of times, and this is one that we are protecting neighborhoods. We're protecting the context of a neighborhood. It fits policy. Um, I know there's not a lot of people out tonight, but I'm telling y'all. Uh, this is the same conversation we had on the first one, so I'll echo the, our, our planning representative uh, to the commission who said, you know, this is one of those where we need to go with Councilman Hall on it. And y'all know I hate disapproved bills, and I'm, I wouldn't be backing him up if, if I didn't think he actually was on the right side this time. So with that, I, I'm gonna ask you to table it. Let's pass this on. He's got the meeting planned. If, if we hear back that he hasn't done the work by, our next, uh, the next meeting, defer it. Vote against it then. Vote against it tonight if you don't think he's he's gonna do the work. You have those options. But let's give him the opportunity, like we give the uh, give all of us to do, to do the work that we've said we will do and have committed on the floor. He's given the date and location. Um, there are gonna be registered voters, that's voters there. Y'all are welcome to go and ask for their vote while you're there. Councilmember Allen. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you, Councilman Murphy, for, you, you were at that meeting and I was not, so I, I, I appreciate your um, observation of what you heard at that meeting. Again, I, I, I agree that if we need to, we can defer on third meeting, third reading. I do, I do feel like um, this is simply a way for us to say to the neighbors, we understand that y'all have concerns and that if we, if we just keep blazing on forward as if nothing has been said, and there have been some emails and some texts as well, um, it, it's simply a way to acknowledge that we have heard from some neighbors who have felt like this is not necessarily something they've been able to weigh in on yet. So to me, it's more of a statement to the neighbors. Functionally, I think it all happens the same way. So if you wanna make that statement, make that statement to the neighbors who feel like they haven't been heard yet and we'll also make sure that they know that there's a community meeting scheduled next Tuesday at six. Thank you for doing that. Um, you can do both of those things, thank you. Right, okay, so here's where we are. Uh, Council Member Allen has moved to defer um, 1973 one meeting. It was properly seconded. Council Member Murphy has moved that to the table. Again, it's the same analysis before. We're gonna go on the board. If, you're, um, if, you don't want to if you don't want to deal with the deferral or get to the deferral, you'd vote for Kathleen Murphy's tabling motion. So Council Member Murphy, again, if you're with Council Member Murphy, you'd vote aye on the tabling motion. If you're with Council Member Allen, you'd vote against the tabling motion, right? Mr. Clark, just tell me when you're ready. Ready? Okay. Uh, Mr. Clark, open up the machines. Again, you're voting on a motion to table from Council Member Murphy. All in, Mr. Clark, uh, close machines, take the vote. Ayes 27, noes three, two abstentions. Um, the uh, tabling motion prevails. So we are now back on um, Councilmember Hall's motion to um, uh, approve his bill on second reading. Uh, and I still got people in the queue, so I gotta go back through the queue. Um, Okay, Councilmember O'Connell, we're on, okay. Councilmember Hurt, on the bill? We're on the bill, um, no? Uh, Councilmember Murphy, I've already asked you. Okay, Councilmember Swope, you're recognized. Previous question. Previous question, all right. So we're on the previous question. All those in favor of the previous question say aye. Yes. Opposed, no. Previous question prevails. We are now on Councilmember Hall's motion to approve his bill, Bill 2023-1973, for passage on second reading. Um, again, properly seconded. We're ready to vote. All those in favor of 2023-1973 for passage on second reading say aye. Yes. Opposed, no. 
bill passes on second reading. All right, we are now on item number 80, bill 2023-1974, which can be taken with 1975. This is by council member Stiles and Toombs. Uh, it's 1974, an ordinance to amend title 17 by change from AR 2A to SP zoning on properties located at 12782 Old Hickory Boulevard and Old Hickory Boulevard unnumbered. And 1975, which is the companion bill, ordinance to authorize building material restrictions and requirements for BL 2023-1974. Proposed ordinance requires certain materials to be restricted in the construction of buildings. Council member Toombs, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Request to open the public hearing. All right. Um, the public hearing is open. A show of hands of those who are here in favor of 1974 and 1975. They're still back there, okay. Uh, those who are in opposition to 1974 and 1975. Don't see anybody in opposition. Anybody wishes to speak? All right, declare the public hearing closed. Council Member Toombs, you're on 1974 and 1975. Move for approval. Got a motion to approve both of those. Properly seconded, any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the two bills for pass on second reading say aye. Opposed, no. You adopt. We're on item number 82, BL 2023 and 1976, by Council Member Young and uh, a companion bill, BL 23, uh, 2023 and uh, 1977. Um, BL 2023 and 1976, by Council Member Young, ordinance to amend Title 17 by changing a rezone from R10 to SP zoning. Properties located at People's Court, unnumbered in Gallatin Pike, unnumbered approximately 170 feet north of Vietnam Veterans Boulevard. And then the companion bill, uh, 1977, ordinance to authorize building material restrictions requirements for BL 2023-1976. Proposed ordinance requires certain materials to restrict in the construction of buildings. Council Member Young, you're on your two bills. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Let's open the public hearing. We are going to open the public hearing. Um, show of hands of those who are here in favor of those two measures. That's most of the room. Um, a show of hands of those who are in opposition of those two measures. That's not anybody in the room. All right, those in favor wish to speak? Nope. Declare the public hearing closed. Councilmember Young, you're on your bills, and I think you may have a substitute. I, do, I have a substitute on each one, so okay. should we take, take them up separately? Yeah, take them yeah. up individually. Well, then I would like to uh, move the substitute uh, for... 1976, the first one? For 76, yes. All right, so Councilmember Young has moved the substitute, or, substitute ordinance for 1976, properly seconded, back to you to explain the substitute ordinance. It uh, increases the density in exchange for working to get some money for sidewalks to Gallatin Road. All right, so you've heard an explanation of the substitute. Again, properly seconded. Discussion on the substitute. Any discussion? Seeing none, we're ready to vote on the substitute. All those in favor of the substitute, say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Substitutes on on your first bill, 1976, and then on 83. Um, we'll put the substitute on, on that one as well, and we'll vote on them together. That's all right. Bill 2023-1977. Um, Council Member Young, on that. I will move the substitute on 1977, which just changes the density to match the corresponding bill. All right, thank you. So you've got a motion to approve the substitute on 1977, properly seconded. Any discussion on the substitute? Seeing none, oh, Council Member Hancock. There you are. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I was just wondering, can these sidewalks be anywhere on Gallatin Road or are they in a particular location? Uh, Council Member Young? Um, they are sidewalks between this site and Gallatin Road. So, uh, yeah. Are you trying to steal sidewalks? What are you trying to do? Okay. Sorry, I'm just, I'm trying to think of something cute to say, but I'm just too tired. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So uh, we've got a substitute that uh, Council Member Young has proposed on 1977, properly seconded. Voting on the substitute. All those in favor of the substitute on 1977 say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Substitutes on. Now you're on both your bills as substitute. I would love to move both bills as substituted, please. All right, so a motion is to approve 1976 as substituted and 1977 as substituted. Properly seconded. Discussion on the two substitutes. Seeing none, ready to vote. All those in favor of 1976 as substituted and 1977 as substituted say aye. Opposed, no. Bills both pass as substituted on second reading. Uh, we're on Councilmember Hancock's bill, Bill 2023-1978 and 1979. Uh, 78, 
Ordinance amend Title 17 by change from RS80 to SP on property located in 1938. Neely's Bend, approximately 2,165 feet northwest of Overton Lane, and the Companion Bill, which is 1979. Ordinance authorized building material restrictions requirements for BL 2023-1978. Proposed ordinance requires certain materials to restrict in the construction of buildings. Council Member Hancock, you are recognized on both your bills. Thank you, Mr. President. Could I open the public hearing, please? You certainly can. Public hearing is open. A show of hands of those who are here in favor of the two bills. Show of hands of those who are here in opposition to the two bills. Seeing nobody on either side, declare the public hearing closed. Councilmember Hancock, you're on your two bills. I'd like to move for approval, please. All right. The motion is to approve both 1978 and 1979 for passage on second reading, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, we're ready to vote on 1978 and 1979 for pass on second reading. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Uh, both those bills pass. Uh, item number 86, uh, BL 2023-1980 by Council Member Welsh. Ordinance to amend Title 17 by changing from RS5 to R6A for property located at 2229 Foster Avenue, west of Rose Street. Council Member Welsh, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Uh, whatever you are this morning, because I just can't remember. Uh, Would we open the public hearing, please? Yes, we can. So uh, declare the public hearing open. We're on 1980. A show of hands of those who are here in favor of 1980. Show of hands of those who are here in opposition to 1980. Didn't see anybody on either side. Clear the public hearing closed. Council Member Welsh, you're recognized. Move to approve. Uh, the motion is to approve 1980. Properly seconded. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all those in favor of 1980 for pass on second reading say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Go pass on second reading. We're on BL 2023-1981 by Council Member Taylor. This is an ordinance to amend Title 17 by change from RS5 to R6A zoning for property located at 703 29th Avenue North, approximately 80 feet north of Clifton Avenue. Council Member Toombs, I think this is yours. Thank you. Request to open a public hearing. Uh, I will open the public hearing. We're on BL 2023-1981. Show of hands of those who are here in favor of this particular measure. I see one hand back there. Show of hands of anybody in opposition to this measure. Don't see anybody in opposition. Uh, those in favor wish to speak. Nope. Declare the public hearing closed. Council Member uh, Toombs, you're recognized on 1981. Move for approval. Got a motion to approve. Properly seconded. Any discussion? Uh, we're on 1981. Seeing none, we're ready to vote. All those in favor of 1981 for pass on second reading, say aye. Opposed, no. Bill passes on second reading. Councilman Weathers, you've got the next one, 1982, ordinance to amend Title 17. By change from R10 to R6, we're probably looking at Riverside Drive, unnumbered, approximately 400 feet west of Perlin Drive. Uh, Councilmember Weathers, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd like to request to open the public hearing. All right, declare the public hearing open. A show of hands of those who are here in favor of 1982. Thank you. Show of hands of those who were here in opposition in 1982. Don't see anybody in opposition. Would you like to speak? Okay. Um, nobody's watching on television anyway at this point, but you're welcome. All right. Declare the public hearing closed. Councilmember Weathers, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd like to leave constituents speechless. Uh, and with that, I uh, move approval. All right. Councilmember Weathers has moved to approval of 1982 for passage on second reading, properly seconded. Any discussion? <laughs> Seeing none, all those in favor of 1982 for pass on second reading say aye. aye. Opposed, no. You adopt. BL 2023 1983 by Councilmember Parker. Uh, this is an ordinance to amend Title 17 by change from RS5 to R6A for property located at 315 Edith Avenue, approximately 490 feet east of Meridian Street. Councilmember Parker, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I'd like to open the public hearing. Um, declare the public hearing open. A show of hands of those who are here in favor of this particular measure. All right, thank you. A show of hands of anybody in opposition to this measure. Seeing nobody in opposition, would you like to speak? Okay, declare the public hearing closed. Councilmember Parker, you're recognized. Move for approval. Got a motion to approve, properly seconded. Any discussion on the bill? Seeing none, all those in favor of 1983 for pass on second reading say aye. Opposed, no. Uh, bill passed on second reading. Uh, uh, Councilmember O'Connell, BL 2023-1984, an ordinance to amend Title 17, uh, by change from IWD to MUNA for property located at 195 Little Green Street, approximately 150 feet east of Edgar Street. Councilmember O'Connell, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to uh, open the public hearing, please. Okay, declare the public hearing open and a show of hands of those who are here in favor of this particular measure. All right, thank you. A show of anybody who is here in opposition to this particular measure. 
Seeing nobody in opposition, declare, oh, would you like to speak? Okay. Declare the public hearing closed. Councilmember O'Connell, you're recognized on your bill. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to move approval. All right. Motion is to approve. Properly seconded. Any discussion on the bill? Seeing none, all those in favor of 1984 for pass on second reading say aye. Opposed, no. You adopt. Bill 2023-1985 by Councilmember Roberts, ordinance to amend Title 17 by changing from R6 to CS for properties located at 5108 B Tennessee Avenue and 5100 Tennessee Avenue at the northwest corner of Tennessee Avenue and 51st Avenue North. Councilmember Roberts, you're recognized on your bill. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd like to open the public hearing, please. All right. Declare the public hearing open. Anybody back there uh, uh, interested in this particular bill? You are. Are you in favor or are you against? In favor? Okay, anybody back there sitting with you that's against? No. All right, you, would you all like to speak? No. Councilman Roberts? No. Uh, Councilman Roberts, you're recognized, don't you? I'd like to move for approval, please. Councilman Roberts has moved for um, approval of 1985 for pass on second reading. Properly seconded any discussion. Seeing none, all those in favor of 1985 for pass on second reading say aye. Opposed, no, you adopt. Uh, Bill 2023-1986 by Councilmember Sledge. Uh, an ordinance to amend Title 17 by changing from IR to MULANS zoning. Property located at Hagen Street, unnumbered at the northwest corner of Hagen Street and Merritt Avenue. Councilmember Sledge, you are recognized on your bill. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Open the public hearing, please. All right. Declare the public hearing open. Uh, show of hands of anybody back there who is interested in 1986 in favor? Anybody in favor? 1986. Anybody opposed on 1986? Um, declare the public hearing closed. Council Member Sledge, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Please approve. Okay. So the motion is to approve 1986 for passage on second reading. Properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of 1986 for passage on second reading say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Second, uh, 1986 passed on second reading. 1987 by Council Member Syracuse, ordinance to amend Title 17 by canceling a plan unit development for properties located at 2515 and 2525 McGammick Pike, uh, 900, fi 900 feet west of Music Valley Drive. Council Member Syracuse, you're recognized on your bill. Thanks, Vice Mayor. Open public hearing, please. Declare the public hearing open. A show of hands of those who are back there who are in favor of the bill. I see two hands. A show of hands of uh, the people sitting next to you who are in opposition. Anybody in opposition back here? Okay. Uh, this is your chance. Would you all like to speak on this one? I'm going to run out of time. All right. Nope. Declare the public hearing closed. Council Member Syracuse, recognized on your bill. Move approval. Motion is to approve. Properly seconded. We're on 1987, item number 93. Um, any discussion on the motion to approve on second reading? Seeing none, we're voting to pass uh, 1987 on second reading. All those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no, you adopt. And the last two, 94 and 95 by Council Member Parker, uh, BL 2023, 1988 can be taken with BL 2023, 1989. Um, 1988, an ordinance to amend Title 17 by change from RS5 to SP zoning for property located at 1003 Douglas Avenue, uh, northwest corner of Douglas Avenue and Trevecca Avenue. And 1989, the companion bill, an ordinance to authorize building material restrictions requirements for BL 2023, 1989, eight, 1988. Proposed ordinance requires certain materials to restrict in the construction of buildings. Council Member Parker, you are recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I'd like to open the public hearing. Okay, declare the public hearing open on 1988 and 1989. Show of hands of anybody back there who is in favor of the two bills. I think you're just raising your hands now because I'm looking at you. All right, so I got two hands in favor. Um, anybody in opposition, if you would please raise your hand. Uh, those in favor wishing to speak? Nope. Declare the public hearing closed. Councilman Parker, you're recognized on the two. Um, Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, at the request of some folks who were not able to be here until one o'clock this evening, I'd like to request a one meeting deferral on this to allow us time to, oh, I can't. Okay, so on both bills, a one meeting deferral? Both bills? I, I'm being told we just did the public hearing. It's, we don't need to re-notice that. Yeah, but okay. you've had the public hearing. This yeah, so we're good, everybody. Deferral. Yeah. All right, so you're- Public hearing's closed. Um, I'd like to request a one meeting, move a one meeting deferral. Okay, on both 1988 and 1989, both Keep of them. Keep it on second, one meeting deferral. Okay. Okay, all right. Um, so the, the motion is to um, move both bills one meeting, defer one meeting. On, defer to one keep meeting. them on second, um, so they'll be heard on second at the next meeting. All right, that's the motion properly seconded. Any discussion on the motion to defer? <laughs> 
Seeing none, all those in favor of the deferral motion say aye. Opposed, no. Uh, both these things are deferred one meeting. All right, uh, that completes um, bills on public hearing. All right. All right. Um, we are now on uh, consent resolutions and resolutions. All right. Um, somewhere up here is my list, and I may get you to come up here in a minute. Okay. All right. Uh, let me go through um, things that are on the consent agenda. Um, 2286 is on consent. 2288 is on consent. 2289 is on consent. 2290 is on consent. 2291 on consent. 2294 is on consent. 2296 is on consent. 2298 on consent. 2299 on consent. 2300 on consent. 2301 on consent, 2302 on consent, 2303 on consent, 2304 on consent, 2305 on consent, 2306 on consent, 2307 on consent, 2308 on consent, 2309 on consent. Anything needs to be bumped off the consent calendar? Anything? Oh, Councilmember Van Rees. I believe 2293 needs to be placed on consent. 2293, um, it requires a, um, yeah, there's an abstention and um, it requires abstention. 21 votes. Okay. That's why it's been Thank bumped you. off. Yeah, okay. All right, anything else? Anything else, else needs to be bumped off? <coughs> All right, <coughs> here it goes. Um, the first one up, RS 2023-2286 by Johnston and Roten, a resolution amending resolution RS 2023-1948 to reincorporate the National Volunteer Organization Active and Disaster Coalition Program details. RS 2023-2288, Roten, Hancock, and Welsh, resolution accepting grant for the State of Tennessee Administrative Office of the Courts uh, to Metro Government through the Davidson County Juvenile Court for the provision of interpretation and translation services for parties with limited English proficiency. Uh, Item number 101, RS 2023-2289 by Roten, Hancock, and Welsh. Resolution accepting a grant from the Tennessee Department of Mental Health and Substance Abuse Services to the Metro Government acting by and through the state trial courts to provide Tennessee Certified Recovery Court Program at the Davidson County Residential Drug Court. RS 2023-2290 by Councilmember Murphy. Resolution approving the election of certain notary publics in Davidson County. RS 2023-2291 by Councilmember Roten. Resolution authorizing the Metropolitan Department of Law to compromise settle the claim of Isha Kaba against the Metropolitan National Hospital Authority in the of $96,919.50, 34,000 of which reflecting back pay to be paid from the hospital's authority operating budget, remaining to be paid from the judgment losses fund. Uh, next item is uh, item number 106, RS 2023 2294 by Roden, Hurt, Welsh, and Silas. Resolution accepting a grant for the Tennessee Arts Commission, the Metropolitan Government acting through the Metropolitan Arts Commission for funding the nonprofit organizations to nurture artists, art organizations, art supporters. RS 2023 2296, Roden, Syracuse, and Welsh. Resolution accepting a grant from the Tennessee Department of Health to the Metropolitan Government acting by and through the Metropolitan Board of Health to achieve sustained control and enhance prevention to eventually eliminate tuberculosis. Uh, item number 110, RS 2023-2298, Roden, Syracuse, and Hancock. Resolution accepting a local assistance tribal consistency fund grant from the U.S. Department of the Treasury to the Metropolitan Government through the Metropolitan Board of Health. Provide funding for on-call veterinarian services, new x-ray equipment, and vehicles for adoption events and transport of long, an long uh, large animals. And item number 111, RS 2023-2298, 99, Roden and Syracuse, resolution approving application for port security grant for the U.S. Department of Homeland Security to the Metro government through the Office of Emergency Management. Item number 112, RS 2023-2300, resolution authorizing the Metropolitan Department of Law to compromise and settle the personal injury claim of Angelique and Jacob Bryant against the Metropolitan government in the amount of $122,000. Item number 113, RS 2023-2301, Toombs, Taylor, Roden, and others, resolution approving intergovernment grant uh, agreement buying between the state of Tennessee, TDOT, and the Metro government Government Advance from Davidson County through NDOT for the repair of existing pavement failures and resurfacing of 0 0.830 miles of Clarksville Pipe, Dr. D.B. Todd, Jr. Boulevard. Uh, item number 114, Roden, Pulley, Hancock, and Allen, uh, RS 2023-2302, resolution approving an application for charging and fueling infrastructure discretionary grant from TDOT to the Metropolitan Government through NDOT to replace, upgrade, and install a new electric vehicle charging system. Item number 115, RS 2023-2303, Welsh, Johnson, Roden, and others, 
Resolution approving amendment to an intergovernmental agreement binding between the state of Tennessee, Department of Transportation, and NDOT for the intersection improvements on Nellis and Pike from McNally Drive to Natchez Court. Item number 116, RS 2023-2304, Rodney and Pulley. Resolution authorized the Metropolitan Department of uh, Government of Nashville and Davis County through the Department of Water and Sewer Services to enter into a recycling technology pilot program with Sensoneo and to accept a donation of $14,000 for hardware integration, temporary license, and services. RS 2023-2305, Broughton, Pulley, Bradford, and Hancock. Resolution approving an application for a community project fund congressionally directed spending grant from the U.S. Department of Agriculture to the Metropolitan Government through the Water and Sewer Services Department, helping plant Nashville's diminishing tree canopy. Uh, RS-2023-2306, Sledge, Withers, and Pulley, Resolution to Amend, Ordinance Number BL-2021-1020 to authorize the Metropolitan Government of National and Davidson County to modify the abandonment and acceptance of public water main fire hydrant assemblies in Eastman for probably looking at 1201 Hillsdale Avenue, Hillside Avenue, excuse me. Item number 119, RS-2023-2307, Hurt, a resolution calling on the Tennessee General Assembly to pass common sense gun reforms during its upcoming special session. Item number 120, RS-2023-2308, Johnston, Evans, Swope, and others, resolution requesting Metro Nashville Public Schools use recently appropriated funding to purchase ballistic film and radius to improve school safety. And RS-2023-2309 by Councilmember Druffle. <laughs> A resolution recognizing Chef Max Nuffel and congratulating him as the 2023 International Food Service Manufacturers Association Silver Plate Award winner. Those are the items on the consent agenda. Um, does anything needs to be bumped off? Anything needs to be bumped off the consent agenda? All right, seeing none, we've got committee reports in. Council Member Roten, you're recognized for budget and finance. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Uh, budget and finance approved 2023, 2286, 2288, 2289, 2291, 2294, 2296, 2298, 2299, 2300, 2301, 2302, 2303, 2304, 2305, and 2308. 13 in favor, zero against. Very good. Council Member Withers, planning and zoning. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Planning and zoning met and considered. RS 2023, 2293, 2301, 2303, and 2306. And we recommended approval of each of those nine in favor, zero against, zero abstention. All right, let's see. Got it, okay. Um, uh, public, public facilities, Council Member Hart, you recognize. Thank you, Mr. President. Public Facilities, Art, and Culture voted five in favor and zero against. Uh, resolution 2023-2294. All right. Thank you. Council Member Syracuse, Public Health. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Public Health and Safety considered RS-2023-2296-2298-2299. Recommended approval. Six in favor, zero against. All right. Council Member Murphy. Rules, confirmations. Thank you. 2187 2290, uh, 2307, 2309, 22, 2310. The numbers are getting blurry for me. Five in favor, zero against, and all of this. All right, sounds good. Uh, Council Member Pulley, transportation. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Transportation and infrastructure recommended approval of RS 2023 2301 through 2306. Eight in favor, zero against, and I move approval of the consent agenda. All right, Council Member Pulley has moved approval of the consent agenda of resolutions, properly seconded. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all those in favor of um, the consent agenda of resolutions say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Resolution consent agenda passes. All right, we are now back on resolutions that were not on consent. Uh, first one is item number 96, uh, RS 2023-2187 by Evan Siles Allen and others. Resolution urging the mayor's office, Metro Health Department, Homeless Impact Division, Social Services to evaluate housing pods purchased with COVID-19 um, grant funds and create an action plan for their use. Council Member Evans, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I have a uh, proposed substitute that I would like to move, please. All right, you might get, uh, let me get uh, committee reports in first, public health and safety. Councilor Syracuse. Uh, we're on uh, 96, RS 2023-2187. Uh, public Health and Safety, consider RS 2023-2187. Recommended right. approval, six in favor, zero against, as substitute. Councilor Murphy, rules. 
Okay, thank you. All right, thank you. She said five of, of four and zero again. All right, Council Member Evans, you're recognized. Yes, thank you. I would like to move my proposed substitute, please. All right, Council Member comment. Evans has a proposed substitute resolution properly moved, properly seconded. Back to you for an explanation. Thank you. So um, basically what uh, has happened since I originally introduced uh, this resolution and deferred it in committee um, has been that we have had an update from the health department. I originally went down that rabbit hole of getting the approval from the health department about um, using uh, COVID pods and also learned more about some of the state fire marshal concerns about COVID pods. So I worked with uh, Ginger Hauser who set up a meeting with the fire marshal's office and basically we have approval from the fire marshal's office if Metro Codes can produce a letter from an engineer with the engineer's stamp on it um, that would then be sent to the state and then we will be granted use of the pods uh, for uh, housing um, options. So um, so that's a change. There's a reference in there about that. I also changed um, the date um, about when I'd like that feedback back to the council. It wasn't really um, possible to have it done by the end of our term. So I did put it for the second meeting in October uh, to give all of the stakeholders some opportunity to uh, convene and discuss what the potential options could be. And so that's where it's basically the, the gist of the substitute. Okay, so you've, um, Council Member Evans has moved the substitute <coughs> resolution, can properly second it. She's explained it. Discussion on the substitute. Seeing none, we're voting on the substitute. All in favor of the substitute resolution on 2187 say aye. Opposed, no. Uh, substitute resolution is on. Now you're on your resolution as substitute. Thank you. So basically I just shared kind of the gist of everything. And so really the um, the objective of this is to, you know, we've consistently heard that the barriers to using the COVID pods were in air quotes, the state, the state won't allow us to use these. And so um, with the efforts between myself uh, Ginger Hauser, you know, in the conversations with the fire marshal and a variety of other stakeholders, you know, we can. It's really just going to be a matter of do we have the will to come up with a plan. And so that's what this resolution is requesting, that we come up with a plan uh, with a variety of the folks involved, uh, Office of Homeless Services, um, Metro Health Department, um, Metro Codes, um, et cetera. Um, and I'm not wanting to be prescriptive in what this plan looks like. I really think it should be the next iteration of the process is to get everybody together with the removal of the barrier from the state. Uh, related to that letter that I referenced from the Metro Codes engineer, um, that is supposed to be in process. We are supposed to have that by the end of next week. Um, and so that's something that I'll keep pressing on my end so we can keep uh, the, the, the progress going. So I urge your approval and I appreciate your support. All right, so Councilmember Evans has moved uh, for passage of RS 2023-2187 as substituted, again, properly seconded. Any discussion on the resolution? Seeing none, we're on RS 2023-2187 as substituted. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. You adopt. Um, next one is item number 97, RS 2023-2201 by Councilmembers Mendez, Roten, Withers, and Allen. Resolution approving the activities and improvements eligible for tax increment financing in the Metropolitan Development and Housing Agency Redevelopment Districts. Councilmember Mendez, you're recognized. Withdraw. Okay. This one's withdrawn. Okay. Uh, we're on item number 99, RS 2023-2287, resolution request the Department of Water and Sewer Services, Waste Services Division, study creation of a department or other entity dedicated to solid waste reduction, diversion, disposal responsibilities, and to develop a strategy and organizational framework that manages solid waste, recyclables, organics, and other materials for the residents of Nashville and Davidson County. Pooley, Roten, Syracuse are the sponsors. Councilmember Pooley, you recognized. I uh, committee reports and I'll uh, give the transportation, transportation sure. committee report. Uh, we recommended approval, eight in favor, zero against, and I move approval of the resolution. All right, so uh, Councilman Pulley has moved approval of RS 2023-2287 for passage, properly seconded. Any discussion on the resolution? Seeing none, all those in favor um, of RS 2023-2287 for passage say aye. Opposed, no, you adopt. 
Right. Uh, we're on item number 104, RS 2023-2292, written in Withers, a resolution approving an intergovernmental license agreement between the Metropolitan Government of Nashville, Davidson County, and the United States of America, uh, acting through the Department of Defense to certain property located at 1414 County Hospital Road, owned by the Metropolitan Government for limited military training purposes. Councilmember Roten, this is yours. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Um, budget and finance committee report was mine. Uh, budget and finance um, move for a one meeting deferral, 13 in favor, zero against, and uh, Council Member Withers has a committee report as well. All right, Council Member Withers, thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Planning and zoning uh, recommended 2292 for approval, nine in favor, zero against, zero abstentions. We had a much more robust discussion in the subsequent committee meeting, but. <laughs> okay, so uh, this one is, uh, it's a one meeting deferral uh, by the budget and finance, so I think it's an automatic deferral of one meeting. Thank you, Mr. Yeah, President. Yeah, good. Um, item number 105, RS 2023-2293 by Council Members Roten and Withers. Uh, resolution declaring surplus and authorizing convention of real property to new level community development corporation, approving the first amendment to a grant contract for constructing affordable housing approved by RS 2022-1857 between the Metropolitan Government through the Metropolitan Housing Trust Fund and new level community development corporation. Uh, Council Member Hauser has to abstain on this one. Council Member Roten, you recognized on the resolution. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Uh, committee reports. Uh, uh, council member house or affordable housing yes uh affordable housing was eight four zero against one abstaining okay budget and finance committee council member wrote in the shores budget and finance approved 13 in favor zero against okay, council member withers uh rs 2023 2293 planning and zoning i think it's zoning uh, recommended approval nine in favor zero against zero abstentions all right council member roten you ready my motion all right so council member roten is um is requesting approval of RS 2023-2293 for passage, uh, properly seconded. It needs 21 votes, but I think if we do it by voice vote, I know Council Member Hauser has to abstain. Oh, Council Member, I'm sorry, Council Member Van Rees, I hadn't gotten to you yet, you're recognized. That's okay, I just, this is in my district and I just wanted to voice my support for it, thank you. Oh, okay. All right, so we'll try it by voice vote, uh, again with Council Member Hauser abstaining. Any other discussion on this? Seeing none, all those in favor of RS 2023-2293 for, pass on, on, uh, for passage, indicate by saying aye. aye. Opposed, no. And then one abstention, Council Member Hauser. So um, the resolution passes with the required 21 votes. Okay, uh, we're on item number 107, RS 2023-2295 by Council Member Roten, Syracuse and Hurt. Resolution approving a grant contract between the Metropolitan Government and National Davidson County, acting by and through the Metropolitan Board of Health, and why we can't wait, Inc., for the provision of violence interruption services. Council Member Roten, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Budget and Finance uh, approved a uh, one meeting deferral. All right. In favor, zero against. All right, Public Health and Safety, Council Member Syracuse. Thank you, Vice Mayor, uh, recommended one meeting deferral, six in favor, zero against. Okay, that so it's an automatic deferral of one meeting. All right, uh, we're on item number 109, RS 2023, 2297 by Council Member Roten, Syracuse and Welsh. Resolution approving agreement between the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County, acting by and through the Metropolitan Board of Health and Vanderbilt University School of Nursing to provide clinical experience opportunities for its advanced practice nursing students. Council Member Roten, you recognized. Council Member Gamble, you recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, committee reports. Uh, budget and finance, and is that I yours? And I have that one. Okay. Uh, budget and finance recommended approval, 12 in favor, zero against, one abstention by our chair. Okay, and then uh, Council Member Syracuse, Public Health. Public Health and Safety recommended approval, six in favor, zero against. All right, so back to you, Council Member Gamble. RS 2023-2297. Thank you, move for approval. Your motion is to approve, properly seconded, one abstention by Council Member Roten. Uh, any discussion on the resolution? Seeing none, all those in favor of RS 2023-2297 for passes say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. And Council Member Roten is listed as abstaining. The resolution passes. Okay. And I think we have one last one. This is uh, item number 122. Uh, RS 2023-2310, Swope, Stiles, Suara, Benedict, others. Resolution approving a sister city relationship uh, with the government, government of Erbil in the Kurdistan region of Iraq and authorizing the mayor to execute a sister city agreement. Council Member Swope, you're recognized. Thank you, Your Honor. Not for a bit of good news. 
on this night that we have the longest agenda in Metro's history. This, is, this resolution that you're considering tonight has probably taken longer than any other ordinance ever passed in this city. When Bill Purcell got elected mayor in 1999, he recognized one thing. We have the largest Kurdish population outside of Kurdistan in the world. And to current day numbers, there are between 25 and 28,000 Kurdish people living in our city that are our brothers and sisters. The next largest population outside of Kurdistan is Detroit with 4,000. So there was a distinct correlation and connection between Nashville and Erbil, Kurdistan that Bill Purcell recognized in 2000 and has spent 23 years getting this resolution to our desks. In May of 2022, uh, a delegation from Kurdistan came over here, including the governor of a, of a bill, uh, which is basically the governor of KRG, the Kurdistan Regional Government. He's the number two man next to the prime minister. Uh, they brought over a number of dignitaries, and we wined and dined them here through the Sister Cities Organization in Nashville. Six weeks ago, Mayor Cooper, former Mayor Purcell, Council Member Stiles, School Board Member Frida Player, and multiple business people from the Nashville community and the Kurdish community here in Nashville went to Erbil, Kurdistan. I have been blessed to travel the world. I've been to Baghdad. It's a desert, think Southern Arizona. When I landed in Erbil, I was shocked. And for the next week, we were, let's just say, treated like royalty or dignitaries by everyone from Prime Minister Barzini on down. Um, Kurdistan isn't the desert, it's more like Colorado or Idaho. It's actually gorgeous. Um, if there's a breadbasket of the Middle East, North African region, it's Kurdistan. That should explain why the Kurdish people have fought for 5,000 years to protect it. Erbil was created and is the oldest currently inhabited city on the planet. It dates back to 3000 BC, and the citadel there I, it is absolutely amazing. And I'm going to go over on time. Do you mind? <laughs> I heard three people say yes. So. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay, I'm going to call a question. Um, <laughs> you can't do that either. I, I, would, I would ask that as we consider this, that everyone here voting in the affirmative be added to this. Um, there will be a presentation of this resolution on the 18th meeting at 6 p.m. with local Kurdistan people that are, that are uh, business leaders here in the community, with the sister cities people, et cetera, et cetera. We knew this was gonna be the middle of the night, so obviously they're not here. But we will present this officially at 6 p.m. right there. I welcome everyone to be here for that. And as this agreement becomes real, we've already been told that the Ur, the Erbil government is sending a delegation back over here to have an official signing ceremony, which probably won't happen until sometime towards the end of August because traveling from here to Erbil is not exactly easy. Uh, but I would, I would ask your approval on this, and I am, on a personal note, I am blessed, honored, and touched to be the sponsor on this one. Um, I love the Kurdish people. I fell in love with the place. In fact, I'm going to move there in September. Anyway, I ask your approval. Thank you. All right. So, Councilmember Swope has moved to approve of RS 2023-2310, uh, properly seconded, um, and he also is invoking the Murphy rule on this one. Councilmember, so where are you recognized? <laughs> thank you, Vice Mayor, and thank you, uh, Councilmember Swope. Uh, there's not a whole lot more that I can add to what he said. But I had the pleasure of being the chair of the American Muslim Advisory Council for about seven or eight years. And I work with all the mosques across the states and all the Muslim community here in the states. And uh, so I had the privilege of leading and working uh, uh, with the Kurdish community as part of my role in AMAC. 
um, in addition to being an at-large and representing everybody, and a lot of my friends are there, some of the people that have been through thick and thin with me. And so the, the Kurdish community is a very vibrant community. The community, uh, Kurdish community is full of very resilient people, people that went through wars and uh, fled. A lot of them are refugees, and they've made Nashville home, and they've contributed so much uh, to what is Nashville. And so it really makes me happy uh, as an immigrant to see the reception, to see the acceptance, to see the collaboration, to see this partnership that says that Nashville and Kurdistan uh, are partners and we're sister cities. Uh, it goes a long way uh, in our, you know, we, we live in a very divisive world where people see the other people as other. And so for a city like Nashville to be able to say the Kurdistan in this, in this city as well as Cody standing on Bill, our sisters, and we're working together. I think that's the world that we all want to live in. That's the relationship we want to build, where we see each other as people, regardless of our background or our faith tradition. Uh, and so, as a, uh, as a, a member, a larger member of the uh, uh, of the Kurdish community that I've adopted, along with the other Muslim community in this town, I'm very happy to see this. And thank you, Councilmember Sue, for what you said. Um, it, it goes a long way, and it means a whole lot uh, when you look at what we've had to deal with in, sub, in terms of Islamophobia and what is being said about people that don't know about Muslims and Muslims across the world. And for people to go and see that hospitality, the kindness, and what that community embodies, our community embodies, uh, goes a long way. So uh, I ask all of you to please uh, support this. Uh, uh, and thank you. Thank you all so much on behalf of my community uh, for this. All right, thank you, Council Member. All right, we are ready to vote. We're invoking the Murphy Rule. We've got a motion to approve on RS 2023-2310. Um, all those in favor of the resolution say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Resolution is adopted. Thank you, Council Member Swope. All right, so we are now on bills on introduction and first reading. Um, we've already taken care of item number 123 and 125. They were off of um, first reading. So I'm going to go through. Um, I'm going to go through the ones that I think have to come off, and then you all just check me. Uh, these are bills on introduction and first reading. Item number 159. Item number 159, bill 2023 2037, has a late substitute by Councilmember Murphy. I think that one comes off. Okay. <coughs> Uh, item number 162 and 163 come off. Those are by Councilmember Parker. I believe those are duplicate bills. Okay. <coughs> um, and then I've got items number 169 and 170 by Councilmember Parker. Regards um, a um, suspension of the rules. Okay. And then I think the only other one I had was. Um, Council Member Allen, item number 224. That was a, a substitute ordinance. I don't know if you filed that or not. Okay, so it doesn't come off, so it stays on. So 224 stays on. Okay. All right. So everything else except for. Just a lot of these. Um, item number. Um, Again, uh, 123 and 125 come off. They've already been handled. And then item number 159 comes off of first reading consent. Item number 162 comes off. Item number 163 comes off. And item number 169 and 170 come off. I think those are the only ones. Okay. All right. So I'll entertain a motion to approve it. Oh, wait a minute. Councilmember Bradford, you recognize? 152. BL 2023 2030. Okay, 152 comes off. Okay. Anything else? All right, entertain a motion to approve everything else that wasn't bumped off the consent calendar. Councilmember Swope moves that. Properly seconded. Any discussion on any other bills on introduction first reading? Good to see you. Seeing none, all those in favor of bills on introduction first reading with the ones that we had, with the exception of the ones we had re removed, all those in favor say aye. Yeah. Opposed, no. Bills on introduction first reading pass. Okay.
Okay, so now we'll go back and pick up the ones we didn't. Again, item number 123 has been handled. Uh, item number 125 has been handled. Item number 152, Bill 2023 2030 by Council Member Bradford Withers and Pulley. Ordinance authorized the Metropolitan Government Advance Shell and Davis County to abandon existing public water main, except new public water mains and a replacement of an existing fire hydrant assembly for properly located one terminal drive. Council Member Bradford, you're recognized. I'd like to move for an indefinite deferral with brief comment. Okay, so Council Member Bradford is moving for an indefinite deferral, properly seconded. Back to you. Thank you, Vice Mayor. So as we know, there's been a lot of confusion over who actually controls the airport and the assets out there. And with consultation with Metro Legal, it was decided that until we know who controls the airport, we should not be entering into agreements that will eventually cost the taxpayers $131,000 to build infrastructure that we may or may not be able to maintain ownership of. So with that, until we know exactly who's going to control the airport, I'm not going to be allowing any airport-related legislation to be passed, and so that's why I'm asking for this indefinite deferral. All right, so Councilman Bradford has moved for an indefinite deferral, uh, properly seconded uh, discussion. Council Member Allen. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Just just a question about is this is this going to hold up construction of stuff that's like sort of underway or, or investments have been made that will leave money languishing and, and being inefficiently spent, or or do we know? Absolutely, which is one reason I'm doing this. The, the airport needs to know that what they're doing is ir irresponsible, so this is one way we're going to do that. Okay. Uh, Council Member uh, Nash. I'm confused why we think the airport is being foolish doing this. I'm assuming that the current board that's in place, been nominated by mayor and this council are the ones who have authorized this agreement for this water service. So, <laughs> uh, I, can Metro Legal explain their position? Metro Legal? I'm not aware of any formal position that Metro Legal has taken on this particular ordinance. Then I, I, I would urge my colleagues to vote against this deferral. Please move forward on first reading. And uh, we were let known earlier from Wally Dietz, our uh, legal director, that we're in progress of challenging the state's move. But right now, we're, this is dealing with stuff that's been approved by our current board. Thank you. Um, I've got Council Member uh, Murphy, and then I'll come back to uh, Council Member Bradford. Council Member Murphy. Can I have a little bit more information on the uh, fiscal impact that was cited? Ms. Tarbin. Th this is on first reading, and we have not done an analysis of this bill yet. Okay. Right. Uh, Council Member Bradford. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I just wanted to address this. I am the council member who represents the airport. If this was someone else's district, I would leave it to that council member to do what they think is best for that asset. So for any of my colleagues to kind of come up and say that this is not the proper way, I'm sorry, but you don't represent the airport. You don't represent District 13. So I do, and I am asking for this body to support the indefinite deferral. Councilmember Young, you recognize. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I. <laughs> mm. As much as I appreciate my colleague's passion, this is uh, not the practical way to to make the point. Maybe that uh, he's trying to make. Um, this is a suit of juvenile dumb action that we might see from those at the state capitol. Um, <laughs> Y'all, I mean, our airport has to operate. 
The airport does not belong to one district. It is the Nashville International Airport. It belongs to the city. And uh, to, to simply, I mean, y'all, we have hundreds of thousands of people coming in and out of this city that need to continue to do so, and we cannot interrupt all of the economic activity and all of the everything that needs to happen so the airport can continue to grow. This is just an... I'm, I, I, I appreciate my colleague's passion, but this is just not the way to go about proving or trying to make yourself look good. I mean, honestly, I'm, it's childish. All right, Councilmember Hall. Um, and I, I too can appreciate the passion because as somebody that came in kicking and screaming about infrastructure, 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 um, and willing to turn over every table about it, um, I did something similar, but, and Mr. Jamison can probably speak to this or will remember this, um, when we were having such a huge issue with mass grading and horse farms that led to no end and were endless, when we went after um, those permits and the ability to do those types of things, one of the things that I had to pull back on was because specifically with places like the airport and other places that were under huge construction, that had an unintended ripple effect going after um, those mass grading sites as they stood. And so I just wanted maybe there was some context of correlation there that, that you could draw from, but at the same time, maybe um, again, Mr. Jameson or the administration could kind of speak a little bit to the unintended ripple effect of that type of thing. Mr. Jameson. Thank you, Councilman. And yes, I, I do recall that uh, unintended consequence and, and would uh, share that warning here. Um, uh, I think certainly the administration would be comfortable with perhaps a one meeting deferral so that we can determine the exact implications at play here. Otherwise, we'd be worried about cutting off our nose to spite our face while we're trying to fight the state at a different level. Um, on a different uh, topic, but this, as Councilman Nash uh, noted, has been approved by the, the board that we all recognize and support, and uh, don't know that uh, an indefinite deferral conveys the message we want conveyed. Councilmember Hall. Okay. Um, Councilmember Porterfield. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I rise in support of my colleague, Councilman Bradford, um, you know, we talk a lot about councilmatic courtesy and I understand that that's not something that we can always extend, but the council member is fighting for what he believes is best for an asset that is in his district. We know how contentious this relationship has been. And uh, I just want to thank council member Bradford for standing up and making a bold move and I'm going to support it. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Okay. Uh, council member Mendez. <laughs> I also support the motion. Um, I mean, it's a long time ago now, uh, six, seven hours ago, but uh, we did hear the legal director um, tell us that there's a, a currently seated two boards um, uh, claiming to run the airport and management has sided with the state appointed board. Like that's what we heard from Wally Deed seven hours ago. Um, and that's alarmed. Um, Metro Legal to the point where they filed a motion for an injunction just in the last several business days to stop the management of our airport. Um, and I put it, our airport in quotes because right now it's not clear that it's our airport. It may well be the state's airport. Um, and listen, if litigation goes the wrong way um, for us and it's not really our airport, it's the state's airport, it's not at all clear to me that we're gonna keep spending money for infrastructure at the airport, um, if that's the case. And so um, given the fact that we just heard from the legal director at the front of the meeting that there's an open dispute, um, be two boards claiming to control the airport and management siding with the other one, um, you know, I think pausing spending money um, is appropriate till the dust settles a little bit. So I support the motion. Councilmember Druffel. Uh, previous question. All right, Councilmember Druffel has called the previous question. So we're voting on the previous question. All those in favor of the previous question say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Previous question prevails. So we are voting on a motion to defer indefinitely BL 2023-2030. 
that's what the motion is. It was properly seconded. So uh, obviously, if you're in favor of the indefinite deferral, you would vote aye. If you're against it, you'd vote no. Let's try by voice vote. All those in favor of an indefinite deferral motion by Councilmember Bradford on BL 2023-2030, say aye. 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 Opposed, no. No. All right, we're on the board. Okay. So um, again, you're voting on a motion to defer indefinitely by Council Member Bradford. If you're for the motion to defer indefinitely, you'd vote aye. If you're against the motion to defer indefinitely, you'd vote no. Ready? Mr. Clark, open up the machines. Mr. Clark, close the machines, take the vote. Highs 12, no 18, uh, two abstentions, the motion fails. All right, so we are um, now back on uh, BL 2023-2030. Um, Councilmember Bradford, you're recognized. The for one meeting. Councilmember Bradford has moved to defer one meeting, uh, properly seconded. Any discussion on the deferral motion? I've got people still in the queue. Councilmember Gamble or Councilmember Toombs on the deferral motion. Okay. Uh, Councilmember Nash. I would. I would prefer we go ahead and pass this on first reading, and if you want deferred on second reading, because I'd like to see an analysis done. And, uh, and and that gives us a couple of weeks to maybe let some of this court stuff settle out too, so we'll have a better idea where we stand. But it's not gonna, it's not, it takes three readings to get this passed. I don't think we need to be deferring on first uh, reading. Okay, any other discussion on, it's a motion to defer one meeting. All right, seeing none, we're on a deferral motion one meeting. All those in favor of the deferral motion one meeting say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. No. On the board. Ready? Mr. Clark, open up the machines. You're voting on um, a motion to defer one meeting. <laughs> okay, all votes are in. Mr. Clark, close machines, take the vote. Eyes 19, nose 13, zero abstentions. Uh, this one's deferred one meeting. Okay. All right. All right, next, uh, next one up is uh, item number 159, Bill 2023-2037 by Councilor Murphy. It's an ordinance to amend Title 17 by amending specific plan on properties located at 109 and 123 Bosley Springs Road, approximately 530 feet west of Harding Pike and located within the Harding Town Center Urban Design Overlay District. Council Member Murphy, you're recognized. Uh, I'd like to move the, ooh, am I amendment or a substitute? I'm sorry. It's, it's, a, it's a substitute. I'd like to move the substitute. What this does is it, there's just a, um, a clerical error with one of the parcels or something or other. And then also I want to go ahead and state on the record that I will have um, a letter uh, that I'm sending to St. Thomas and St. Thomas is sending me saying that we're all good on moving this board. So all it is is, is clarifying a, a parcel, I think, that was incorrectly identified. Do you have to suspend the rules on this when it's a late substitute? Oh, yeah. Sorry. Did you all, did you talk about it in the rules committee? I did. I okay. went before my own committee and um, they all agreed with me. 
Great. Okay. All right. So, um, so I'd like to suspend the rules. In order to get this in front of us, you're going to have to suspend the rules. I'd like to suspend those rules. All right. So, um, is there any objection to suspension of the rules to get the late <laughs> late file substitute before this body? Any objections to suspension of the rules? I see uh, Aaron Evans' hands halfway up. Okay, and that's halfway. No, you do not. Okay. All right. Uh, so scratching her head. Oh. So rules are suspended. Councilmember Murphy, you're on your All late substitute. <laughs> Move for approval. All right. So Councilmember Murphy is moving for approval of pr approval of her late file substitute on Bill 2023-2037, properly seconded. Any discussion on the late file substitute? Seeing none, we're voting on it. All in favor of the substitute, say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Uh, substitute's on. You're on your bill as substituted for passage on first reading. Move for approval. Council Member Murphy has moved for approval of 2037 as substituted to pass on first reading, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor of the, of the motion to pass the bill as substituted on first reading, say aye. Opposed, no, you adopt. All right, we are on item number 162, bill 2023-2040, um, and then the companion bill, which is, uh, they're simply uh, repeats of things that we had already done. Uh, 2040 is an ordinance to end Title 17 by changing RS5 to SP zoning for property located at 1003 Douglas Avenue, and the companion bill 2041, uh, ordinance authorized building material restriction requirements for BL 2023-2040. Proposed ordinance requires certain materials be restricted in the construction of buildings. Um, Council Member Parker, you're recognized on both those bills. Withdraw both items. Okay, both those, both those bills are withdrawn. Okay, we're on item number 169 and 170, BL 2023-2047 and 2023-2048, which is the companion bill. Uh, 2047 is an ordinance to amend Title 17 by changing from CS and RS5 to SP zoning for properties located at 110 Grizzard Avenue and 121, 131, and 133 Old Trinity Lane, approximately 450 feet west of Jefferson Pike, partially located within a plan unit development overlay district. Uh, and then the companion bill, BL 2023-2048, an ordinance to authorize building material restrictions requirements for BL 2023-2047. Uh, proposed ordinance requires certain materials to be restricted in the construction of buildings. Council Member Parker, uh, you recognized both on those two bills. I believe I need to suspend the rules. Uh, yeah, you're suspending rule 19 um, to get these in front of us tonight, at least on first reading. So did, did you go, do you, did you no, go? No, I didn't go. You did not go. Okay, so you're suspending the rules just to get on rule 19. All right, uh, is there any objections to suspension of rules to get these bills before us tonight on first reading? Any objections to suspension of the rules? Seeing none, rules are suspended. Um, you're, um, you're, you can proceed ahead on both your two bills. Move approval. All right. So Councilmember Parker has moved approval of Bill 2023-2047 and 2023-2048 for approval on first reading, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of those bills on first reading say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. You adopt. And I believe... And then we have one late filed, uh, one late bill. Uh, this is a bill by Councilmember Lee and Murphy. I think it's a companion bill. Councilmember Murphy, uh, you're recognized. I would like to suspend the rules. And I did appear before my own committee and they shockingly all agreed with me and I didn't have to twist their arms because this is for Council Lady Lee. All right, so Councilmember Murphy is trying to get a late file companion bill in that I think just didn't get filed. Is there any objections to suspension of the rules to get the bill in? Seeing none, rules are suspended. Councilmember Murphy, you're on your bill. Move approval. Councilmember Murphy moves approval of this late filed bill. Again, it's a companion bill, uh, properly seconded. Any discussion on uh, the um, motion to approve to get this bill on first reading? Seeing none, oh, Councilmember O'Connell. I was just wondering if we could get a comment from Councilmember Murphy on how she feels about late bills. <laughs> The motion is to approve this on, um, on, on um, get this on first reading. Motion to approve, properly second. All those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Bill is approved. Uh, Councilmember Murphy, you are recognized. I'd like to move to adjourn and defer the rest of our items to next week when you can get us all back together. It is 1.43. Um, we're barely halfway through. No good can come at discussion at this hour. 
I think I have seen everybody yawn. I saw somebody miss their mouth with a snack. Um, I, I think it's I think it's time. This has been a holiday week. Most of us are on. Most of y'all are on the campaign trail. Retired. I think it's time to to go home. So I move to uh, to end the night and come back next week and and defer everything else until then. I, I'm happy to pick a date certain, but I'm also happy for you guys to pull us and figure it out for next week. So like next, you're saying I can't date certain it's not next week. Um, I need to pick a date. I don't know the date of Tuesday. Is Tuesday the 11th? Or does somebody have a calendar? All right, if it's the 11th, I'd like to choose the 11th, whatever next Tuesday is. July 11th at 6.30. 6.30. Which one is it? Okay, so the motion is to adjourn tonight and then adjourn to a date certain, which would to be- To have a meeting date. on the, uh, the 11th. Tuesday. And so we would defer everything to a meeting on the 11th. Okay, so I've got a motion properly seconded. All right, so- um, The only thing stated is the date of- Okay, so- Councilmember Mendes. I heard uh, two different versions of that motion. Um, the first time it got made, I heard it was uh, just to have uh, finish the agenda. And this last time I heard it to have a meeting where we'd pick up. And so I want clarity about whether the meeting is only to finish the items that are unaddressed on the agenda or it's a meeting where other things could be noticed. Councilmember Murphy. It would be a meeting on Tuesday that I am deferring the rest of this agenda to the meeting on Tuesday. So like what we just passed on first reading would be on second. No, you're shaking your head. No, that would be on the next one. I, okay, I'm sorry, you're right. That's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to get the rest of the things on our agenda on the agenda for next week. Yes, that's- And, and only those things. Nothing else could be uh, filed because it would not be timely filed. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, so it's not a debatable motion. It's just a motion to adjourn. The only thing I think we could debate is the time. So we're just- Yeah, I can change the time if whatever. <laughs> Councilmember Van Rees, uh, not debatable motion on- No, it's just the time. Just oh, the, the time. time. The I time. didn't know what that was. This, was, this means time. Okay, thank you. <laughs> um, no, uh, that's the evening of uh, an, an important uh, community forum, uh, and I would uh, suggest that it be no earlier than 7.30 um, so that um, that forum can still take place. Councilmember Council Rosenberg. We're, we're debating a non-debatable motion. I mean, there just has to be a motion and then we vote not discuss what the motion should be exactly. We're, uh, apparently we can debate the time and the date. date. The date we and can't time is debatable. We can't debate the, uh, whether uh, the adjournment motion, but that's okay. So it's partly a debatable motion to? Yes. Okay. okay. All right. So. Um, Thank you. Councilmember Porterfield, um, but remember you can't debate this motion. It's just, uh, it's a non-debatable motion. Yes. Thank just you, the, Vice just Mayor. the time in the play, just the time. Just the time, Vice Mayor. Um, debating just the time, um, many of us have obligations all of next week, so I, I would be concerned about forum. Thank you, Vice okay. Mayor. All right, so we are on a, uh, at this point, we're on a motion to adjourn right now uh, and then um, reconvene Tuesday at 6.30, okay? 7.30. Tuesday at 7.30, okay? That's the motion, we're just voting on it. We'll do it by voice vote. All those in favor of the motion to adjourn and then to reconvene on Tuesday at 7.30 p.m., say aye. Aye. Opposed, no? No. <laughs> on a roll call? Okay, we're on the board. So it's simply a motion to uh, defer to a, uh, motion to adjourn to a uh, time certain. Bye.
Get ready. Okay, you're voting on a motion to adjourn. Uh, it's just a simple, simple majority uh, to a date certain. Um, Mr. Clark, open up the machines. All votes are in. All votes are in. Mr. Clark, close the machine. Take the vote. I-7, nose 24, zero abstentions. Uh, the motion fails, so we keep going. All right, we're on bills on second reading. These are second reading, uh, this is the second reading consent agenda. Just stay with me, um, and we should be able to get through this fairly quickly. Um, item number 230, BL 2023-1991 is on consent. Uh, 19, um, I will tell you, 1992 has already been handled, so we don't have to worry about it. Uh, 1994, item number 233 is on consent. 1996 is on consent. 1997 on consent. 1998 on consent. 1999 on consent. 2000 on consent. 2001 on consent. 2002 on consent. 2003 on consent. Anything needs to be bumped off the consent calendar? <coughs> Anything needs to be bumped off. Okay, here we go. And uh, Quanta, you want to handle third? Okay. I think it's. I think it's. I think it's fairly easy. All right. Um, let's see. Uh, BL. 2023-1991, that's item number 230, uh, Withers, Murphy, Bradford, and others, an ordinance uh, adding a new section 2.128070 of the Metropolitan Code of Law, establishing the Office of County Historian, the appointment process, necessary credentials, as well as the County Historian's duties and appointments within the Metropolitan Government. Uh, item number 233, BL 2023-1994, Parker, ordinance amending Metropolitan Code section 16.08.012, regulate mass timber construction within the standards set forth in 2021 edition of the International Building Code, 2021 one edition of the International Fire Code. 234 BL 2023-1996, Roten and Benedict, ordinance approving contract between the Metropolitan Government and National Davis County and Mythics LLC for Oracle Software. Uh, item number 235, BL 2023-1997 by Roten, Withers, and Pulley, ordinance authorizing the acquisition of certain rights away, Eastman property rights by negotiation and condemnation um, by NDOT in connection with the public project described as the SS Road at Hobbs Road inter intersection improvement. 236 BL 2023-1998, Withers, Pulley, and Hager, ordinance authorizing the Metropolitan Government accept new public sanitary sewer, main sanitary sewer manhole for six properties located on Wood Street, also known as Wood Street Public Sanitary Sewer Extension. BL 2023 1999, Welsh, Withers, and Pulley. Ordinance authorized the Metropolitan Government to accept the relocation of existing public fire hydrant assembly for property located at 2918B Harlan Drive, also known as Harlan Townhome. Uh, item 238, BL 2023 2000, Withers, and Pulley. Ordinance authorized the Metropolitan Government to accept new public sanitary sewer manhole property located at 1010 4th Avenue North. Uh, item 238, BL 2023 2001, ordinance authorized the Metropolitan Government of National and Davidson County to accept new public water main fire hydrant assemblies for property located at 3777 uh, Nolan Show Pike, also known as the National Zoo, Johnson, Withers, and Pulley, the sponsor. Item 240, BL 2023 2002, Withers and Pulley, ordinance authorized the Metropolitan Government of National and Davidson County to accept a new sanitary sewer manhole and easement for two properties located at 1036 and 1042 East Trinity Lane. 241, BL 2023 2003, Pulley and Withers, ordinance authorized the Metropolitan government to abandon existing sanitary sewer main sanitary sewer man manholes and easements, except new public sanitary sewer main sanitary sewer manholes and easements for two properties located at 4310 and 4311 Castleman Court. Um, those are the bills on a second reading consent. Anything needs to be bumped off? Seeing none, budget and finance. Council member Roden, you still with us? I'm here with you. Vice Mayor, 1996, 1997. Uh, 96, 11 in favor, zero against. 97, 13 in favor, zero against. All right. Uh, government operations. Councilman Benedict is gone. Who's got government operations? Councilman Parker. Uh, 2023, 1994, recommended 540 against. 1996, recommended 540 against. All right. Thank you. Planning and zoning. Councilman Withers. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Planning and zoning. Com Considered PL 2023 1991, 1997, 98, 99, 2000, 2001, 2002, 2000, and approval of each of those nine in favor, zero against, zero abstention. All right, rules confirmations. Councilor Aaron Murphy. Just five in go. favor, zero against on 1991. Great. Uh, and Councilor Mayor Pulley, 
You got the last group. Transportation recommended approval BL 2023-1997 through 2003, six in favor and zero against, and I move approval of the consent agenda. All right, Councilor, please move approval of the second reading consent agenda, properly seconded, any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the second reading consent agenda say aye. aye. Opposed, no, you adopt. All right, we're on bills on second reading that we're not on consent. 227, BL 2023, 1869, Pulley and Young, Ordinance to Amend Title Six, Chapter 77, Article One of the Metropolitan Code, regarding renewal of entertainment transportation certificates of public necessity and convenience. Councilmember Pulley, you're recognized. I uh, would uh, committee reports, and that's me. So uh, the Transportation Infrastructure Committee recommended a two meeting deferral seven in favor zero against and i would move to defer this two meetings okay the motion is to defer two meetings properly seconded any discussion seeing none all those in favor of the two meeting deferral say aye, aye. opposed no this one's deferred two meetings. Okay, we're on 228, Bill 2023, 1882 by Councilmember O'Connell, Welsh, Allen, and others. Ordinance for creating a chapter a chapter 2.153 of the Metropolitan Code of Law, establishing a bicycle and pedestrian advisory commission. Councilmember O'Connell, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I'm gonna move approval, or actually I guess need committee reports. Yeah, public facilities, Councilmember uh, Hurt, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, public, facilities, public facilities, arts, and culture voted five in favor and uh, for one minute deferral. Okay. All right. Transportation, Councilmember Pulley. Transportation recommended a one meeting deferral, six in favor, zero against. Okay, Councilmember O'Connell, what do you want to do? All right. Thank you. We will uh, look at a one meeting deferral, then I'll move for a one meeting deferral. Okay. Um, I think this was a. I'm not sure it was an automatic deferral. It's just a motion to uh, defer one meeting, properly seconded. There was, uh, and you had a late amendment, Councilmember Allen? I'm not planning to move it. Okay, thank you. All right, so we got a motion to defer one meeting, properly seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor of the one meeting deferral say aye. aye. Opposed, no, that one's deferred one meeting. Um, item number 229 was handled. Item number 231 was handled on BL 2023, 1993 by Allen, Roten, Pulley, and Bradford. Uh, ordinance amending Chapter 10.20 Waste Management Title 16 Buildings and Construction to add the requirements of construction demolition materials be diverted from landfills. Council Member Allen, you're recognized. Committee reports, please. Um, got budget and finance, Council Member Roten. Uh, 1993 was approved, 11 in favor, zero against. All right, transportation, Council Member Pulley. Transportation and infrastructure recommended a one meeting deferral, six in favor, zero against. Okay, Council Member Allen. That makes an do? automatic deferral. Um, I think it's an automatic deferral. So automatically deferred one meeting. One meeting. Okay. okay. And um, I think that takes care of all bills on second reading. Okay. Uh, yeah, everything's on third, so she's going to Got it? I just make it all. Okay. okay. I think everything's on third. Fantastic. Do I still need to read the numbers or do we need to drop it? Just call me, sir. Does anything need to come off? Fantastic. Oh. Name check. I don't know. All right, uh, colleagues, we're on bills on third reading. Fortunately, um, everything on third reading is on consent. Is there anyone who dares pull something from consent? <laughs> All right, seeing no hands, uh, 
I will read the captions. <laughs> Item number 242, Bill 2021-920, an ordinance authorizing the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County to abandon existing sanitary sewer main and easements and to accept new sanitary sewer main, sanitary sewer manholes and easements for three properties located at 5540 Oakmont Circle and 262 and 264 White Ridge Pike, sponsors Murphy and Nash. Item number 243, Bill 2023-1809, sponsors Parker Bene Benedict and Withers, an ordinance to amend Title 17 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws, the zoning ordinance of the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County by canceling a portion of an institutional overlay for various properties on both sides of Gallatin Avenue and North of Douglas Avenue located within the Nashville Auto Diesel College Institutional Overlay District Zone CSORI RM20 and RS5. Bill 2023-1885, sponsor Syracuse, an ordinance to amend section 10.60.050 of the Metropolitan Code of Law, to amend an alarm registration display requirement. Bill 2023-1886, sponsors Hirsch, Hurt, Welsh, Allen, and Toons, an ordinance amending chapter 11.0. 22 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws to require landlords to provide to certain older persons 60 days notice of termination of tenancy for purposes of eviction to make way for new property development. Bill 2023-1887 sponsors Rutherford, Pulley, Hancock, and others. An ordinance amending ordinance number Bill 2021-594 to authorize lowering the speed limit on streets designated as local streets on the major and collector street plan within the general services district from 30 miles per hour to 25 miles per hour allowing exceptions to that general reduction to be granted by the Metropolitan Traffic and Parking Commission and amending section 12.20.020 of the Metropolitan Code. Bill 2023-1889 sponsors Murphy Road and Porterfield and Suara, an ordinance approving a lease agreement buying between the Metro Government of Nashville and Davidson County, buying through the Metro Board of Education in the state of Tennessee on behalf of Nashville State Community College. Bill 2023-1890 sponsors Roten and Hauser, an ordinance adopting the five-year consolidated plan and 2023 action plan for the housing and community development and authorizing the Metropolitan Mayor to submit the consolidated plan and 2023 action plan to the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development. Bill 2023-1893 sponsors Syracuse, Hancock, Hurt, and others. An ordinance approving an agreement between the Metro Government, Nashville, and Davidson County, acting by and through the Office of Family Safety and Caravan Studios to participate in a safe shelter collaborative that addresses quick identification of immediately available and survivor-appropriate shelter. Bill 2023-1895 sponsors Hauser, Roten, Withers, and Pulley. An ordinance authorizing the granting of a permanent utility easement to Piedmont Natural Gas Company on certain property owned by the Metro government. Bill 2023-1896 sponsors Parker, Withers, Roten, and Pulley, an ordinance authorizing the acquisition of certain rights of way, easement, and property rights by negotiation or condemna condemnation for use by the Metro government of Nashville and Davidson County, acting by and through the Metro Department of Transportation by NDOT in connection with the public project described as early acquisition of right-of-way to include six parcels for phase one, north-south arterial boulevard between Spring Street and Woodland Street, state project, all those numbers. Bill 2023-1897 sponsors Hancock, Withers, and Pulley, an ordinance to amend the geographic information system street and alley centerline layer for the Metro government of Nashville and Davidson County by abandoning a portion of Pawnee Trail unapproved right away. Unimproved right away. Bill 2023-1898 sponsors Evans, Withers, and Pulley, an ordinance authorizing the Metro Government of Nashville and Davidson County to accept new public sanitary sewer main, sanitary sewer manholes, fire hydrant assemblies, and easements for property located at 840 Lebanon Dirt Road. Bill 2023-1899 sponsors Taylor, Withers, and Pulley, an ordinance authorizing the Metro Government of Nashville and Davidson County to accept the relocation and replacement of public water main for property located at 401 Clay Street, also known as Lexus of Nashville. Bill 2023-1900 sponsors Roten, Withers, and Pulley ordinance authorizing the Metro Government of Nashville and Davidson County to accept new public water and sanitary sewer mains, fire hydrant assembly, sanitary sewer manholes, and easements for property located at 3739 Hoggett Ford Road, also known as the Reserve at Magnolia Farms. Bill 2023-1901 sponsors Sledge, Withers, and Pulley in all an ordinance authorizing the Metro Government of Nashville and Davidson County to abandon existing public, sto public storm sewer pipeline and easement for property located at 2212 12th Avenue South. 
Bill 2023-1902 sponsors Roten, Withers, and Pulley. Ordinance authorizing the Metro Government of Nashville and Davidson County to accept new public sanitary sewer mains, sanitary sewer manholes, and easements for property located at 3507 Central Pike, also known as Hermitage 711. Bill 2023-1903 sponsors Syracuse, Withers, and Pulley, an ordinance authorizing the Metro Governor of Nashville and Davidson County to accept the relocation of existing public fire hydrant assembly for property located at 433 Aubrey Mills Drive, also known as P.F. Chang's Restaurant. Bill 2023-1904 sponsors Toombs, Withers, and Pulley, an ordinance authorizing the Metro Government of Nashville and Davidson County to accept new public sewer uh, manhole public sanitary sewer manhole and easement for two properties located at 1011 and 1013 West Trinity Lane. Bill 2023-1905 sponsors Withers and Pulley, an ordinance authorizing the Metro Government of Nashville and Davidson County to accept new public sanitary sewer main and sanitary sewer manholes for property located at 1219 11th Avenue North. Bill 2023-1906 sponsors Withers and Pulley, an ordinance authorizing the Metro Government of Nashville and Davidson County to accept public new public new sanitary sewer force main and rehabilitation of existing sanitary sewer manholes for four properties located on Rural Hill Road, Mount View Road, and Highlander Drive, also known as Novo Antioch. Bill 2023-1907 sponsors Bradford, Withers, and Pulley, an ordinance authorizing the Metro Governor of Nashville and Davidson County to accept new public water and sanitary sewer mains and sanitary sewer manholes for property located at 1287 Curry Road, also known as Habiba Subdivision. Bill 2023-1908 sponsors Toons, Van Rees, Woods, and Pulley. Ordinance authorizing the Metro Governor of Nashville and Davidson County to abandon existing public sanitary sewer mains and sanitary sewer manholes and to accept new public sanitary sewer mains and sanitary sewer manholes for eight properties located on Ewing Drive, Dickerson Pike, and Ben Allen Road, also known as Ewing Drive Sanitary Sewer Replacement. Bill 2023-1909 sponsors Withers and Pulley, an ordinance authorizing the Metro Government of Nashville and Davidson County to accept new public water and sanitary sewer mains, fire hydrant assembly, sanitary sewer manholes and easements for two properties located at 5991 and 5997 Emerson Pike, also known as Sycamore Estates. And Bill 2023-1910 sponsors Porterfield, Withers, and Pulley, an ordinance authorizing the Metro Government of Nashville and Davidson County to accept new public sanitary sewer main and adjustment of sanitary sewer manholes for property located at 455 Rural Hill Road, also known as Edger Lake Sanitary Sewer Improvement. Does anything need to come off of consent? Okay. Committee reports, Public Health and Safety, Councilman Syracuse. Public Health and Safety, consider Bill 2023-1893, recommended, uh, uh, recommended approval, six in the paper, zero against, thank you. Transportation, Councilman Pulley. Transportation considered uh, recommended approval of Bill 2023-1887 and 18, 1895 through 1910, seven in favor and zero against. Am I the last committee? Yes, you are. And I move approval of the consent agenda. It's been properly moved and seconded to approve the consent agenda. All those in favor, aye. Opposed, no. Motion carries. Can I get a motion to adjourn? We are out of here. And so the Metro Council has adjourned after handling what is probably the longest agenda of this year, this term, and probably the longest agenda in the 60 year history of Metro government. It was um, an agenda 96 pages long, contained 265 items. In fact, 95 of those were zoning bills that were up for public hearing tonight. Uh, again, that was probably a record as well for one meeting. That part of the meeting tonight lasted six hours. Full council meeting lasted about uh, seven hours and, and um, 40 minutes. Um, so quite a, quite a long evening night, particularly in the area of, of public hearings for zoning bills. Uh, the council, um, there's other actions tonight, uh, approved
approved a resolution requesting the mayor's office and other city agencies to evaluate the $1.1 million in housing pods that were purchased with COVID-19 grant funds and create a plan to activate housing, those housing pods being used for sheltering the homeless population in Davidson County. There are still some questions to be asked, to be answered about that with the fire marshal and with the codes department, but that appears at this point to be moving forward, at least a resolution passed. Council also approved a resolution asking the city's waste services division to engage industry experts to conduct a comprehensive study to assess costs and benefits, creating a department authority or an entity dedicated to solid waste disposal and associated responsibilities, and also come up with a plan for how to execute that. Council also deferred a, a resolution tonight that would approve an agreement with the Defense Department to use city property on County Hospital Road at no cost uh, from the government for limited military training purposes. Resolution did not explain what that what the training was for, and there was at least one council committee that asked for a one meeting deferral about that. So that's what the council did tonight. Council also accepted a $1.7 million grant from the state to, with no local match be having to be put in as well for Metro Health Department to achieve sustained control and enhanced prevention to eventually eliminate tuberculosis as a public health threat, both here in Nashville and across the state of Tennessee. On memorializing resolutions, the council called on the General Assembly to pass common sense gun reforms during its upcoming special session, which is right now is set for August. They also requested Metro Nashville's public schools use a recently appropriated $6.5 million dollars in special funding to purchase ballistic film and radios to improve school safety. You might recall the council allocates school funding, but it is up to the school board to make the final decision on how all money is spent. On memorializing resolutions, the council recognized Chief Max Copel and congratulated him being the 2023 International Food Service Manufacturers Association Silver Plate Award winner. And he also, also approved a, a, city, a, city, a sister city relationship with the governors of Erbil in the Kurdistan area region of Iraq and authorized the mayor to execute a sister city agreement. It was mentioned to the council tonight that for over 20 years, Nashville has had the largest Kurdish population outside of Kurdistan itself. Um, I think Detroit was second with 8,000. We have many more thousand than that. Uh, and this is something Mayor Bell Purcell first got started and it took 23 years to get it done, but uh, that's gonna happen and there's actually gonna be a delegation come over from Kurdistan to uh, celebrate that when this agreement is actually signed. All the resolutions and ordinances that were before the council tonight about the controversy about expanding the fairgrounds raceway have been deferred. One was deferred for one meeting, but the ordinances that were on first reading were deferred until the first meeting in August. That may raise some questions about whether they can be approved before the end of this council, because by the time we get to August, the council, this council will be down to two meetings. And of course it takes three meetings, three, re three readings of a bill to pass a bill through the council. It's an ordinance. Council also approved tonight a bill that would restructure the city's uh, community Oversight Board, which was voter approved, but a new state law has effectively stripped that current board of its investigative power. Under the new state law, this bill had to receive a 27 vote majority at least twice during the legislative process. It now has achieved both of those because on first reading it passed, um, as most bills do on first reading, by unanimous consent. So this is twice it's gotten 27 votes. It'll now have to get 27 vote, 21 votes at least on third and final reading. It would probably be above 27 votes again since that's what it's gotten to on two votes so far. Also on second reading, the council deferred for two meetings a bill that would further spell out uh, what the city's transportation licensing board can do with renewing annual licenses for downtown party buses. That's always, party buses have always been a controversial matter and, and the regulation of that, particularly taking uh, licenses away from those who are operating downtown because of traffic concerns or because there's just too many of them. And the board's opinion obviously is going to is creating some concerns and the council wants to look at that and take a two meeting deferral on that. Um, also on second reading, the, the council tonight approved a, a bill that would set up the office of the county historian. Uh, that has uh, been a position in Metro for some years, but this now establishes the post into law. On second reading also tonight, the council deferred, this is for a second time establishing a bicycle and pedestrian advisory commission. Also on second reading, a bill that would uh, ban construction and demolition materials from local landfills was deferred for one meeting as well. That bill for a ban, that ban would be phased in over a few years. Years. The construction demolition material will still need to be recycled or reused on or off site for a beneficial use, including using qualified receiving and recycling materials facilities. Uh, finally, two third reading bills of note were also approved tonight would require landlords to provide persons 55 or older a 60 day notice of termination of tenancy if the eviction is made for a new property development. Also on third and final reading, getting approval tonight on the consent counter, an effort to slow down traffic. Uh, the 25 mile per hour speed limit that's already been improved uh, uh, imposed on uh, all 
called Major and Collector Streets in Nashville in the Urban Services District has now been expanded out to also include the General Services District. One of the bill, one of the measure I did, m didn't mention tonight, it was not on actually on the council agenda, but the council was given a report tonight by the Metro Legal Director about this uh, controversy that's developed again over state law that's been passed to establish a second airport authority. Metro has the one that it's had for many years and this body uh, confirms after appointments from the mayor. Uh, this one is approved by the state and the state has filled this board. This board has actually met out at the airport authority. The management at the airport authority seems to think that is the prevailing uh, law at this point. Metro disagrees, the matter is in court, uh, but the board had it, the state board had its first meeting out there today. Two of the members on that board, Bobby Jocelyn and Jimmy Granberry, are also members of the Metro board. The legal director informed, um, informed the council tonight that in the legal department's opinion, they have now passively resigned, that's the words he used, uh, their positions on the Metro board. So therefore, council members are expecting to see Mayor Cooper send uh, re appointments to take the places of, the, of, those, of those two members on the Metro board, and the council will have an opportunity to act on that between now and the end of their term. It's that the council is now in recess, although they also first thought about midway through going into, before they started second reading bills, we've been here for quite some time, to adjourn for the night and bring those up at a special meeting, or at least an uncalled meeting at this point on July 2nd, July 11th. That was, when the council thought about that, they decided that's not, was not a good idea. So the council will hold its next meeting as scheduled on the 18th of this month. The Metro Nashville Network will be here at that, at that time to provide live coverage. Until then, I'm Pat Nolan, and good night from the council chambers. Tonight's meeting of the Metropolitan Nashville and Davidson County Council has been coming to you live from the council chambers at the historic Metro Courthouse. It's been a public affairs presentation of the Metro Nashville Network. This has been a service of the Metro Nashville Network. If you would like to see this presentation again or for more information on this and other programs, visit nashville.gov.